Sunday in the CDL. Today, we crown the winner of the Miami Major 2. The top four teams have stood out from the pack this entire split, but today, oh. only one will lift the trophy. Toronto Ultra took an L yesterday, but they're still in the hunt to go back-to-back -back after their Major 1 win in Boston. The New York Subliners are barking back. We'll see who gets the final say. And Optic Texas remains perfect through the winner's bracket. The Green Wall faces off against Atlanta Bays in a classic COD match that never disappoints. It all starts right now on the Call of Duty League. Live from Miami. We might be witnessing a breakdown. It's not over yet. Skies is going to hold these players back. Forward you go. LAG had managed to step forward. Skies are also. It feels good to be in Miami. Down. Look at me. He's the other side. Now he's challenging and running again. He's slippery. He's two. He knows it's two. He's two. Shotzi, 10 in a row, looking for the elements. That's the round. Center here in Florida gearing up for our Major 2 Championship Sunday where we will crown our Major 2 champs award the $150,000 and the 100 points that go with it as well as that Miami trophy it is wonderful and so are all of you thank you for coming out we have another sold out day as we close out one of the best weekends we've seen of Call of Duty yet Welcome to the desk, everybody. It is Chris Puckett alongside Ali Cat and Nameless. And Ali, we're coming into Sunday with the picture perfect script. Our top four teams are all still in it. Me and Anna actually saw each other in the elevator this morning. We're like, this is shocking. We haven't had a major like this where there was no upsets and our top four seeds made it to Sunday. We got a recap of how we got here, Nameless. Let's start with the subliners because this was a squad that had all of the momentum going up to that final match in the qualifier. They had some success, but not as much as they were hoping for earlier on that winner's bracket. Yeah, you know, they, uh, they they had a lot of improvement throughout this stage. They were looking like one of the best respawn teams in the game and certainly the best search and destroy team headed into this event. You're getting great games on a Civ and Hydra. They went up against 
Atlanta phase and they lose two search and destroys. Now I yep. will say, in terms of quality of gameplay, that was the highest quality match that we've seen so far. Massive adjustments on both sides. You know, Subliners bringing out some new crafty strats that we hadn't seen yet. And they said that they hadn't got to practice it, obviously, in a match because they wanted to break it out here. So I think getting sort of the, those match reps and search and destroy, obviously this is an insanely talented team. They can definitely make a run today through SD. Royal Ravens went down 0-3 in that series, but it was a round 11 in search and a round five in control. The subliners not blowing anyone out, but handily taking care of business and clutching up when they need to, Allie. Yeah, certainly taking care of business. Uh, again, I think we just saw a Sid masterclass when it came to that control and him proving that those numbers weren't just online. But of our top four teams, there is one team that has been struggling, and that's been the Toronto Ultra. They have still been number one when it comes to that hard point, but the search and destroy has been painful for them throughout this entire weekend. Now, Toronto was able to put an end to LAG's run. How did they bounce back after falling in that winner's bracket to Optic 3-1? Yeah, I mean, you got a massive series out of Kleenex. You know, I was saying one of the biggest differences with Toronto Ultra from stage one to now was Kleenex is no longer God, right? He has these performances, but stage one, he was just clear and above all the other SMGs in the world. Uh, I think, you know, Envoy had a really rough day yesterday. Yeah. Like, they really had to lug him through that series. Uh, for Envoy today, it's going to be imperative. He has to be on point. To go down, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top teams in the game and not have your S&D be as on point as it was in stage one, he's going to need to be one of the guys to go on. And, and it was so rare that I almost want his camp to go and check the PC, check everything in his settings, figure out what was going wrong because he seemed off. A point five is not something we're used to from Envoy in hard points. But for Toronto, you looked good against LAG, closing things out in that game four. You got insights playing where he needs to be. Scrap drop 44 kills in that yeah. control, tying the record. This team has all the potential, and this is a rivalry match going up against a squad that stole the world championship from them in 2023. Yeah, you know, you got to remember, this is what inspired the roster change for the Toronto Ultra. They felt like they needed to pack a punch. They go ahead and they get on voice. So in this matchup, another storyline. It's important for him. To These are your final four teams. After the Subliners Ultra match, we will be down to our final three. And they're all playing for this, Allie, the wonderful Miami trophy. This trophy is beautiful. I haven't actually seen it at all this weekend. It is shining up on that stage. And it's a very traditional looking trophy. I, I can't it. wait to see who raises it at the end of the day. And of course, it's not just the trophy. We've got the prize money that comes along with it. Carolina Royal Ravens and Gorillas go out fifth, six. That's enough for 15 grand each. But today we decide who is taking home the lion's share, the 150 grand for first, 90K for second. And most importantly, if you're the subliners, you need those points to catch up with the other big three. I think one of the biggest thing as well is Toronto Ultra trying to keep that number one seeding spot heading into the world championship because we are about halfway through the season. Let's take a look here at our squads in the winners bracket. Atlanta phase able to get some revenge after a sloppy online matchup to close out their qualifiers. This team came in with something to prove and after some game fives, they are in it going up against Optic, a team they sent out of the bracket in major one twice. Yeah, you know, they're extremely comfortable in this matchup for quite some time. It was the opposite way around. We get to this title acquisition of draws that they've had success there. But, you know, for Atlanta phase, it was about getting back to being dominant at search and destroy. Yeah. We saw that in the matchup versus the New York subliners. Also, for Draws, a massive performance on that Rio. The guy had over 6,000 damage. He was lighting it up. You're going to need everybody on point. I mean, for Optic Texas, they went unscathed throughout this entire stage, right? So, for Atlanta Phase, it's been bumpy along the road. They've had some terrible losses to teams like LAG. They've been up and down all over the place in game modes. The map pool they've been working on. Can't figure out sub base. So, it certainly has been sloppy, but they're still top four, and they're here on Championship Sunday, Ali. Yeah, it has been a sloppy qualifier, but since they've been on land, it's looked incredible and the only place that they've kind of fallen short is in control which is funny because during yeah. the two qualifier they were the best control team in the game yeah. now when we look at the kd leaderboard there isn't a single atlanta phase player to be found so for atlanta phase i'm glad they put together in search and destroy but once they go up against teams like new york later down the line possibly for the second time they're gonna have to lock up that game number three phase finding some unknown frustrations in control here in miami but they're taking out those frustrations on some dead bodies 
bodies. We love to see the confidence in the in-game trash talk. Name was, if you missed the games yesterday, what was Selium doing? He was shooting bodies. I mean, if you've been watching this entire stage, he's been doing it. Uh, and he's inspiring all the other players. Everybody's got some trash talk throughout this. I love it. Uh, you know, competitive spirit for Selium. The guy's immensely talented, and he just wants you to know when he guns you. And we got to take a look at some of the numbers from this phase squad. This is a team that we always expect to make it to Championship Sunday. The question is, are they in position to take home a trophy? They did it once last year, and it was at Major 2 back in Boston. Well, like we touched on earlier, their search and destroy since being on land has been literally flawless, and it's been handedly so. I mean, we're talking about 6-2s, six 6-3s, two, six Game 2s, and the Game 5s. So, s and wins championships, and Atlanta Phase is able to steal those hard points. They're looking comfortable. And nameless, what I'm looking forward into this matchup, Optic versus Phase. You've got two former world champions of oh, the yeah. LA Thieves now on opposite sides of this fight. Draza versus Kenny. What do you see going down in the AR showdown? Well, first off, I just got to say, Kenny definitely gets better on land. He's been unbelievable. Also, I feel like he's the in-game leader for these guys. They got through some crazy moments. Whenever you go to listen in, he's always cool, calm, and collected. For Draza, he just has that explosive ability. We saw he took yeah. over Rio, and even Selium could take a backseat to him at times and get them through a respawn. I mean, these are two crazy talented players. I can't wait to watch it. Let's take a look at the green wall. They had the fans going wild, and they will still be on their feet today if they continue playing the way they have here on land. Shotzi lights out. Pred, ridiculous numbers. Dashy shooting pure. Everything is working with Kylo Ken making the play calls. Absolutely. Uh, but the fact that Kenny not only gets better on land, but I feel like he's kind of taking a step up in the role of being a playmaker for this team as well since we started Major 2. If we go all the way back to day one, even in that opening hard point versus Miami, it was Kenny going on the roto, getting a two-piece, securing spawns on the invasion. And then he got this two-piece first blood yesterday with the frag of search and destroy. He has certainly been kind of a leader for this team, and that's what they needed because they had the sole player in Shotzi being that playmaker, and now Kenny has stepped up as well. And we got to highlight Shotzi here. His numbers and records have been ridiculous in stage two. What has he shown you so far? I mean, the, he has the ability to make something out of nothing at any point in time. He can save you a map. He can make the play to secure the game. The guy's putting up crazy stats. And in search and destroy, nobody knows where he's at on the map. He's just making plays left and right, finding first bloods. He has been the best player throughout this stage, and he has to put a stamp on it today and get the championship. Both teams already guaranteed top three. Only one of them will move on to our championship match after 3 o'clock. For now, though, we have to highlight some of the other competitions going on in the venue. Big shout-out to everyone who made it down to Miami for the challengers. Again, the semi-pro scene is popping out. Who are some of the big teams that you've been watching? A lot of our former pros that have dropped down to have to play in the challenger scene. I'm talking Joe to Seas, Beans, Vance. I actually saw them going at it earlier where Beans team took a 1 0 advantage pretty handedly versus Phase Black, and then they lost three straight in a row. Yikes. It was very loud in the venue. They've been here since very early this morning. Yeah, what was pretty exciting was you see Lore Gold. That's actually some familiar some familiar faces, excuse me, in Gunless and Classic, Dak and 04. They took out Phase Black 7 to the loser's bracket with a 3 1 win. Some huge upsets, man. I love watching challenges. And of course, we got to give a shout out to the Spaniards who made it out here. You didn't get much success from the Spaniards on the Heretics, but Five Media was doing work. They made it way deeper than a lot of people expected. Still fighting for some points. Yeah, they destroyed Boston Academy 3 0 to book their ticket to the upper finals to face off versus Lore. So I think we're going to have the end of that Challengers tournament here in a minute and find out our winners. I'm like, Hexie over there, too. He's I was getting like, hyped. I was looking at some of the stats. Super drop at a 14 and 5. If I'm the heretics, I'm going over and Thank saying, you. like, hey, fellas, maybe we should scrim a few games. <laughs> All right, Nameless, Allie, we've got a big day. It is Championship Sunday. Before we kick things off, what do you think the fans need to know? Uh, you need to know that all the matches today are going to be bangers. Make sure you stay hydrated, get some sun outside, and come back in between breaks because we're starting off with New York Subliners versus Toronto Ultra. Nameless, which one of these two goes to a Game 5? Both of them go to a Game 5. Hell Listen, yeah. it is not often we get the four best teams in the world making it all the way to Sunday. This is going to be a special occasion. Four matches coming your way, and it all starts right now when we come back for a break. It's New York versus Toronto, the 2023 World Championship rematch live in Miami. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
Check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the Call of Duty League. What's on tap this weekend? An all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint, emblem, calling card stickers, and XP tokens. Just link your YouTube account now to start earning. Championship Sunday and our first match of the day is about to kick off. We have the rematch from the 2023 World Championship where the New York Subliners stole the trophy away from Toronto Ultra. Now it's time for Toronto to seek revenge or New York to catch up on the leaderboard. Allie, we've got our maps and modes. Let's break it all down for the fans at home. Who do you think has the statistical edge coming into this fight? It's not so much about the statistical edge and the maps and modes. It's just the fact that Toronto has not been good at search and destroy this entire split. So I have to favor New York in this one. All right. Allie's going with New York. Where are we feeling it, Nameless? It's Championship Sunday. It's been special for New York this season. I'm, or, excuse me, Toronto. I'm going with the Toronto Ultra in this one. Scrap is going to go crazy. I'm torn. Scrap drop 44 in that control. Queen X is back on. Envoy has to be better. Envoy has to get better. He has to. But I live in New York City. Subliners get this oh, one done. Bias Caster. Bias Caster. Let's see how it goes down as we send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris. I am so excited for this championship Sunday. It's almost time to crown a winner. But Miami, before we get this started, help me set the stage. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Coming out first, stand clear, because here comes the New York Subliners. We got They had us worried at the start of the season, but our defending world champs take this stage once again on a Sunday. It took them a little while to heat up, but now they are looking like if one of, if not the most dangerous team in the game. This is a matchup that they are used to, and they were on the back end last time during stage one qualifiers, but that was online, baby, and this is LAN. Let's bring out their opponents, please. Yeah, this is land, and this is where it all happens. Without further ado, Miami, show some love to the Major One champions, the Toronto Ultra. Give it up for Scrap, Envoy, Insight, and Kleenex. The Toronto Ultra, ready to do it again. The most terrifying 
team at major runs steamrolling everybody this team is up for revenge man they got knocked down into the losers bracket they made a roster change so they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world champions they get their opportunity to beat them on land right here right now let's get this match started right here right now it's time to get this elimination match going audience i know you're ready and i know you're ready at home miles chance let's get the ball going Oh, what a mighty Sunday we have here at Major 2. An incredible tournament so far, and I have no doubt about it. The ending is going to be very, very sweet indeed. My name is Miles Ross, no relation to Bob, and I'm joined by Thomas Ian Chance Ashworth. What a mouthful that yeah, is. Too many Esquire. names. Esquire. Ready to party? Yeah, absolutely ready to party. <laughs> too many names, but look, we have known. Like, let's just be honest. We yes. know who the top four teams are. Yes. We knew who was going to be playing on yes. Sunday. It's just a matter for who ends up in the loser's bracket side of things. Just for the elimination, one of these teams going to fall in short order, and then the other team the opportunity to make that run and get warm just to start our day. Beautiful match we are going to have, and just the fact that we get a real hard point for map one as well we get to see exactly how warm these players are well i actually bumped into sib in the men's restroom and he said you know dude there's something about that first match of the day you have that little bit of brain fog from sleep still the coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet all the exercise you may have done you have to get yourself going that's a difficult thing so if sib's telling me for a brief moment there he's like i'm a little rusty coming into this one that's been one of the issues there for the new york subliners start slow get punished and again you can't afford to start slow on either side envoy especially he's been dropping 0.5 after 0.5 in hard points specifically on a map like this it is where the smgs go on a tear if anyone on ultra plays just a little bit slow if they don't get that brain fog out of the way the new york subliners that smg duo will absolutely take them to task gotta come out with the fire gotta get your sunday started right this is the day where superstars are born here we go kicking things off with rio that brain fog is going to be gone very quickly indeed Rio's a spicy one. Karachi, Invasion, Subbase, and High Rise to close out the series. Here we go. Elimination matchup. Round four. Sunday starts now. And look at that opening break from New York, too. It is three players going just down that left side lane. Everybody else getting funneled in through mid. And we already know players that are definitely going to be warm is Scrap, but him and Envoy get pieced up. Not a trade to be found from Envoy in that moment. Subliners right back in time. The yellow hard point means the subliners are gaining those precious seconds. There's only 30 remaining here. Big kills all across the map from the boys in yellow as the New York subliners find their way into the lead. Ultra looking for the contest. Scrap taken care of. That opens the floodgates for the scoreline and Hydra four in a row. Yeah, he's not slowing down at all right from the jump. Nice opening break from the subliners and keeping those right side oh. spawns as well. Even Sky showing off the rival nine shots. Scrap though the bounce back. He has been the sole man from the squad that you can just expect to pop off. Everyone else <laughs> struggling. Kismet, nice angle there. And subliners, nice and secure over towards P2. They've got P2. You're going to run into Scrap in a brief moment. Envoy looking for the flanks. That's not going to happen. Scrap wins his individual fight over to Sib. Can he get in there? The turn and burn! There's no fog there, baby. Scraps down and out. Hard point going to the subliners again. That coffee order hitting just right there from Siv. And now subliners still collecting the time. Who's the main AR? Who's the main SMG? Does it even matter for the subliners? Seemingly not. Holding on to the time. Scrap, though, seven kills. But meanwhile, Envoy 0-6. That is worst case scenario right now from Ultra. They cannot get him going. A 10-point game. Kismet up close and personal just clearing up. Over to Hydra, over to the hard point. Scrap finds himself a three, and you've got a bit of space to work with now if you are ultra, but at this point in time, it's tough scenes. Can Scrap get one more kill and net a cruise missile? Super handy on Rio. Well, you almost feel like he is a lock and a guarantee for this final kill. Insight's going to steal it from him, so no cruise just yet. On the rotation, though, you with subliners on P2. They got there first, couldn't get a good chunk of time. This, though, is the money hill. Someone needs to back up and collect. Skies will be the super soaker, and for ultra, nobody really too close to try to break this one down. Uh, no one close at all. We're going to slow the game down. Lead change. Subliners back in control. Through the stairs. Nieskis. Here we go. Scrap's going to send it. Eyes on the spawners. A little bit of a disarray for a brief moment there. But once again, Scrap with the rival. Nine. Can't get any more. Sim. Team fire there. Cleans house. Insight still trying to maintain the position that his boys have fought for. Finds himself another. Great damage dealt, trades done again, but the subliners come out on top. Yeah, subliners coming out on top because they are still playing a four versus three envoy again. Cannot buy a kill. He finally gets one on board. 
Shout out to him. One and nine, but Ultra still can't get that time. Only takes one. Scrap can't take care of any more in the point. Over to Dylan Hannon. Envoy has had a slower game so far. We'll see if that can't turn around. New hard points up, and Toronto Ultra first in best dress. Skies, though, on the approach. Kleenex trying to keep that side of the map safe. Box is all good for now. And good cleanup kills on the flank oh. as well. That is a nice four-man wipe in the feed, and they are making the read. Eight for one side spawn. Number five, Scrap for the other. Both those players get gunned, though, so if you're on time, the pinch is coming. Pinch is on. Oh, it's nearly perfect. Envoy makes a case for it. Hard point, subliners, a great break, a good spawn, and they're about to get another freebie. Hydra on the right-hand side. Ultra, though, don't get blessed with the same sort of spawn. They'll all be coming from that left angle. Yeah, and the difference is, well, Ultra had a four-man wipe, and they got broken in the next 10 seconds. Subliner strike right back, and Ultra, well, this is their attempt to put on the pressure. You're just getting funneled into death. Scrap the only player that can show any sort of fight, but he gets cut down, and that is a beautiful hill there for the New York subliners. And even on the rotation, well, they're getting Getting to that new time first. From south to north, over to the top side of the mini-map. Over here, where Sibs winning big fights there against Insight. 9-9, nine and nine, a very slow game for him so far, but relatively slow in the score lines as well. 106 to the 55 of Ultra. Hydra now looking to clear out these players. Bit of help from Kismet. Keeps it going. A nice pinch there as Scrap and Envoy make the hard point safe. That's Ultra's. And now, though, the pinch coming through for Skies as well. He hits him on wow. one side and his entire team on the other. Once again, the Ultra players around the hill are just caught in between a rock and a hard place in Guys, weird timing in the back. Kleenex is going to get the kill, but his teammates now getting time. Hydra waiting for Sib, those reinforcements to come through. An important square up moment for these final 30. Oh, Subline is still holding it. Kleenex, the last man up here. Scrap trying to provide some help from a distance. Are anyone able to get in there? Hydra blistering pace once again, finds another big kill, and that's going to be the hard, hard point still in the hand of New York. That's a plenty of time. 15 plus seconds to go their way. They're keeping it contest as well now. Insight beamed, Hydra's on one. I mean, his oh. shot is so fresh and so clean. That's the five spree and Hydra simply not missing. Corner up and let the kill fall into your lap. Again, another one of those players just to guarantee to get the cruise missile. This is a beat down of a map number one. Subliners taking full advantage of this slow start. Second set of hard points now on a subliner's absolute domination so far. Kismet. Oh, wow, Mike. One shot, one shot. One shot, one shot. Yeah, one shot, back shot. Two, three boxes. All time, all time. 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 All are we ready to play? Watch out, watch out, watch out. We don't have to play. There's three, 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 three. Okay. Take a time. Watch out, watch out. 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 Watch out, Yo, let's go. One scroll streaking. Well, got streaking me. from mid. They're both there. They're both there. Respect the square. They're both there. They're both pitching. Nice. In the back. In the back. In the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrap. Scrap in the back. I killed. I killed. Scrap. Three front. 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 Nice. Nice. Scrap, last guy, push through. I'm staying on. 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 I'm an outstanding level of production from Hydra in the kills department at 24 and 17. Sib looking for another one there. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It's an absolute blowout. Subliners, too strong. Yeah, that moment right there is this game personified. New York Subliners, a team immune to recoil, gunning them down left and right. The pinches are perfect, and nobody on Ultra can get anything going. They are getting picked apart. This is your Champs Grand Finals rematch. The Subliners, they haven't skipped a beat. Still rolling. Sib, though, the new kid on the block, has been winning some big individual fights. Oh! That's got on the hub. 2.13 and climbing. 
we're looking towards the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, look, this is supposed to be your best hard point team in the game that have a five and one record on Rio. Oh, some honors, they just do not care. They might put them in the 100 point club box if they can get this break. This is a destructive way to start Sunday. Kleenex finds two. Streaks now from Hydra. That hard point's gonna go bang. Oh, he takes care of Scrap, so it's on Envoy now to take care of the push alone. If he can buy some time, he's got Kleenex on a pinch. So this is good time for Ultra. What was 222 to 96? Slowly but surely, battling back into it. I mean, that is a kind way to say it. Maybe some of the kills are starting to flow their direction, but they're having just the, the systematic problems that we've seen from the jump. Envoy again, just a double negative performance on a map like this. You just cannot have that happen. Desperate to try to get back in the mix. The pistol shot is clean, but subliners Woo! again, we're just waiting for the inevitability. Shots like that, maybe just a little too late. Going to be able to get this scrap time, but a rotation over towards bridge. Well, subliners, you can see on the minimap, a couple players already nearby. Already nearby. It's going to be Skies in the bottom side of the new hard point. Scrap trying to clean these players out. He has been spotted, I would presume. Maybe not. Here comes Kiz. Reads it, guns him. The second hard point ultra. Hey, Scrap's a shooter. We know this. We're not learning anything new. Dang. Able to take down Hydra as well. So kicking off the bridge hill right. Nice little set of kills and envoys showing up in the feed as well. Reinforcements are here. But how's the breakdown going to be starting? Sky strikes from the outside. And well, Ultra keeping things interesting. Kills still flowing their way. And maybe for a brief moment, they've stabilized the game. It feels just like that game of control. Scrap starting to take the game into his own hands. 31 and 24 finding every single possible kill he can, but the problem is you're dealing with a subliner thick and thin through the middle of the map, and here they come. Straight onto the hard point. Envoy can't win the big one against Skies. Insight trying to get him out the point. 25 for the win. Insight brought down. Ultra scrambling to get closer. Flying into the zone, looking for the kills. Gotta get him off the time. Subliners are just too good. They switch up the pace when you need him to. Whoa. They go for the Whoa. together. Scrap might be the one-man wrecking crew, but you still got to rotate towards new. And while Scrap is having success, his teammates are getting picked apart. Hydra winning the kills, trying Dang. to force it over towards this new time. Maybe the lifeline's still here, though. Scrap is hunting. He's got to take down Kismet, able to get it done. Snap straight away, looking for the next kill or two. Set up now for the subliners as they approach the hard point, looking to end the game. Scrap can't get any more. 35 kills so far. Kleenex keeps the bridge safe. You shall not pass. But here come New York once again. The pinch. It's sit from behind. It's sit from behind. He gets himself in. Oh, boy, wins a huge one. You stay alive. Kismet's going to be the thorn in their side, though. They got to be worried about the P2 rotation as well as the old time. You can't hop off the hill because subliners are 10 seconds away. The time is flowing. Have to contest inside. It's an easy read. Can he stay alive? Alive. Teamwork, Sim, Sim gets two! That's game! Unless Envoy can save the day, he's crept in. Five seconds for it. I the mean, contest! It was a 3v4 on the time. The subliners already getting it done too far ahead of the game, and they got the spawns for new. Kismet not even needed on the point. Subliners starting their Sunday shooting. Whoa! Shooting red hot. The whole lobby felt that one. New York sideline is coming in a Sunday with a real chip on their shoulder. The lower bracket has been a gauntlet so far for our teams. 250 to 192 map one. I will say it could have been a lot worse. The way the subliner started things off, Ultra got in there a little too late, but signs of life were there. I look, I mean, maybe signs of life, but that sign of life was literally just scrap at a certain point. That is your, you know, AR player running the third rival nine that just dropped the most kills and most damage in a lobby, outperforming some of the best SMGs in the world, but it doesn't matter if your own SMG duo is struggling. We said, if you have a slow start, which Envoy starts one in nine, Hydra and Kiz are gonna run you over, and they did exactly that. I also love the, the pace switch up coming in for the Summoners too. They built themselves such a big lead that any moment where Ultra are getting those three or four man down, Subliners just pump the break, focus on the rotation. And even at the end of the game, Kismet just went and sat behind P2 to flip the spawns. His teammates are fighting 3v4, and even in a 3v4, New York was successful. Incredibly successful, Thief. Highlights from the Rio. Map number one was a treat. 
The York Subliners looking fantastic, starting things off here on Sunday. They get themselves a 1-0 advantage after that Rio bloodbath. And again, early game chance, I think it was all Hydra. He was the man making the moment. Skies, two-piece after two-piece, seemingly untradeable. Kismet actually didn't have any wild moments. Nothing true, tremendously standout. Uh, he was the consistent force, though. And again, they got rotating, making the high IQ plays. Even in the listening, it was incredibly conversational. Sid telling Kismet where to go, picking things up. It's scrapped behind us. Nope, I'm the one that got the kill. So they were incredibly well orchestrated. So even though guys like Hydra in this moment, way ahead in the kills column, everybody else was able to play catch up and pick up any slack that existed. Scrap, meanwhile, incredibly simple performance. This dude, every single life that he has, he is maximizing his value. An incredibly different kill, a force on the map, but even if he could be the map one MVP, doesn't matter if you take the L. You take the L. You roll on towards the next section destroy in a moment, but wow, man, great effort from the subliners. No rust coming to this one. It's the front row popping. A lot of New York fans here in Florida, of course, East Coast being well represented. The Toronto Ultra, though, over to Search and Destroy. Now we get to find out a very important question, Chance. A team that was so dominant at the game mode, the Major 1, flawless, in fact. This tournament has not been the same. As we go into Karachi now, any bold predictions? Well, Karachi is such an interesting one, too. I, I'm genuinely, at this point, it, it's a focus point. It is a concern about Envoy's performances. If you're worried about, like, going against the subliners, you had the chance rematch, and it was almost like there was a mental block where you, like, Chow Kismet, 99 Kiz makes that arrival, and they just bodied them in the grand finals. Well, they haven't skipped a beat, even with the roster changes coming through. That is New York subliners at their absolute finest. I mean, granted, a 60-point game, it might seem close on Rio. It just simply wasn't. New York able to do whatever they wanted, but I know we were talking about the S&D. Karachi, absolutely one of Toronto's finest. It is their comfort pick. They love to see it for the map number two, but even then, they've shown signs of failure on this map as well. Optic absolutely pieced them up on it, so the cracks in the surface began to show in the stage two qualifying stage. I know the thought process was in the pick and pans. They're expanding the map pool, maybe trying to make some 200 IQ style plays. Well, maybe they uh, got ahead of themselves. Maybe they're going to get punished New York, they'll be the team to show it. Yeah, absolutely looking to be the stronger team coming into this matchup just from the eye tests alone. Karachi SD, map number two. Here we go. Again, an elimination matchup. Loser goes home. You're still in the top four, but none of these teams will be walking away with anything less than first. The Monster Energy pregame here for Toronto Ultra. Left attacking strats in Toronto. Oh my god. Easy Mac with the burns. Yeah, and we'll touch on the attacking stats in a second because it'll actually be New York starting on the attacking round, but that will be a key point. Ultra, their attacking rounds have looked different online compared to on land. Defensively, though, Ultra Rock the same setup. Insight and Envoy work the B Street. Scrap will roam around between mid. Kleenex gets A, but Envoy already dead. If I know what Ultra's going to do, well, certainly the subliners know it even better. They get a first blood. And without Envoy's extra nades coming through, you get the bomb down for free. This will be a 4v3 hold for New York, and they're not wasting any time. Post plant position now. Hydra finds himself at the top of a staircase. He says hello to Kleenex, and he gets his second on the round. In sight now in the unwinnable. 1v4. They don't know where he is. You bet your bottom dollar they do now. Subliners take the first. And again, inside and Envoy work B. You got Kleenex playing the top side of the minimap, and Scrap will play mid, but he'll roam around just a little bit. Well, if I know what they're going to do, Subliners there to pick him apart. The difference, though, in between their online and land attacking rounds for Toronto, online, they'll mix things up. They'll try to be aggressive, make sort of hero plays, have a little bit of fun. On land, though, they tighten up the setups. They roam together as a team and make a concentrated effort to have that teamwork. We'll see if they can bring it here in this round number one, but they've already faltered. They got to make sure that they are on point. Land is a different environment, but for the moment, you see 2-2 two, two split, not playing together just yet. No trophy systems for anyone in Ultra. They got wiped out pretty quick. No kills. A lot of problems to solve now. Hydra's lying in wait for anyone who wants to cross over towards that A-bomb site. Kleenex back and forth now, waiting for the call, waiting for any noise, waiting for a kill. Waiting. And I like the 2-2 split on defense for New York subliners because they don't have any information, but there's no reason to bite on anything. You have both bomb sites completely under control. And you got teammates there for the trades. And Envoy again gets first blooded. Sib able to catch him. Holding down B, not breaking a sweat. Oh, nothing yet. And a sneaky play. We'll get that bomb in towards the B 
site. Oh, they've been spotted out now. Scrap don't we kind of fight his way there. Running out of fight, running out of life, running out of time. 30 seconds to go as well. And I like Sid being concerned about his flank because his teammates are out here making the play and you just catch him with the bomb down. Hydra doesn't check it, but 22 seconds on the clock. A four versus two and Soulbinders know exactly where to look. Ultra, just like online, playing a little bit more split away from each other and they absolutely get picked apart. And I hate to harp on it, but it remains true. Envoy struggling. He got first blooded two rounds in a row. Another perfect round from New York. Two in a row now. Kismet yet to really get involved too much for the rest of the squad, though. Sips, guys, and Hydra. Two, three, and three in the sprees. This is looking very, very good thus far for the New York subliners. Ultra defending round. How's this one going to go as we get to look at the Phenom's hands at work there with our controller? Envoy tags, back it on up. That nade might connect unless he's well and truly under the scaffold. Indeed, Scrap though finally gets on the board and gives Toronto a sign of life. Yep, Hydra's help was supposed to be Sid. Well, he gets taken down, but look at the bounce back. Other AR rotates into position and you just get caught. So a 3v3 and Kismet, he's got the intel on Kleenex. Nice shots from both players, each backing down. And 52 seconds now left on the game clock. Someone right now from New York has to go back and collect. Hydra's been left in the middle of the map. He might make an individual play or try to go get that bomb. Someone has to, though. You are starting to run out of time. Yeah, 40 seconds to recover the bomb and get towards the sites. It does look like Skies will be the man going back for it. Hydra, lovely work with Renetti there, takes care of Insight. Man advantage to the New York subliners. His headset is working. And look at the decision yeah. to go so deep in the spawn. Call of Duty timing at its finest. They were trying to isolate Kleenex. He's nowhere to be found, but as Hydra clears it out, he's just coming to his teammates. A is completely open. Got to get this bomb down. Got to get it down quick. 15 seconds to get the job done. Kleenex doesn't see anybody in that direction, so now he, uh, he's in a bit of trouble. And Kismet, oh dear, about to see our second ladder kill of the round. The timing is immaculate. Oh, Kismet. Major two crowd is barking, and with good reason, it's three to nothing. Yeah, three rounds in. Ultra, one kill combined. Scrap gives you the first blood in the round. He gets picked 10 seconds later. And nobody else from Toronto able to offer up anything. And strangely enough, it's starting to look a lot like that MW2 Champs Grand Final once again. An unbelievably one-sided affair so far with the subliners driving home the dominance. 4-0 for Skies and Hydra right now. Three donuts to Ultra, but there's plenty of time still to get back into this. Is, is this the round? Well, again, another 2-2 split on the defensive end, or maybe a 1-1-2, but you got Kismet, Hydra, that SMG duo, they're getting active. Insight's the man to watch the flank, but Insight, big responsibility, two players on him, able to give you one, but he does get traded out. Insight has done his job, though, and, well, you may be able to get uh -huh. this bomb down as well. Kleenex roaming, uh -huh. able to give you the two-piece in Ultra. Finally, a little bit of life. Oh, what a snap. Kismet, though, keeps his spree going. Four now in a row for him. A 1v2. Pressure now on Kismet. Can he cross the street safely? The answer is no. Ultra. Stop the bleeding tunicate applied. They've got a fighting chance. There's old ironed up Iceman in sight playing over towards Junk, even though he was dealing with two players. He was at least able to give you one. Commits that first gunfight and Envoy gets that first kill on board. Kleenex going to join him as well. On inside, Dud hit does his job. Kleenex, the overachiever, giving you two in that round. Subliner, just another moment. What do you do on, a, do on the attacking rounds? Going through mid, that's where Scrap is going to be playing. Maybe the only man you don't want to deal with. I'll mind the hand now, Sky. Subliner's forward, they fly. As I square up, potentially going to get very loud. Hydra, will he check it? Oh, he didn't hear the door. We heard it, he did not. The commons must be furious. Kleenex's first blood, seemingly a free one. That's a beautiful adjustment too, Kleenex. Making the plays, and Scrap might have the intel around the bus. You see the pre-aim change. He knows the pressure's going to be this direction. Great tags. You're looking for the trades. Well, Kleenex gives you the next one in line, and Sky's completely isolated. Beautiful round there by Toronto. The adjustments have been made. Leaving Sib in a one versus four with bomb down. Seemingly nothing you can do. Sib, good luck. Not impossible. You've been able to catch a few of the Ultra members alone. 
Isolate the fight, Stone gets shot in the back, and there we go. Two rounds in a row for Ultra. And that's a, a bit more of a novelty strat coming out from Ultra as well. Certainly a team that doing their homework in their off time. Kleenex playing bottom green this time. And you see the idea from the subliners. Get the nades out just to back scrap down from up top to let Hydra get in the mix and make the play. But the perfect counter strat was called. Ultra effectively sniffed that out. You get two rounds in a row. What an unbelievable turnaround here. The, the bus is in reverse, and we are beeping slowly backwards for Toronto Ultra. Can they find the equalizer here? They dodge the nades. 2-2 split from the subliners on defense. And Kleenex right through the middle of the map. He's so far done it undetected. Will he catch Kismet on his right-hand side? Oh, this is going to be a freebie. First blood, surely. Yes. Kleenex is in. Oh, Hydra right back at it. Trades are done. Yeah, Hydra with the MCW as well. So he's mixing things up, but it'll be a 3v3 for this retake. Ow. And Envoy back down. So no one's been able to get pushed out P2. All guns forward. No flanks coming through either. Scrap just trying to keep these players at bay. The tags are good, but he's back down as well. In the meantime, Insight catches Sib in the middle of the map. Ultra with the man advantage. You're starting to read these players' positions. Can you capitalize? Hydra. That camouflage doesn't quite help out. Smoke down on the bomb, and he's going to jump on it. Here comes a hit potentially for the boys of Ultra, and that's a good check. And that's it. Three in a row. Ultra are alive and kicking. And that's almost just a, a disrespectful hop there from Hydra, as if they're not going to check that one. But not a lot of time left in effective strat. Kleenex again, making that call. Just a full send straight down the middle of the map. Finds the timing and no time wasted. Good job on the other Toronto players as well, just to set him up for the free kills on Kismet. And Insight doing his job as well. Just outplaying Sib towards the middle of the map. And have to get the bomb down easier for Insight to play with that timing. Toronto's playbook, peeling the pages apart right now of this sweaty matchup. Can they keep this run going? Momentum certainly in their side. And speaking of adjustments, Kleenex is often the isolated player over towards the A bomb site. So New York send everybody this direction. And once again, Hydra has just found himself in the perfect spot. What would have been another ladder kill. Instead, Skies just rips him. And now you got subliners, everybody in perfect position, Oof. but Kleenex, well, he brought the flank and he brought the strap. Another kill for Tobias. That breakneck speed hits that corner and takes care of business. Hydra, hello. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy for the Phenom. Eyes on top red, nobody there just yet. Looking for the retake now, Ultra. Suppressing fire is going to keep him at bay, but it's only going to let you know that he's exactly there as Hydra holds the line. Envoy straight onto the site. Can he win this 1v3? 1v2. Whoa, boy, he was swinging. Well, the subliners take the round. And you also have Ultra getting punished for not rocking the covert sneakers. That's the second or third kill we've just seen where you can tell the subliners players' headsets absolutely working. A calm and quiet environment in the comms of New York, and it has been delivering them freebie kills. And again, just overwhelming Ultra. They were looking for the counter on Toronto's default setup, but Kleenex not even nearby. He might have found the route to go on the flank, but... Nobody else able to get involved. 4-3 lead and Ultra back on the attack. Still playing a little bit split, but three players leaning towards the B site. Leaving Kleenex for the isolation, but he just gets picked. I don't even know what angle Hydra just took him down from, but down range, and that is a hell of a first blood. The whole New York team oscillate after the kill hit straight over towards the B side of the map. Scrap getting in the mix. In and out like a ship in the night. I don't know if that was a wall bang for the first blood, but you see what Sib is going for, too. X-ray vision on this subliner squad, but for a 3v3, Envoy doing his job, getting the bomb down and scrap right now in the mixy spot. Ooh, subliners does. don't read this. He will get a free kill. He does have a very wonderful opportunity, but the players around him have just managed to slip through undetected. We can see where they are, thanks to Codcaster. He has no idea. Kismet sees where Envoy is, and Scrap might have to get moving soon. Envoy, pressure on. Insight has the high ground covered as well, so wonderful work. Oh dear, Scrap from the shop side has been snuffed out. 20 seconds. That's a great read on Skies, and look at Hydra's positioning. Envoy's gonna make some noise and just land in a pinch. He at least gets his one. Now he just needs to waste time. 12 left on the clock, and Insight, you check it at 7.5. You win the round. Ultra getting it done. Tying this round up at 4-4. to four.
and they might have sniffed out Scrab, but he did such a good job of at least waiting. And again, on the communication front, Ultra are telling him, no need to child, don't peek out just yet. We got the clearance. Who cares about the smoke? We got eyes on bomb. It is not a problem. No mistakes being made. And dare I say, as we watch the clock tick down, when it hit that 7.5, there may have been a little smile on the face of... Oh, and no, look at the wall bang, by wait the way. Yeah, 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 there it is. I was telling you, the angle they had was insane. That's why they were switching the MCW, and you see the spot they lined up. It's through the ladder. Skies and his wall bangs, he has been the best wall bang player for the past four years. He and the team have done their homework. So many free kills they're finding. Kiz tagged up, has to back up. Smoke, you may as well save yours, Kismet. But for now, you're in a bit of trouble. Ultra have managed to pin you in there. Prolonged smoke here, gonna allow you to hit that B bomb site or completely fool them. Every single arrow looking towards the bomb site for now. Skies has got a free entry towards the rest of the map, but that bomb is long gone. It's the express overnight towards A. That's the foot race too. The only player making moves right now from Ultra is Kleenex. And well, he's cleared out a decent bit of space, so no one else on Toronto biting. But if Kleenex gets caught and there's three players coming, he has to get at least one and get out with his life. Kleenex already has done his job. He probably gets one. Oh, a fist fight. Hydra comes out on top. Scrap looking for the revenge. Gets it. Gets the round. Map point ultra. Toby's on point right now. Kleenex is having himself a beautiful map number two. His reads have been clean the entire time. And Scrab also hyper aggressive, not wasting any time. Falls his teammate up and gets into the mix. Another efficient read out of ultra. And I like the smoke call as well. Just block him off. Almost like a round of Val. Just get that entrance done, force him to come through. New York want none of it. And I like the repositioning, but a little too slow. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. 10 and 4 for Hydra. He has been the tip of the spear for the subliners, whether it's through the walls or straight through the eyes of their opponents. Middle of the map. It's getting hot. Kismet absolutely eviscerated. Hydra manages to trade out. Reposition. What a turn. An absolute snapper. The smoke over by the bomb site as well is going to obfuscate the play and now make things even harder for Toronto to fight forward. We might be looking at around 11. Scrap challenge, though. Scrap is challenging, and he is going to back Sib down, but Scrap is stuck in a very tight corner. Sib making the move as well, and it's guess oh! for Scrap, but he gives him the gunny. Oh two my, v two. Oh my God, he gets away happily. Scrap is something different, though. Hydra might be able to end it. Skies with the high ground. Round 11. An unbelievable display of skill and teamwork from both teams. And now, last chance on Karachi. As Scrab out here, just skilled dipping players. But look at Hydra. His fingers work faster than his brain does. Jeez. By the time he gets the calculation where number two is, his fingers just snapping on the guy through Barrel Alley. That is just the setup. We have made it to a round 11 in an elimination match. The difference maker in the series. And Hydra, by the way, 13 kills already. Top-notch performance, Toronto. Plane split again, no aggressive calls. You've at least made it up the ladder this time, but look who's gonna meet you, top single. Clean moves there by Kismet. Two players potentially oh in his sights. Oh God, he could get two here. Insight might know something's up. I think the play might be a little bit more aware, but I think at this point in time, the guessing games are on. Covert sneakers, God bless them. Not a single soul knows. It's just game intuition and a little bit of luck, maybe. Hello? Howdy! Gunfight's on. And now Ultra, do you want to try to go to the A site and isolate Kismet? You're jumping back and forth, but the door they is cracked. Know. He's getting all this intel. They managed to somehow jump that door without being spotted. So this is all happening while the bomb is going over towards B. So what a move out of Ultra. And then on the other side of the map, Skies is just throwing shoulders, getting the intel. So as soon as he's hearing this noise, he's going to be calling out to his teammate, hey, I'm going to need help at B. Kismet's being left on an island versus Kleenex, the main fight on point, and there's Sib for the first blood. Oh no, tuck your toes away, Envoy. He's managing to get the bomb down, but his teammates have fallen all around him. Round 11's done. Oh my word, all the pageantry, the trickery. The dance is done and the subliners, they know these moves. Another clean round just as they began the map. 6-5 and a 2-0 lead in the series. And those S&D woes from Toronto going to continue. Subliners still have.
have their number and they are digging deep into their bag of tricks. Hydra and Skies, that dynamic duo, 23 and nine combined. 2,500 damage from Hydra is absurd, but again, even the wall bang strats that these guys are orchestrating. They got bombed out at Major 1. They placed top 12. They got back in the lab, have figured some things out. And a round like that, an absolute difference maker in that nail biter of a game. Outstanding Karachi game. And we can all thank Hydra for making rank play that little bit more toxic. Shooting each other through walls. We've got some spots on Invasion. Now we got one on Karachi. Good God. I wonder what other tricks the subliners have in this, uh, in a couple of ma more matches they've got in the tournament. If they can survive this one, we might get to see a few more. Yeah, I'm absolutely though folks we go back to invasion playing control after this we're gonna have to see the comeback though for toronto ultra if they're gonna get to that sub base and the high rise not had a tremendous amount of success on that map but we'll see if this is the time to get it done wow what a series we have had so far a incredible weekend of call of duty is yet to finish the final day is upon us and the first series takes its first commercial break on the other side of this one we play control find out who takes the lead or who advances further into the tournament here at major two don't go too far this is the cdl your game with a scuff save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL get better with a scuff the first performance gaming controller visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game the call of duty league is brought to you by monster energy the official energy drink of the CDL
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, a major two New York subliners Toronto Ultra map number three, not too far away. But so far, if you've only just joined us, I mean, it was an absolute slaughter on Rio to begin things off. The Karachi search and destroy does go to around 11, but the subliners still come out on top. Now we go to a control game, and I'll tell you what, boys and girls, this one should be fun. We're going to invasion. This is Toronto's last chance in the tournament. Speaking of chance, he's right there. Doing my thing, noun and verb at different times. I don't know how that makes sense, but I'm not good at grammar. I do know that New York Subliner is incredibly good. These guys are just like locked into the matrix. They have an understanding yeah. of the game. I've been playing COD for 15 years, but they're able to think outside the box and they realize some of these walls and entire buildings, you can just shoot through, it's not a problem. So they are just able to see the game in a completely different light. Now the fact that they're two up in the series, already they're feeling comfortable. And let's just say, worst case scenario for New York, they unplug their controllers for the next two maps. Even for a high rise game five, Ultra don't have a win on it all year. And it's one of New York's very best. So New York playing with all of the confidence in the world. That's tough. Literally haven't dropped a single step since that Champs Grand Final. That's so tough. You know, game five, the writing's already on the wall. If we can get there though, we'll find out. This is the Monster Energy pregame for the New York Subliners. Locked down defense, eight and zero. Oh, round count at major two so far. Oh, and being perfect on defense, obviously six of those rounds on high, high rise, but now it is an even more defensive heavy mat. Subliners, well, they have an Whoa. opportunity to shut down Ultra here and eviscerate their confidence maybe long term. Got Ultra though, straight towards the B site. We've seen them go for a couple cheeky A pushes off the rib, but playing no games in this moment. Making sure they do the easy things first. Nice shots coming through from Scrap. The slow B cap continues. All right, we go Ultra. This is a big turnaround point for you boys. One segment down at B already. Scrap on the double back, going over that side of the map, finding himself a faster capture. Second segment now gone, and a little bit of mid-map presence there as Envoy finds a kill or two. I know, Scrap, record-breaking performance last time we saw him on this map, and, well, that is an example why the kid just simply does not miss. B-Zone finally secured. Took a long time to make it happen, but the life count, nice little advantage. Toronto would build themselves, and Scrap already thinking about a cruise. Frankly, a piece of utility he might very well need. Scrap shooting like they stole his car and killed his dog right now. 4-0. Sid, get out of his way. The only way to bring him down right now is to shoot him in the back. Scrap back at it again on Invasion. <clears throat> and not even anyone here for the trade. I mean, Hydra was one that shut him down before he got the cruise in. Well, Hydra actually ends up falling, kills inside before he goes, so Kleenex picks up the extra one. And right now, the players on Toronto, the longer they are alive, the better odds you have. But Envoy's going to fall, and that push is going to be that much more slowed down. Yeah, slow things right down. You have to clear out that top side of the map as well, where Sib is hiding. Whether he's on the balcony, whether he's down low in the back alley, it's a lot of angles to worry about. Choose wrong, and he'll kill you. In sight, he's going to step up to the plate and try to evict him from the top side of the apartments. That gives his boys the opportunity to get through the back. There it is. He's on the minimap now, son. Turn back. Get him. Nope. Okay, maybe not. See, he's gone again. I was thinking inside was just going to be too loud. Sib ends up just going past down the street, but now Sib getting freebie kills, shooting players in the back, and he gets out of dodge. Finally, inside gets the kill, but only a minute left on the clock. Ultra right now, the pace has to be ramped up, or you got to find that perfect moment to strike. A Street, Kismet trying to keep it under lock and key, but he gets traded. A small opening right now for Ultra. That little opening is all you need. Those are good teams. You get three down, you get four down. It is over, Sib. Wow, that's two. That might be the play. You're going to have to stop now for Ultra. You cannot make the break with two players alone. The trades are not going to be enough. And you need more than the men you've got on the field right now to capture the zone quickly. Sib again. Three straight on defense. Skies joins him in the feed as well. They're challenged with all the confidence in the world, too. They are turtling up on this setup. That's because they trust the teamwork. And right now, they are on point. Envoy inside of P1. There he goes. The trade's always there. No solo trials really coming through from New York. Someone always nearby. ASD getting shut down. Cafe under lock and key. 12 seconds left. Ultra going to have to flood the point, but there are just no openings on this map. Nah, none whatsoever. Slam shot. Envoy might be able to make a desperate dash over towards A. Not going to happen. Subliners defense holds. They take the round. Absolutely perfect as well. Ultra not even able to touch a small toe on that A zone. Still though, that is just a standard round. Ultra, not upset at it. Happy to cut their losses and go on to the defensive end. 
One of the most lethal threats for Ultra on this map is their defense is at times so overwhelming and so clean that they can just stop you from getting either zone. So Miner's got to make sure that they are on point from the opening break. Want to avoid that spawn trap fate. The trap here in Invasion is a bad one. That far left-hand side of the map. We call it Palace. It's embassy in game. That's where you're basically stuck. There's two or three avenues on the ground level out. Good luck. Have fun. Kleenex is in. Holds it all together on the A side of the map for now. Oh, they're going straight at it, uh -oh. though. Kismet is going to be able oh, to no. pick up two. Trying to go for the cross and trying to stay alive Ooh. on the car. Can't quite get it done. Big Gunny there out of scrap, and New York Subliners do get stuffed. But they're getting a close spawn down this A street. Still, though, can't find any kills. Defense right now on point, but Hydra the opening again, looking to make that hero play. Shoulder to shoulder, CQB there in the middle of the map. Hydra now has to get on the A site. He's going to be slowly capturing it. Ooh, unfortunate angle there is inside, takes care of business. Over to B we go. Still just under a minute to play here in the game. Capture the zone, add a minute to the clock. And they got a trophy on the zone as well. Sibdel playing a touch bit aggressive, but it's aggressive because he's going to be able to get that trade. Scrap going to fall. Hydra showing up as well, and Kismet getting those cutoff kills. Aggressive as well while playing the objective. Subliners certainly applying the pressure. Right now, looking like clockwork. That conveyor belt system, though. You allow Sib to move forward. His teammate picks up that position. They bound from objective to that forward position, trying to stop the flow of Toronto Ultra into the fight. Sib, his incursion behind enemy lines is still alive. His teammates finding the kills as well. Kismet on the flank now. Takes care of business. We should see B gone. Yeah, Envoy could have turned their attention, but he slides out and just dies immediately. B zone is secured. Extra minute to the clock. And well, right now for the subliners, still a long way to go. Testing the metal, the defensive end of Toronto Ultra, but we've seen this story before. Yeah, we have indeed. Cleaning up the streets right now. Trying to keep subliners out of the play for as long as you can. One minute 20 is a lifetime here on Invasion. As long as they uh, keep doing stuff like that, you're going to be quite happy. As Insight from the back of the broken car here is a great spot to be in. Kleenex now taking care of your spawners. He's one away from a cruise. Yeah, that's the big moment for Kleenex. A cruise missile on this map can go such a long way. We've seen Turby earn them before. And he's going to get it. Easy gunfight win there. Finally, he does get traded. But still for the subliners, they're spawning up sort of close to mid, but it is still a hike and a half across the map. Inside the cutoff, man. Hydra not quite able to hear him, or Whoa. maybe he is. Hydra's headset knows no bounds. Not at all. And this is that tiny little door at the bottom side of uh, Fountain on Karachi. Kill's still going the way, though, of Ultra. Exactly the same situation we saw. This time, though, the subline has only six lives left. Not that they're being careless, it's the Ultra being a little bit more ruthless on these attacking defensive moments. Hydra's got an opportunity to go forward. It all comes down to scrap. He's got to go very big and sights down. All down to scrap on this side of the street. Two players, though, just going to funnel in through one tiny door. It's all about the timing. And, well, you just simply do not have the lives. One last double up down the A street. Scrap, well, turn one direction. The other two players on the other side. But it is all going to be up to Hydra. Nothing you can do. Child's coming through and taken care of. Two rounds in a row, both the standard. B zone secured, tied up on the tick front. The only difference maker, Kleenex able to get that cruise missile. Envoy right back in it as well. 18 and 12 with 3K over two rounds. A tough start to the series. And we know we've got the Envoy fan club in the front row cheering every time he gets a kill. I've seen his mum nervously pacing around the venue as well. Stress though for the Ultra boys. I don't think they feel it. Our most composed team in the league by a country mile. Let's find out if that composure can turn into a map win and push the series deeper. And I appreciate the respect, too. Again, not even trying to go for anything cheeky over towards A. Subliners, though, two players over on the left side of Treehouse. Envoy might have the route. Slam. Somehow gets red, but it doesn't matter. He's done a fantastic job this map, but it's deciding between the rival nine and the MCW. Man always has the right gun in the right moment at the right time. 20 kills already. Oh. Round number three, oh. it was a double chow that took him down. He allowed his boys to get two segments there on B. It's great work. Sib looking for the angle, not going to have it. Slow play towards A was cut out as well. It's now defensively, that B Street is naughty. Yeah, these are the big moments too right now because you're actually struggling to get over towards this B zone. He got skies behind you as well. 
Uh -oh. And this is another uh -oh. way to win the map. You win the defenses extra hard and stop that third tick from ever coming through. Ultra have to group up and try to get back together. They are getting picked apart. This is the trap. Hydra is on one side of the map. Kismet now moving in towards the other. Great work there from Ultra. Bully your way through one side. Punch a hole. Fly towards A. Skies is going to be the man to get there in time. Kismet looking to slow down reinforcements. Oh, and it's just worked out perfectly. Oh, it could not have been better. Three down. Envoy finds a kill, but it's consolation at this moment. Yeah, Envoy's taking the route too. He's looking to get the extra cutoff kills, and that is the exact right decision. He might get traded, but just trying to open up the floor floodgates for the team. Kismet slowed him down, but he's going to drop. Ultra with less than 30 seconds on the clock. Might have found their opening towards B. Trying to get in towards B. If there's a trophy, good. If not, you're about to meet your maker, and thy maker's name is likely Frag Grenade. Hydra on the pinch. He sees a trophy. He sees the boys. He gets two. Back on him. It goes Scrap. He wins his fight. Here comes Ultra. That should be B. A minute to go. That is a big moment. Things could have spiraled, but Ultra taking care of business and making sure nothing gets out of control. Oof. Envoy continues to be this lethal threat in the map three. That is his 25th kill already. And pushed up into DVDs, getting great intel for his teammates. Nice reads on Skies as well. And he's able to live on the cross. Oh his teammates God. start winning gunfights. You might be able to make the move. Because we're trying to get involved in sight with a perfect coverage. Numbers now. But it's going to be a straight up long range gunfight down that street. Can Envoy get there in time? Soften him up. No. Seven Skies find theirs. Push Ultra back. 38 seconds to go, all dead. Wow, that two-piece from Sib was massive before he gets traded, except he doesn't because the teamwork perfect on the defensive end. Subliners have had a perfect record, and they're looking like they're going to maintain it once again. It is going to be furious scatter push Dang. over towards this new zone, but it's not looking like they're getting past Sib anytime soon. No, no time soon whatsoever. Time as well, 15 seconds on the round. There's a bit of a moment here as they've gotten through the back. Is this going to happen? Are we going to get into the point? Sky says to see it coming. Now, man number one. Hydra makes man number two a dead man. You're still capturing the zone, though. Back to the street for the gunfight. Kids in trouble. If I'm Kleenex, I might call this cruising as well. You're getting the extra kills. You got players on the cross. You just need that extra little bit of help. You get the extra tick, but only four lives remaining. How far can they go? Holding the line. Envoy still capping the point. The gunfight's still in the street. There's no cover for Kleenex. No problem. Finds one. The second. The capture's still going. A two-man stack. The nade. Envoy stay alive. Oh, he gets one. Eight seconds on the clock. Two members of Ultra remaining. Scrap, send it inside. Backing him up. Skies has to win the fight. The round is done otherwise. He does. New York. Another goal line finish for the subliners. I, th this is a battle versus a war type situation, though. That is a wonderful moment from Toronto. You might lose the round, but it is the invasion control special, the extra ticks, not just one, but two. They were able to get in those desperation moments. Envoy absolutely class right now, averaging 10 kills per round. That is a world champ caliber bounce back right now from Envoy. Still, though, from subliners, might be a situation. They're going to have to win one of these next two defensive or offensive rounds, rather, but this is certainly a team that can get it done. What a humdinger of a control game we've got here. Insight, first blood, awkward situation to be in for Hydra, but he makes the most of it, and he might be able to get another one here. Gets a shoulder caught on the door frame there. He knows something's up. Oh, but Insight up close range with the MCW. Clock still ticking and a little bit of work at B done. Yeah, Hydra was only there for distraction to make sure the reinforcements off spawn for the Ultra players more towards A. His teammates now a little bit comfort on the B oh. zone, but not winning the gunfights. Couple trades rolling through. Kismet right now needs to stay alive and he can't get it done. This could be the Toronto stranglehold. Oh. Welcome to the palace spawn. Guys, he's trying to get away with his life. And he will indeed. Middle of the map, though. Wow, beams onto inside. Tags on the Kleenex, a two-piece. And just like that, an opening. The subliners are in onto the point. Instead of being in the blender, well, now you're the team applying the pressure. Envoy still behind you, picking up kills as well. So New York are going to have to look two different directions. Still a problem. The Toronto players are crawling around this zone. Still crawling, sliding. 
buying time. Sky's doing what he can. Well, here's the problem, though. Toronto are going to be able to defend B, so Hydra forced to now go over towards the A zone. He is completely by himself, but Toronto have to be very fast to get back for the reinforcements. Oh, Toronto 2-2 two -two split here. They're trying not to let Sky's shenanigans continue. It's done. B is safe. They may not know that, but they can fly across the map. They kill the player on A as well, so now the clock ticks. 20 seconds to go. Envoy through the middle of the map. Scrap finds a two. You're looking at another round. Oh, Kismet gets caught, too. Well, the defense was almost all but a guarantee, but they are going the extra mile. Scrap a kill away from another cruise. This could be three they oh. have in the back pocket. He's going to get it. A moment like that, Toronto might have just called game. Okay, okay. Starting to heat up. Final round. Final round, potentially for Ultra here in the tournament. Insight got things going there. Cruise missile a plenty for the Ultra boys. My James Bond moment. Q, if you could hit us up with the cruise track, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. That was fantastic. I've totally been pulled out of the game. Let's go. Final round, folks. I mean, there we go. It's a, you, know, <laughs> you have an entire arsenal now at your disposal to win a round of defense on Invasion Control. Ultra Wizards on this map somehow able to go the extra mile. And if I'm Envoy, maybe at this point, just go for a record-breaking performance. Straight over towards B we go, but there is almost no reason not to start calling in the cruises. There you go. Funny enough, it does look a bit like an exploding pen. Off the beat. No impact, but you move the players away from the zone for a moment. Kismet trying to soften up the attackers as they look desperately now to reshuffle the board that the subliners have set. Kleenex is once again back in his happy place, taking care of players from spawn. One segment down, two to go. And of course, extra benefits to the crews, helps take away the trophies as well. You see all these players tattered and tagged up on B. Too many directions to look. And already Toronto, they set up the stranglehold. They use the cruise missile perfectly. And if you're trying to be desperate for New York and warm over towards A, well, you can see Toronto, they've got it covered. Scraps halfway to another one as well. So watch out, Kleenex. Will they know he's behind the dozer? Envoy keeping the streak safe. So both fronts right now being managed very well by Toronto Ultra. Not letting anything get through just yet. Try not to let any lives go either. Well, there's two kills in the feed. This might be the one opening New York was looking for to put pressure on either zone. Kleenex, oh though, so on point. There's number three. And again, his presence alone is going to slow the subliners down. Looking for four as well. Skies and Kismet, can they bring down the Great Dane? Everywhere you look, this player is flying at him. And he's going to find those kills. Middle of the map's wide open. Second segment of B gone. This should be the final moment here on B. I mean, hey, might as well call on another cruise, though, and try to get the setup back in the mix. I don't hear one rolling through, though. So maybe Ultra just going to chalk it up. That B zone so quick to fall. The life count is even a minute and a half to work with. Subliners, though, still such a long way to go. A little bit of pressure on the map, able to make it towards DVD and Rogue. Sky's right oh. now. He's hauling ass. He's trying to get through, staying alive in Rogue's, but Whoa. can't get it done. Kleenex gives you two. And you are basically back to square one. Lovely shots from Hydra there on the inside through the grass. Kleenex is still alive. Howdy. Lovely wall banks from Kismet. Magnificent game knowledge, and same thing for Envoy! Oh! The Bulldog. The bark and the bite are equally as mighty. And you stop the clock as well. Well, here's another cruise coming into the mix, but you can stay on the zone. How good are Kleenex's curves? Miss, absolute whiff. Might strike out as well. Hydra on the zone, if you win that, it could be crazy. Whoa. Envoy somehow gives you two. It gives you two, Kleenex is tagged. Oh no, a crossfire, one man. On A, first segment gone, second man in, go Ultra Fly! This is going to be quick as well, Scrap though with the gunny and Sky's last man standing the trophy, putting it over time and on the cross, you're getting the extra kill, Sky's still alive! Sky's survives! He's still going, Envoy finds 40, but it's not going to be enough, Hydra! Hydra cuts him down! The zone still being captured! And it's over! It only takes one moment, and the New York subliners get in. That A-zone capture felt like a long time for them, for us. It's about 18 seconds. A decisive victory. A 3-0 in the series, a 3-2 in that control.
we say farewell to Toronto Ultra. What a turnaround it was, but a little too late. And Toronto after Major 1, we're talking about how they're trying to take it all, but they go going around a defense on Invasion with that many cruises and they still can't get it done. That is the definition of slammed. The subliners just straight up, they have their number. Not skipping a beat on land. That is an unreal performance through and through. Envoy might have dropped 40, but they just choked in the end. In the end, it was just too much. The subliners dodging cruise missiles, dodging nades, dodging brilliant performances. They somehow managed to find a way to wrap their way into the A zone and stay alive. And if not for some insane gunfights, I mean, we're talking the highest possible pressure moment. They walk away with it, both the search and the control, nailed by it. It was the Rio, an absolute blowout. I mean, gee, it was, it was ugly. It was ugly. Uh, this is just, uh, I mean, look, this is a lot of credit to the, the coaching staff. Center putting in overtime work. It looks like Skies and Hydra with the wall bag spots and <laughs> yeah. all the extra homework and details <laughs> they put in. They were back in the lab after the major. They've at least bought themselves now a top three performance and the opportunity to continue to play from Ultra. Well, a first place, nice trophy lifted, but here they just fall short, ended up in the fourth seed. It's, I'm just impressed by the sub -butters, man. Again, all yeah. the extra work they're doing to win rounds like that on the invasion offense, it is ridiculous stuff they were bringing to the table. It's really hard to do. If you played rank, you know what's going on. But if you're playing a full stack of absolute demons, you could probably see through walls. That's what it feels like. That's what it's like playing these boys. Our scuff play of the game is going to be the final moments of that control. A lot happened in a very, very small space of time. Charles, walk us through it. I mean, they were just able to pick up almost every single kill on the cross. It was the one that was starting it. But you can see it's a nice little street that he was going on, but him and Skies in these moments just seemingly unstoppable. Even when, like, they were losing some of these gunfights, it is one of those moments, as soon as that cruise missile misses, you're feeling so much more confident about the round, and then inside of the hill, Skies completely on point. A four spree in a moment like that when needed in the most, and then, well, Hydra just took one of the deepest rounds you could have to get behind enemy lines. That is a well-coordinated effort. That is trust in your teammates. That is one hell of a way to call again. That's 3-0. Our first of four series today in the books. History made once again as the New York Subliners managed to find a big victory over Toronto Ultra. Our major one winners out of the tournament third place. Hey, still, our top four very, very much cemented. Those who saw it coming definitely were correct. For now, though, I just can't believe what a crazy series that was. We've got our Monster Energy winner spotlight on stage. It's Kismet. Thank you so much, Miles and Chance. Miami, show some love to the New York Subliners as they stay in this tournament. Kismet, man, y'all got them boys digits told free over there, okay? Why is this matchup so easy for y'all? Uh, I wouldn't say it's, like, easy. Uh, they're a good team. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just think we just play well against them. They play good COD, and we kind of understand how they play, and we just do a lot of studying them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I just think we play good against them. You guys definitely do play good against them. It's definitely a good matchup. Now, in this 3-0, kind of take me back to the round 11 in the S&D. That was so epic in here. Who called the play, and what was going on in your head? Um, I mean, I think Paco called for uh, one of our nade strats. Uh, we threw nades, and then after that, we were just like, let's just hold them off for the bomb sites, and I played A side. I actually heard one of them playing A side, so that whole time I was playing for Kleenex, and mm. then the rest of us were just like, we know when Kleenex is playing that, the other mm -hmm. three are playing B side, so we just said hold B, and that's what we did, and it, it panned out. So. And it worked out, and you guys kept that momentum going up 2 0 in the series before you close it out. Now, the job isn't done just yet. What do you want to tell to, to, to the New York Subliners fans? in New York, in this venue, all around the world as you guys continue this run? Uh, as always, yeah, I love my mom and dad. Yeah, they everywhere. Uh, my girlfriend, everybody all out here supporting me. I love you guys, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. All right, show some more love to the subliners. Chris, let's break it down. Love to see Mama and Papa Kismet in the crowd celebrating their son's accomplishments. And here is another one. New York Subliners back into our top three. They're guaranteed $60,000. And more importantly, this is 60 points. This puts them right up in there with the top four squads. And this is what they needed, right? Back at Major 1, we forget they got double rounded out, so they didn't get yeah. any points from that Major. So for them to have a chance of trying to steal a top seed, this was an incredible match from them. Toronto exits with 30K in their pocket. Not a 
terrible weekend, but they were expecting more, and they will be watching on as we will see Optic and Atlanta still to come in our winner's bracket finals. But Nameless, let's break down this series. Three games, but very, very tight games, especially that search and destroy. Yeah, that S&D was absolutely amazing. You know, we'll get into that in a second, but we start off with that hard point. New York, man, their guns were hot. I don't know how they warmed up or who they scrimmed against this morning because they came out and they could not lose a gunfight rotation after rotation. We saw some life through Scrap towards the latter half of that game. Yeah. He was winning some big gunfights, you know, brought him back into it. But then we get to that S&D. Sort of a back and forth battle. The 5-5 five, five strategy out of the New York subliners was absolutely beautiful. What'd they do? You see Kismet jumps onto the bus, gets into single. I think uh, Insight hears him a little bit. He just sort of baits them and stays alive the entire time. So he forces him to wrap all the way back to Coop. But what New York did is they dropped their trophy early. So when they wrap back and try to throw that smoke to get bombed down, nah, -uh, it's not gonna happen. Nah. So that smoke doesn't go down. They try to plan. Sib gets a free kill on bomb. A couple people get traded going through mid map. Just excellent game planning out of New York subliners. Shout out to their coaching staff. Yeah, and you can definitely tell there's preparation going into these matches on both sides of the ball, right? Especially the New York camp though, knowing what their opponent's trying to do yeah. and actually countering it with that trophy system. There you had it in Search and Destroy. Allie, who clutched up, though, in Game 3 for you? Who do you give MVP honors to? It's got to be Hydra and Skies. Uh, Skies going on that insane spree in the end there, but Hydra throughout the entirety of that Game Number 3 was just consistently putting the pressure on Toronto Ultra's base and not allowing them to get that 4 down and get in on that 8 point. And for me, like, Hydra's just simply been that guy since the beginning of this season. And he cheats. Entire time. And he gets the play of the game because look at He can see moving. through walls, Nameless. Dude, nobody's getting craftier than the New York Subliners, like they find a way to level up in search How and destroy. And every single title, like they are literally <laughs> guys. I was a pro player for a long time. You have to spend hours and hours to find things like this. They are running around in private match, and this is the love of the game. It's not just work for these guys, it's the love of the game that is why they're finding success. And it's not just the player and coaches, they're like recruiting their social media managers and girlfriends to spot in so that they can test these spots out. I saw Laura tweeting, she was like, we did this last night with Troy. I'm so happy to see it work on an actual match. It's crazy. It's doing yeah. it for the team. It's a lot more than the effort you guys see live in the matches. So many hours poured behind the scenes. Nameless, so let's catch everyone up with where we're at. If you are just joining us, welcome to the Call of Duty League. This is our second major, and we have just three matches remaining. Where are we going next, Ant? We got a banger. We got E Classico, Optic versus FaZe, seemingly at the top of their games for a spot in a Major 2 championship. We've got your calendars ready. If you haven't already, sync it right now and stay in the know of when your favorite team is playing every step of the way up to COD Champs. The 2024 season is online and you can have it in your inbox, Allie. Yeah, you can literally have it on your phone's calendar. And if you have an iPhone 13 like me where it's really, really tiny, make sure that you scan that QR code so it takes up the entirety of it. When we come back, it's one of the greatest rivalry in esports. We got the Green Wall and Optic Texas taking on the Red Squad, Allie. Land of phase from down south. Don't go anywhere. This is Miami, Major 2. up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store start the season strong with the call of duty league pack grab yourself the cdl operator weapon blueprint and so much more check out the call of duty store in game now
What do you think of my shirt today? Uh, it, it is a choice. It's a choice. Listen, guys, I put this shirt on. I felt pretty, I felt pretty sexy, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and thought, God, God, God damn. And then I got into the green room and everyone said, your shirt's too tight, you look like an idiot. And I was it's like, just a little too small, but it, it works. You have both players from LA Thieves trying to attack this from the middle of the map, but this might play right into shots he's in. So they're gonna get completely caught off guard and the bomb is gonna be able to go down at B. And LA Thieves, let's see how quick they do realize oh. this. Dashy just fell off the map. Fans roaring early in Kenny. My, what is this round? Finding picks, Shotzi. The guy's Michael Phelps on. He's going for a deep swim around the flag. Shotzi, or is it Aquaman? Coming up from the depths. Champs is solidified. Now it's about getting that championship. We know how that momentum can get you the ring. And look at that trophy. What's it's that? The best in That's Call of history. Care right there. We did pretty good in Black Ops, too. I think that thing is better. Let's take a look at the catch. There. We're going to have some laughs during this match, Maven. I'm going to openly just ask, who will be the worst player we see in the All-Star game today? The worst player from all of these teams? Oh, this is hard, man. It's the All-Stars. Oh, I got to think about this. It's going to be Octane. It's it going to be Octane? Yeah, he's, uh, he he's, was a beast yesterday. He was number two well, overall SND yeah, KD. Yeah, yes, he has, but guess what? Octane's had one good event since like 2016. I'm going with Nameless just because he can probably hear me right now. <laughs> he's going to choke big time. <laughs> Behind enemy lines. He's getting loose early every round. Like, certainly makes the big play. And now you run offense flanking. You've taken the bomb straight through the middle of the map. Hook, he's Love everywhere. It. You're getting oh flanked on defense, but if BZ gives him the ish, and Methods wins his one as well. <laughs>
the current game. Yeah, you know, going back and forth, I feel like Optic in that game one, Atlanta in that game four is the edge, but in the hard points overall, Optic's been working on their Karachi, widening their map pool, which could give them an edge. I think this solely comes down to that invasion control. We've seen Atlanta be great at it all year long, but throughout this stage, Texas 10 and one on defense, Dashy with a 1.2 specifically on that one. I think for me, Optic Texas is hoping to get to the later half of this series, especially because they're playing that terminal search destroy, which is one of their worst, two and six so far in the season. So I think they're going to try and aim for that game four, game five. But they figured out terminal throughout this stage. It did get quite yes. interesting. The 6 1 win over Toronto was very impressive. That was pretty convincing, but remember, Toronto has it's been awesome. struggling <laughs> in search and destroy. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm told the players are ready, so we got to jump right into it. It's time for our scuff pickums. Nameless, do us the honors. Can you get to 79? Uh, what am I, 78 and 39? That's pretty good, huh? It's pretty good. I'm going with Optic Texas. They've looked strong. They have not lost in quite some time. I think they get it done. Rosalie, how are we feeling? I'm not catching in with this one, I guess. I'm also going to go with Optic Texas. I think they've just looked better recently. I haven't chosen Optic Texas all weekend long. That's crazy. Crowd? No wonder you're losing. Optic Texas wins today. <laughs> I have to ride with you guys. Optic, the number one seed, is perfect so far, and they haven't allowed a game five yet. Let's see if they can keep it up as they take on phase. Guy, it's your show. Thank you so much, Chris. Miami, it's time for the El Clasico, as it's about to feel like Christmas in March here in Miami as we light this stage up red and green. Now, the first squad coming out to the stage, Ready to build that dynasty, brick by brick. Show some love, Green Wall, to Optic Texas! We got Kenny, Shotzi, Fred, and Dashy. Optic Texas looking to do it this season. Man, them championship whites look good. Hopefully their gameplay does as well. This is series that has been so tough for Shotzi throughout this year. A .77 in this matchup. He's looking to fry. He's been in MVP form since this stage two started. Gonna have to get it done against one of the best teams we've ever seen. Let's bring him out. Let's bring him out. This stage is already ablaze, but it wouldn't be without Atlanta Fays! We got Draza! He loves this matchup with a 1.39 last time. It's time to get the second matchup of the day to see who meets us in that grand finals. Let's go, Blaze. It's time to get this one started. As I said, it's the El Clasico. Miami, let's set it off right. Are you ready? Merck, Maven, let's go. Let's go is right. I am fired up. Uh, listen, uh, doing this a long time. Done a lot of these matchups. It's the most historic matchup we have in our eSport. Some of the best moments we have ever had. And you think about just recently, all optic last year, phases year to maybe answer back. We're in for a treat. No, we always are. Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit different, though. Uh, obviously, major one, phase is able to win both of those, eliminate optic. But yep. this is just a, a different optic text. It's, it feels like what they're on nine wins in a row. They do not have a weak game mode their map pool has gotten stronger and stronger this is a different team well, I think one big thing, you know, a lot of talk with Optic has been Shotzi, right? Uh, he has these stretches every year where he is just absolutely insane. And what in the matchups for his face in the past, he has struggled a bit. He That was kind of before he erupted, right? Has become the Shotzi that is playing right now. This is a test. Show we can do it here against FaZe. No, it is. Yeah, he struggled a little bit. The only player positive versus FaZe on this roster this year is, is Pret. Uh, that's it. Everybody else is around a .8. On the other side, for Atlanta FaZe, you heard Ali talk about it. Selium loves this. He has a 1.4 on the year versus this team. <laughs> that is disgusting. Simp right behind him with a 1.2. But we're going to an invasion hard point. You and I have casted phase a couple of times on this map. This weekend has not looked great. It hasn't. It has not looked great. So it's a chance for Optic to strike. This will be their hard point pick to start it off. Players getting loaded into the map right now, and we're getting ready to get nasty. Miami, it's time for map one. Optic phase. Let me hear it. Here we go. Banger. Upcoming. Map one underway. 
And this, man, Shotzi, can it be his playground? Can he frustrate this squad? Is the finesse is there so far, but the trade is in and Simp gets going early. What do you think has been the struggle for FaZe kind of so far on this map since we've been casting him here this weekend? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, the last 5% or so uh, of a hill, they just kind of let let those spawns flip. But you hear the FaZe fans, the Optic fans, back and forth on the hill, some nice early time. They, I think they're playing the map pretty darn well. It's just when spawns are flipping, sort of 5, 10 seconds left in a the hill, they're allowing the opponents to get to the better side of the map and control those money hills. Yeah, just little moments, little moments where things start to fall apart a bit, but Prince POV, it's draws, that'll line him up. Simp with a nice start, but he will fall as well, but it's three through on the feed for Atlanta phase. Draws will find the last. Everybody coming off spawn now for Optic Texas, and this is great. I mean, your phase, you're setting up early for AP2, and this is something we didn't really see at all from them, right? No, I mean, look how far away you were spawning if you were off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Redis P1 just kind of ends. Nice opener, though, from Dashi on the Celium. Abizi now, the next man up. Well, he's going to hit some beamers. Uh, these two teams warmed up, locked in. Abizi, three in a row, flipping those spawns. Now a great play out of him. Draws on the hill. He's taken down, but now Simp, he's up next. I mean, this is what you want, right? That early time, now it's gonna be white for a while. You're able to flip out his cell lines up too. And things so far looking good for FaZe. Is Optic battling out of that palace side of it. You got one player forward, I think was Kenny. Sorry, Dashi was trying to make the play. He drops, draws starting to go as well. He's quadruple positive at eight and two. You got just 10 seconds left here. And yeah, you're getting time plus you have rotation. Could be a nice sequence here. We know, we know like any kind of lead on this map, the way it plays with the clock and the way it plays around the objective, 50 lead, pretty significant early on. Well, it's just, again, it's sort of controlling these spawns. The next hill popping, there is the first kill for draws. So that's gonna send Optic forward or onto draws from Shotzi. And yeah, this is kind of where they were messing up last time. What was Atlanta phase? Just a couple of times on this map, they let opponents through, the spawns flip. It has been perfect nice so far. And you see that here on the scoreboard. Nice snap onto the head of Shotzi there. Simp on the headshots as well. Selling him inside the point. Just trying to be annoying here from the vending machine, but the help comes in. In a perfect world, you don't got to do much of your cell there. Let the boys get out and fry, and that's exactly what Simp and Abizi are doing right now. Three in a row for Simp, leading the way at 11-5. and five. So far, so good. Trying to push this out to 100-point advantage as he's trying to keep it locked. Fantastic stuff thus far for FaZe. We are through almost three hard points. You have five points on the board if you are Optic. There has been nothing. You have been in the Palace Blender. This is what we talked yep. about with this map. Shotzi now trying to get you out of it, but you have a whole hill to deal with with P4. Woo. Nice snaps from Abizi. His MCW has been on point a lot of the times on this map when they've needed it, whether it's search the respawns. Very comfortable, but now Shotzi getting going. He's on five in a row. This is what they cannot do. They cannot lose him in certain spots. I think number eight spots him, but you're not going to get the reaction. So Cruz in for Shotzi. You have that to work with. But time still going the way of phase as the ARs are beaming. But maybe behind that streak, you're able to get a big flip in one of these upcoming points. Start to get something going if you are Optic Texas. Maybe shots starting to flow, but the combo there of draws and Abizi on the street. Enough to lock down Dashi. Shotzi once again looking for his next opener. An invasion style, nobody to the point for a moment. Finally, you'll rally in if you are. Optic Texas, but where is the success going to come? You can't have two and three go they that way They might have two again. flips here. They might get two flips. That is it. So here's yep, a chance here now. Can you find Draza and Simp? Because Abizi and Cell off spawn. Now it's just down to Simp, and this is the problem with FaZe. We saw it time and time again, and it happens. They are controlling middle of the map. The next push from Optic is clean, and now it is a fight, a 50-50 by P5. This is where you can make a statement if you're Optic Texas. Claw back into this one if you got the opportunity to do it, but sell help from a car. Explosions in, and Shotzi is down. Kenny now trying to be the playmaker. Abizi can't find an opening due to Dashi. And the back spawns and control is all Optic Texas for now. Finally able to get into the point, accrue some time, chip away at this lead that FaZe got going early. Yeah, I mean, they got, got out, right? You get out of Palace, you're able to earn this time. Still 30 seconds left. Gunfight's going down. Kenny now on five in a row. Outside of Shotzi, pretty much everybody was double negative before these last couple of hills. 
So you get the one streak. Can you find the second? You absolutely can. The headshot's coming through here for the green wall. And sometimes for Optic, it can be not so much this weekend, but they have plenty of slow starts in the qualifier part of this, where they came out, didn't get going until late in a map one, didn't get going until a map two. They're familiar with this because they've done it many times. Now they're starting to heat up, come alive, getting ready to head to our next point and see if now it's Optic Texas' turn to make a rally behind a couple of those streaks. It's Pred falling short as he gets dropped, but Dashy also on four in a row. Yeah, I think to the other side, FaZe has played really early in the series quite well. I mean, we saw it yesterday versus New York. They go up too well in the map one, very much one-sided. You had a great start here again from FaZe. Can you kind of deal with Optic's pushback? Yeah, this is going to be a big sequence here because, yeah, if you're Atlanta phase, you know, you do great mid-map. You set up for two. You're able to flip out for three. Can you improve on that? If you're Optic Texas, maybe not allow that to happen and claw back into this. But so far, looking so good for FaZe. You're spawning all the way back by gas, trekking across the map right now if you're Texas. And this has been a ton of time. Almost 30 seconds earned here at this P1. It was in 30 or 40, but now that lead backed out to 70. Over on rotation, you're going to have one player in Celium all the way pushed up back to Rehouse to slide in. But Shotzi, he's going to hear that. He's ready for it. The finesse, the man is a magician in these type of scenarios. Well, Cell will drop, so they're able to pick him up. And now you call him the streak, or one of your streaks behind this. Shotzi, to the skies we go. Death from above, and the tractor player in Civ will be dropped. You try to collapse on this, a pinch coming through. Number three, Pred able to get the angle and push through deep. So you at least get them out of the hard point for now. But can you keep them out? You get a crazy spawn if you're selling them. They did a gift here, does Atlanta face? Oh he spawns God. a treehouse. It's a free pinch. He's only going to find one. Dashing with some nice shots. Now trying to lock it down. He's got the help of Pred. That gets scary. Yeah. I mean, the game gifts you one if you are phased, but opt to handle it. Yeah, invasion, <laughs> you get blessed, you get cursed. The map giveth and taketh away. How can you react? You get a good one there if you're Optic Texas, and now you've been able to hold from that side too. You don't allow the flip to come in if you're phased. So a better job here, but still not a ton of time earned. So you're still down approximately 80 points. This is where you need a good hold. You have got position on the map if you're Optic Texas. You need to lock this down, pred in the point. The rest are hunting. You here we go. It's time to go. Bad timing here. I think you had Kenny pick up DVD, and yeah, so you're gonna have no idea. Draws is here. He might have a free kill onto Dashy. Might influence spawns, but Dashy. She knows something is up. The comms on point for Optic. Where is Shraza? Where is been, where's he been at? And they pick up the pinch. You get this time. Suddenly, it's a 20-point game. A fantastic sequence here from Optic Texas. Still one cruise to earn. Optic Texas are bringing it back. The crowd's been getting behind them. They're rallying now to a listen-in with Optic Texas. You bring this within 30, but it's a couple of big kills from Selium here for next that might be crucial for FaZe. The break, opportunity now alive and well for Texas is you've got bodies here. Sell though, still lurking. That's three in a row. He's just been battling around this point. He just needs some help now, but you're going to have Kenny on one side cutting off reinforcements. Here comes the chow. That's Sim. Selium still alive. That's going to be the comm. Great comms from Optic. 
Brent gets another street shot he with the rival. We are 10 points away from a lead change. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ysel gets all those big kills, but everybody else, all the other good fights going off to Texas. You get all this time. Now out in front, lead change. Optic as they take over in this map one. Just over a minute on the play clock. Contest on the point. Does this come down to 250 or the time? I don't know at this point. Yeah, last time through P1 was great for FaZe. Maybe they can get to that setup again, but you still have two cruise missiles, I believe, on the side of Optic to win the rotation over to P2 and maybe find the winning time in that area. But we shall see once we get there. Is it going to be Kenny winning a big one-on-one -on -one versus Draws? I mean, I'm thinking... Uh... We basically have a tie game. We've got two streaks. Yeah, we've got the advantage in this situation, but can you get good use out of them? Into the point, though, early. It's Optic Texas trying to get the time. BZ looking to play. Spoiler, the timing not great. It's Kenny five in a row. Time maybe for another cruise. When they've gone off, it has been in streaks. They get the kill on Kenny, though, so not another cruise, at least, as Semp is hitting. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, how many streaks can you get if you are Optic? Everybody's stepping up. Fred now on a big pinch, trying to find an angle. The player on the hill, that's going to happen on rotation. Kenny Dashi already thinking about P2, controlling DVD and broken. They're going to try to find a setup for phase. They're just going to use this time to try to extend this lead, or at least I thought so. But Kenny making play some insane movement, but he does get taken down. And maybe behind that killer, too, that is an opening for phase to get going. See how they decide to do this. Try to push through, just try to fight from this side. Probably think about holding for a third if they're able to. 10 points separating him again, pushing forward. It's a BZ with the pick. Still more bodies though here from Optic Texas. But you cruise. get three. Now you gotta take one cruise. At least gonna be coming into the fray. I think it's gonna be Preds. That'll call it in. Let's see what he's able to do. Probably the player by tractor. We'll see you later. Poor Simp, the one smoked by the streak again. This Kenny, a lovely double, trophy out. Map control for now, into the point, 24 on the clock, Joe. Yeah, but all phase right now, Selium's able to win a big one-on-one -on -one versus Shotzi, bottom side of the map. FaZe just wants to keep them spawning out towards Palace. Job done so far, 20 seconds. Look at the play clock as well, that is going to come into play. It's down to 19, the final 10, gonna go the way of Optic. Again, you have a cruise, you can maybe find an opener, but FaZe, you have played for this setup, can you cash in? Here comes the streak. This is the moment now. Texas got to try and win on the rotation and get the break. Draws over the kill during it. Streak not going to hit. Inside the hard point and climbing for now it will be Atlanta phase. Down five. Lean change looming. Here come off the gaming. Yeah, Seven, you might rely on one. Shotzi all the way in the back, though. Abizi's here ready for this. Two more players for Optic. You have some split spawns. It's Palace spawns, not close gas spawns here for phase. Still set up inside, still racking up the time, still enough time at the point to get the W. It's basically two a chance to break. You gotta get him out, you gotta get a contest. You get him out for a second, you can't win it there. Neither team now able to close it out. Optic will look up to pick up the rest of the time. Everybody palace side now for Atlanta phase. 10 on the play clock, 20 in the point. You might have to play for like a, a, a P4 setup here. If you are phase thinking about it, be just 10 seconds on both sides. What do Optic want to do here? They're going to collect all of this time. And here we go. You have two players back cafe, one player on the hill, Celia mid tank. This is an absolutely wild finish now. Play clock ticking. Stops as they get in the point. Five points between the teams. One spawn side up. Palace for Texas. Simp win and fights. Rallying back in. Lead changes there in phase now. Going out in front. Ten away from the victory with now seven. Still holding on the clock. Is Pred looking to hit the angle. Can't quite find it. They're getting trapped inside a palace. It's all Atlanta phase for now. No. Opening on the map is phase. Close it out. What a map one here in our best of five, our winner's final. Both teams battling, controlling spawns. A great start for FaZe, a fight back for Optic. I mean, wow. It's just not often there's that little time on the play clock and you're that close to the 250 mark. I mean, if there's like five less seconds on the clock and you have that five point lead, leading from P3, I don't know how that plays out, but there's like just enough that you have a little wiggle room if you're phase. And as you said, like you're gonna have to set up for that so different than you normally would. Cause it's like, we have to be in the point or we lose. Well, in the key, I think really towards the end is you find all the kills in a stack. So when one player does spawn up palace, it's not a free pick.
pinch because yeah. that was when it got scary. If that player from Optic goes top American, finds a kill or two, who knows what would have happened. But they did it in a cluster. It is just such a back and forth game. Everyone pretty much right around the same damage shots. He 4,700, but we saw his impact at times with that rival. And it could be a tough map. On the other side, Cell had so many big rotation gunfights, and he was able to find Shotzi towards P the last P3 to give them a clean setup. Yeah, and uh, I mean, obviously, it's an insanely close game, but yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, the fact that you get those three streaks with such a, with such a tight game, maybe those are the difference, but... Just invasions, it's, yeah. It's, it's more just how big you went down early. Like, I, like, this is a very different conversation if you don't start slow, probably if you're off to Texas. If you get hot maybe a little bit earlier, but they go down, what, close to, what, 80, 100 points? that you're struggling to get, get it going. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, you know, they maybe they start a little bit slow, but that's almost just the nature of the map. You're right, you're right, you are. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. there are more moments where phase, like the second P1, they get 30 to 40 points. It, it, it kind of like, felt like they turned it on, though, at a moment. But, no, yeah. they did, yeah. They get the setup that they wanted for the P3. They're able to win the P5 rotation second time through Optic, and that's when the game got very interesting. Well, it's just, listen, when you have two uh, you know, teams of uh, relatively equal skill, Whatever team's got the better spots <laughs> makes the game look easy, makes it look real hard for the other. So, yeah, the struggles are there for Optic early, but you fight back and you nearly get it done. I think you saw the sigh from Kenny, just like, God, we had that. We had the comeback. Just fall a little bit short. But it just felt like everybody on both sides sort of had their moment to shine, had their big streak to maybe earn a streak, had a big kill on rotation. Cell's just, yeah, that's the one that sort of popped up multiple times. It was just there on the road, though, winning one or two fights, sealing the deal. You know, he, he's just locked in. You can see right there the sort of frustrations on the optic side. But again, a map one very early in this series. Now we're just going to take a look at the, the game flow here, just so you know. We're, we're missing one of the hills when you're looking at this, but. Yeah, not enough room with how many hills we saw on the That's map. That's actually wild. Yeah. That's actually, <laughs> it's such a long point. Our production team's like, just so you know, uh, P1's not there because, yeah, we don't have room on the ground. There was a lot of hills. <laughs> we went through a bunch. Almost comes down to the time, but ends with 250. But you'd see the back and forth battle there. I don't know if I've cast an invasion like that. Yeah. Where it goes to 250 with seven on the clock. Like, that was truly unbelievable a long one there for map one now we take a look at the rest of our series and yeah, you know, just just a reminder me that's going to be the pick that's optics hard point pick yeah. so you give a little bit of an edge fa uh, for phase down this series i would think granted we'll see they both have wide map pulls you can flip it on its head at any moment but let's focus now on search and destroy so we look to the terminal what are your thoughts getting ready for this i mean i, I think if you're an optic fan you, you might be a little bit nervous you see two and six that's the overall all record here but a lot of that was stage one so okay. uh, this is one they've been improving in you heard the desk talk about it they just beat ultra 61 online on this map so i think they're feeling like we're comfortable on this map. On the face side, you're like, we're picking terminal, but you saw them, you know, beat New York yesterday. They're, this is normally one of the maps that they veto. They don't play a lot. But as we take a look at our Monster Energy pregame for Atlanta Phase, they are 4-0 in s &D. And while they are undefeated versus Optic in Search and Destroy. I just think, yeah, this map, it's one. You know how crazy, like, Shotzi can be? He can't really make sneaky plays as well here. He kind of will be wary of his position to some point. But what about the Texas side of the pregame? Yeah, you can see just defense has been the key for Optic in their Search and Destroy. And they're starting off on defense in All round right. number one. Here we go. Time to answer back if you are Optic. But let's see how the opening offense goes on the other side now for phase as they're patiently starting to work their way up toward this a side you hear some of the utilities starting to be exhausted to try and spot for information some shots in the hallway cross there from b then Kenny maybe just trying to get some tags in, but you're starting to work this up. Pressure going to come to Shot Team Pred here soon. Yeah, smoke down, so Optic can have an idea. It's over here towards A. Obviously, you're watching that cross, and you think anytime you're inside a plane, you think about Fred, you think about players like a Shotzi could be their playground. Stun a little messed up from the face side. It happens, even to our pro players. On the other side of the map, just one player hallway, but there is the first Blood King. Able to find one, but it's all to set up the trade. But it's a headshot from Draws to keep that man advantage. I, I thought maybe he could damage him and lead to a team kill. Just maybe a chance for an insane moment from Prev. But it's a BZ, the first Blood King, that's able to get us started. Now 3v2 for FaZe, making a three on one. As you've been lurking to hold the flank this entire time, if you are Simp, you deal with one towards Book. All to Dashi now, Big Brucey's going to drop. FaZe, 
get on the board first in the search. Yeah, Abizi finds that first blood. And maybe your one opening is when Draza is starting to go for that bomb. But, you know, there's so many areas on the map to watch the flank. So Kenny just kind of risks the cross over towards Book. Wants to maybe get a, an angle onto the bomb through the cockpit, but does not happen. Simp had it on lock. Yeah, he's just playing deep towards security that entire time. Just trying to shut down any kind of playmaking ability there in the rotation across for Texas, and he does just that. Now, to offense here for Optic. We'll see what their point of attack will be. Similar 2-2 two -two split and setup now for Faze. Yeah, just gathering info both sides. You know, FaZe, what they did so well yesterday was really winning a lot of those SE fights, just always finding the, the, the man advantage. You had to deal with Sib, who was hitting some beamers, but still yeah. able to win it. Yeah, <laughs> whenever they got numbers, somebody like Sib or Sky is just <laughs> absolute laser darts. Kenny, the opener to BZ is going to get dropped, so not another first blood here for a BZ. Kenny able to pounce. You got a three on two on the other side, starting to work up towards this A site. So pressure going to be building to Simp, but they're probably going to wrap it off off of that kill. That's going to be the play call exactly. So Seldium going to be the low man there. You're going to have to work this rotation if you're the other two. And lurking mid, you still have Ken. Yeah, it comes down uh, to maybe Cell's play here. Number eight, what can he find? Is he going to get a, a little help from his teammate? There is the first. Is there a quick trade? Just trying to get out with Run. his one. Able to do oh, so and God. wins the next one. Cell going huge, two on three. They still have to plant a bomb or do they? Yo. Shotzi trying to make a play, but he gets spotted. Two on two, smoke down. He's just finessing to him with so Shotzi. Can he get to the best. bomb in time? Can he get there in time? That's the question. He's got to go. He's got to get into A. Can he get there? It's Diamond. so close. He hits the dive. I think he got it. I think he got it. But now he's going to stay up. Yo, can't quite get away, but you've got Pred. Can he be the hero now? What an absurd round this has become. 35 on the clock. As Pred probably hearing his heart beating now. Smoke out, gets it on one. Down to a one versus one, and rip it's Cell that makes the plays. Oh, there's the extra sauce. <laughs> And we know, uh, you know, that's, that's what Cell wants to do. But that bottom spot has been more and more common underneath the staircase. But I cannot believe Shotzi that got dashy. to that bomb. But I, I couldn't do that. Dashy up to that gunfight was absurd from Cell. Yeah, absurd. It hits the headshots, comes into play. Cell ready for it. He is the man that changes the round and closes it out as he finds three. Holy hell. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Shotzi getting bombed, getting there, making the play with the dive. There were so many insane moments in that, but... The catalyst that gets it started. You said, what can Selium get done here? The answer was everything, Joe. 2 0 to Faye. Sell will carry the three streak into this. Well, uh, so the trophy, you usually want there before the nades hit, uh, not how it plays out, and Shotzi pops the double. Yeah, that's why you, uh, you'll see the quick gloves out for uh, most of the time, especially on a map like this uh, in SD. So those marksmen, but uh, doesn't play out and well the nades hit so trophy too late and it in turn it turns into a dominant round for optic <laughs> and now your cell last alive you're on a three streak so i guess you're you know thinking what kills can i maybe get to work towards a cruise he's like a little slippery snake looking to move across the ground joe i mean i'm thinking he's shooting my body let's let's stun and assassinate him right yeah oh. <laughs> Nice that's answer. What I, that's what I'd be thinking. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> nice answer from Texas, though. And that's, uh, yeah, it just starts with trophy out too slow. Shotzi's nade hits. The round's over uh, before it started, it feels like. Yeah, game of uh, milliseconds, but here's the nade from Shotzi. It's a team nade from Optic, just able to get top SEs. And yeah, when you're just a little bit too slow, yep. look where that lands. And bang, able to find two. You get right back into it. Fred leading the way, Dashy still looking for his first and maybe wanting revenge for that gunfight with Cell. Pretty similar setup defensively now from Atlanta phase. This time though, Kenny not going to be lurking over towards B. It's a four-man hit, heavy-handed over towards A. Everybody getting ready to slam. Yeah, this is a quick one. They're going to commit to this. So you, you're playing the four-on-four -four retake here if you are phase. Bomb already going down. It is through, so no shenanigans for now. Dashy back it all the way up to where you saw Sim kind of play that the angle. Watching the flank, trying to catch anyone, maybe book hallway or working the deep flank. 
So keep an eye on that, as that's going to eventually be a BC that's going to work down. He's got Deddy Pop too, so we'll see if he can find the timing. But just even find him. He is able to find him, but Fred finds Draza. So three on three, 20 seconds. Rival in hand, able to find the first. You ready for the second? No, there is a trade. And he gets out a lot, but not a lot of time here for FaZe. And it's down to a one on one, but Shotzi is there. Ooh. You got all tied up. You get a quick plant. Time against you. You got to scramble if you're FaZe. And there's one more body. As Shotzi closes down the round. Yeah, just took a little too long there for FaZe to develop. I, I mean, a BZ is trying to find Dashy somewhere. There's so many corners, deep pockets to check. You also get the big one-on-one -on -one win for Pred inside of the jet bridge. So nice trades out of Optic, and now all tied up. Yeah, it's like even though it was a 3v3 after a BZ's kills, like towards the actual bomb, it's three on two. Yep. Like you've got numbers there if you're Optic, and they, they handle it. Fans start to rally behind Optic now as they've tied this up 2-2. Shutting down the brilliant play from Cell earlier in this is Pred looking, lurking, looming. Trying to get one, not going to happen. Double child is in, but Dashi gets a kill at the same time. Wrapping in this Shotzi, you go two for two. And now you're two players of Optic, players over by B. Well, you don't have the bomb. You can't really commit towards A. A BZ's all the way through back playing, but Dashi spots a man advantage now to Optic. Selium, one versus two, trying to find the other player. He has an idea where Dashi is, has to collect the objective, able to find it. Still a lot of time to work with. Now, if he reads this where Kenny is, that is some insane S&D IQ, but I'm not sure if he is. He's just reading a book, man. Checking out a magazine. This is very much an off angle, oh, but hello, oh, Kenny. And now he reads it. Just gets away with 48 HP. One versus one. Dashy, sell, 20 to go. Just waiting, both players right here, but you have to plant if you are sell. Maybe he has an idea, but are you gonna check that corner? I don't think so. Is he even going to go for the plant? He is all the way down to the last second. Dashi not going to check it. Here he comes. Ooh, spots him. Nice syntax to keep him at bay, but he challenges four pistol hits. Bruce with the clutch in the one versus one. Three straight rounds now for Optic. Yeah, maybe a sell right there, just hoping the nade hits. Maybe that Dashi commits to it, but very patient is Dashi. And then you just kind of go, saw Cell, just kind of going for that melee. We've seen it at times when the first one hits, it gets a little bit scary. Woo! But he's ready for as we see this different angle. Slide into each other, show a little extra love, but it's a big Bruce with the Renetti. Yeah, the symptoms like a little more forward maybe than he wanted it, so you can just hang close if you're dashy, and then perfect timing with the Renetti. He was what? 0-3. Now three straight, a monster round and monster clutch. Dashy, alive and well on this search and advantage now back to Optic Texas. I mean, phase win, Optic's hard point. Sure, why Optic? They win phase of search, that would make sense. That's three in a row now for Optic, slowing it down. Like that they're showing different pace here. Last offense, they just went right into A, got that bomb down quickly. Simp, we've seen him in this spot even with this stun, but Shotzi's stun a little bit too strong. The pistol, though, is there for the trade from Draws. Dashi wraps all the way back down to help over it, eh? At the same time, you're starting to transition a bit here if you're faced to get info, bottom plane. Still holding this entire time has been Cell. We'll see when he starts to get involved, and that's now. He starts to bring it across, but Abisi's going to get caught. Draws. Able to find one, just comes in for free. Draws making the play, knows where one is, keeps on shooting. It's all Draws. He's got three in the round. Now Kenny trying to trade it. Maybe an ace for Draws back in up. Former teammates battling. Now to another one versus one at Cell again. Kenny's turn. Bomb has been recouped by Kenny. Does he spot him? Oh, the timing must have been so bad for Cell. Kenny wins it in a string of 1v1s go the way of Optic. And I thought Draz maybe had a, a couple of chances oh. to try to get out there, but not able to. Gets ready for the gunfight, the highlight play, but Kenny, his ex-duo takes him down, clutches out the round. Cell was literally just looking back playing, bro. He must have, right as he turned to commit towards playing. Ooh. 
Unbelievable. I'm sweating some of these rounds. I think a bird almost hit Joe in the head. Yeah, no, we got to watch out for your head, dude. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't want anything landing on there. It's pretty much a Whoa. bullseye in itself. Why you think a bird's going to poop on me, Joe? It might. Okay. Flurry of shots. Nice shots. Big Kenny! 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 From the clutch to the trip. Whoo! Now he's on five in a row. Sim does have, well, no, he's got to recollect the bomb over towards Burger. So some time to work with. But how many times ha have phase members been in this spot? Just down a man, having to clutch things out. Has not come easy for Atlanta phase. I've been doing such a good job early in these rounds. Simp 1v2. 40 on the clock now as he's clearing everything. Nade for info. Able to spot one. Nice shots there. The wall bang hits another 1v1. It's three in a row now. 25 to go. Simp, Kenny. Can Kenny go big again? Damage on both sides. And Simp this time with the one on one. These guys are going to war. What the What's going on? I was worried about ammo, but a nice little pop up Ooh. there. I don't know who makes that suitcase, but Ooh. it is a strong one. Stronger than the buildings on invasion. And it's just two individual gunfights. Pred gets picked first. Maybe you're hoping as we watch this replay that he just backs down, but he gets caught. Simp with the wall bangs. Kenny trying to reposition to clean it up. He's down to 19 HP. Able to slide behind the cart, and then it's just a matter of finesse and shots. And Simp able to win it to keep his team in this game. Three straight 1v1s. My heart can't take this, dear Lord. Well, you did say you wanted to die on camera, so it might, <laughs> might happen here. Yeah, why not? Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, BZ backing up for now, Stell. Still trying to take these fights, but you know he's got two to deal with. Just slowly trying to shoulder it. They get aggressive though, now he's gonna back down. B site, open for the plant. And what's interesting about this, this is only a two-man game. So you have two players on the pinch. Look at Pred inside of the plane. They may not be ready for this, but bomb planted. You have so much to clear if you are phase. Well, okay, Simp is ready for it after the 1v1. Doesn't find the second, but into 30 seconds. A trade on the bomb. One versus two for Cell, 20 to go. Just so little time to work with. Just can't have a misplay here. The melee able to hit quickly. 1v1, man. Up shots up top. It's a 1v1 again. <laughs> but Cell can't find where he's at. Fifth round up. It's from a top AC that you'll get the kill. And that's just such a good round from Shotzi and whoever else pushed top SCs. It's a two-man game. Normally, it's three to four top SCs. Right. So when Sim finds one on the flank, he's thinking, all right, flank is open. But there's a second waiting for him. Kenny then just buys so much time. He's up to nine and five. A great design there from Optic. Yeah, they were backing him down inch by inch, right? Just slowly moving it up. A easy back down first. Cell sticks around for a while, but eventually he has to back down. and. Yeah, usually you don't take it by force with two players, but <laughs> there you do. You got to run three straight now if you are phase. Shotzi onto the balcony, but Abizi with the first blood. Quick trade draws us. The same can be said. Back and forth we go. Are we going to have another two. one? Why not? Four straight 1v1s. Give me five. Dashy up top. Yeah, draws are getting aggressive, though. Quickly underneath optic players. Just kind of looking around. Oh, he's gonna find Ken. Ken not ready for that. No, that's a route and a half from Dross, is he just has the confidence to clear everything. And he holds the door as well. Draza. Some ice there, the two versus two. Face stay alive. 5-4, optic lead. And I don't know if that's the ace, but he absolutely gets ready. No, BZ finds the first blood, then traded by Pred. So Draz gets three in the round. But as you said, a great route and then ready for the next one. They had an idea that there was a player top three repositions. Great anticipation finds the kill. Double digits for Big Ken. One round needed for Optic. We continue on phase. Need the defensive hold here to push us to around 11. What a weekend it has been. The matches keep on giving. Two-man game towards B again. 
Maybe trying to see if they can find that same success. It'll be a BZ and Selium. Same two they slowly backed down last time. Yeah, you had more of a, a forward position if you were off yeah, right? Some yeah. good nades. But there we go. Maybe behind the smoke, that's going to be the play call. Nate is out. Abizi, though, they're going to chow this time. They're not going to back down right away, except for now. So they do get away. Again, this two-man game. Finding a lot of room, top B. Yeah, even though Abizi took some damage, you got some nice damage in from Cell, too. I think to slow it down, then BZ able to repick and get the first blood. So advantage in the four versus three now. Everyone has flocked across four phase. You got numbers here. The numbers increased. Dashi going now. to drop. Shotzi though, kind of like draws with the route, but draws, reads it enough to get the damage in so Cell can trade. Pred's turn, one versus three, 30 on the clock. Down to a 1v2 now against Sip and Cell. Yeah, Bomb though is in an awful spot. There is this spot of Pred. And they're both just gonna go to Burger. A wide wrap and just kind of hang out for now. He's going to have to commit to this, but A-bomb site's open. He's got time. He's going to get the plan in. Here we go. Increase your chance to win this, but they're spotting for it. Never mind. You get there with the jump shot in your phase. Round 11. We've had so many this weekend. One more to the mix. God. It, it I mean, we got to have a 1v1, right? I mean, yeah. It starts with that first blood Woo. from Abizi, but then I thought maybe Shotzi was going to find a timing, but I think Abizi hears a glass break. So there's glass break from Shots, but yeah. then Abizi hears another sound cue. Maybe that's what allows Draws to just kind of turn around. If not, that is an insane read from him. Just to know that that is open. Yeah, I was just thinking like he just did the same thing, so maybe he was like, huh. <laughs> But here we go. Round 11, baby. Optic, phase. It's aggressive on B for the phase defense. They are pressuring and backing up this two-man push from Optic, Texas. For now, you back down. Smoke is out. They're trying to send it forward. Shotzi, I thought, in trouble for a moment, but able to stay up for now. They want the fast plant in. When they got the fast plant on A, they were able to close out the round. Can they do the same thing on the other side of it? Well, he gets he off, off of it. it. He Draws gets off it. Kill. All right, we're going to start fighting, though. We're going to start fighting. It's Shotzi and Pred. Able to give them man advantage. Now you go back to the bomb. You're able to find the plant as it's down to Celium and Sim for phase. Cell. He had eyes on Dashi. He's just hoping he can catch him. He crawls forward. He can't finish the kill. Gets eyes on Shotzi as well. Working up, trying to make the play, able to take down one. Drops him, sip down, one versus two. 25 seconds on the clock. Here's the glass break up top and trying to get forward now. And they have no idea where Pred is on the map at the moment. Shotzi gonna go for the PG, he finds it. Checks the bomb, Optic tied up at one. That was a fun search and destroy. We are tied up 1-1. One, one. So many spectacular moments in that. And like in the round 11, like, you know, I think the plant's coming in. A first blood comes in. They, for phase, you hop off it. Then you're like, yeah, they're hunting for the kills. And then you're kind of split on defense of your phase. You got like one player on either side of it. Optic able to close it out. You get double digits from Kenny, Shotzi, and Pred. What an effort, what a map. So now FaZe have taken uh, Optic's hard point pick. Optic respond and take FaZe search's pick. Of course, we continue on. Well, and you know, Nameless kind of said it did come down to this control. This is the map he wanted to watch the most, the decider, the swing game here in map three. But I, I want to give props to Optic. I, I just thought what they were doing on offense, pace-wise, they were not afraid to take top SEs, even with two. Not easy to do, but just had a great idea how, how they wanted to execute. No, no, I think that's a, kind of what separates like good from great search players sometimes is just like the confidence and awareness to take parts of the yep. map where other players are kind of tweaking, like worrying about stuff. Like this the confidence is there. We'll take it. We're controlling this. We're going to take the round. Uh, fantastic search and destroy. So many 1v1s and spectacular moments. We are tied up 1-1. It's the matchup. Everyone's always waiting for a historic one. Optic phase we continue on we still have so much cdl action to go on championship sunday don't go anywhere control up after the break upgrade your game with a scuff 
Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with the Scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. We are back in Miami. Uh, it has been one hell of a week in sunshine, sunshine beaches, Call of Duty. Phase and Optic battling fans, uh, probably just hugging. It's all friendship right now, Joe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's beach balls going around. There's love in the air. Love it. No one's shooting bodies. We're all friends here, Joe. Love it. Yeah, it's a rivalry match right here. Yeah. It's still <laughs> our winner's final. They could do it again later in the grand final, but. We shall see. It is all tied up at one a, what a piece. Sir, we are in for a day. We are in for a day. The Tiny Tears, two of the best to ever do it. We take a look at some of their stats here. Whew. I say buy one, get one short king. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> you see there, they're controlling. I mean, their stats are good. The problem is, is I believe as good as this KD has been, that, that has led to an 0-2. No so, joke. I made Simp get on a BZ shoulder, so I was still taller. Swear to God. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to try that out. Yeah, but the invasion, yeah, you said Nameless. This is the one he was looking forward to. This is the one that was kind of interesting based on the strengths of these teams. It's FaZe that has the choice of the pick. It's what? High Rise that gets banned by Optic. FaZe have got a side between this and Karachi. The Karachi attack's so good for Optic, they decide to go here, and away we get ready to go. Tied up 1-1. We are in for a day. Let's get it going, Miami. Map three now. Time to battle. We'll see what FaZe are capable 
on the offensive side of it first. BC finessing for now. Can't quite get away as Prez is able to hunt him down. Yeah, Prez got there quick, didn't it? I mean, from a BC's point of view, it sure seemed like it, but he gets taken down. Some work over towards B. Again, FaZe were undefeated online in control. Now here at LAN, 0-2. It's still a very dangerous control team. I think it was Octane that tweet cracked me up. It was like, on my bingo card, I did not have FaZe struggling control this weekend, but it's been happening. Yeah, now you kind of see this two-man game just through the middle of the map. Selium and Sim. So you've had one player in a BZ just hanging out on B. Sim getting Ooh. aggressive with the rival. A great seven life advantage for a moment, moment for Atlanta FaZe. So we see this time and time again. Just keep one player on it, pause the clock, play a little TDM. There is one player lurking on up in Shotzi. Maybe I thought he was going to stop the player from getting B, but does not happen. The minute is through. Yeah, real, real close. That probably came down to milliseconds, but now you're 5 0 for yourself. You're looking for number six. You got trophy coverage. You're all the way pushed up deep A side. Nobody around to help you. It's going to, if he's earned the streak, it's by his it. lonesome. He, he gets got it, it before he falls. So you have a cruise to work with. You got a six life advantage. Now, can you find an opening? Because you're a bit staggered right now, just waiting on Cell to get back into the action. As he's going to work at A side street. He's got a bridge. That's what Kenny has got to deal with. Yeah, I mean, you're, you still have a minute 45. Yeah. Uh, you, you just want to make this messy if you are phased, not necessarily get on to the point. I mean, you would love to pause the clock, but they're trying to play TDM. They, they want to get the lives down as low as possible for Optic, but it has not happened. Optic doing a great job. As you see on the streaks in the top left, everybody finding kills four in a row for Kenny. So you stabilized after Simp and Cell got loose through the beginning of the round. Yeah, no, this has been a great response because it was you know, pretty much all phase. Yeah, you had a couple of people working towards streaks. He got B very efficiently. But since then, you answer quickly. At the same time, good job, phase kind of getting out. Like, you don't get trapped for very long. Pretty efficiently, you're able to now work out up this B street again. But that is of costing, you said, what, a minute 40 or so? So like 40 seconds go by. You got a hike here on this map. Let's see if FaZe are going to get another chance at this. Speaking of streaks, though, Kenny's got an opportunity now. He is on four and around the optic side, and maybe one to combat what Cell was able to earn early. Yeah, early. yeah he's all the way out A Street. There is a quick trade, and now they're trying to find Ken. As the shots are coming in, you get one player on the point in Draza, and he's able to win it, so you're pausing the clock, but there should be a trade here from Optic. There is. One player still kind of lurking, but while that happens, you are able to deal with Kenny. Now a chance. It may be Shotzi goes yeah. down there. Sim can get on the point, but Shotzi able to stay alive. Well, the reason you want to get one body on the point, it just you know takes you out of your spots if you're Optic Texas, right? Like, you're kind of set up, you're holding, you're in your power position. As soon as somebody has to cross to try and deal with that one or two players, maybe an opening, maybe some mayhem for FaZe, but... It doesn't work out that way. It's been a solid defense after you dealt with the opening moments. If you are Optic. Yeah, the trade is out there, but time will dwindle down. So three ticks for FaZe. Hold for Optic, and it's sort of uh, whatever. I mean, I, I, you get a streak if you're FaZe, you get three ticks. I think you can be kind of content on either side of this right now when it's a map like this. Yeah, you, you have the crews from Cell. You just don't allow that early round to really get even scarier if you were Optic. They were able to bounce on back, got map control, never really gave it up. And anytime someone got forward towards rugs or laundry, that player was quickly traded out by Optic. Now, Optic, well, the best attacking team in control, but a lot of Karachi being played. And, you know, the map's obviously very in control by what's favorite offense or defense here. If you can get the attack going, you're winning the map. <laughs> That'll be the case if they're able to do it. Yeah, but how many moment, moments have we seen from uh, show hard to track at times? He does get traded out. You're trying to slay through the middle of the map, but trade's going down. We have kept Kenny on this. No, this is certainly an example of a map where, yes, he can really start to annoy FaZe when he gets going. And they start to lose him, but it's Kenny doing it with a gunny. Tiny tears, both put into the dirt progress. Through the second tick, there at B. Kenny streaking once again, but will drop before he's really a threat for the crews. You clear them off the point for now. You take care of Fred and kind of get back to square one if you're Texas, but still some progress through a minute to go. That nice job there by FaZe, uh, dealing with the player inside of DVD. And Traza was able to find a couple of kills on the point. So you have presence here, and they can play some great defense if they're able to find 
B control did up on those tanks. There's always been one more player, but now that is two dead. And a chance here, Sims able to find a triple. Ooh. That is all four dead. The trap is on. Yeah, now you only have 45. You know, when you're optic and you got your trap, it was what, minute 40, minute 30, where you still had a big chance to get out of this. You've got to go huge now if you're off the Texas, if you're even going to finish B. And where the spawn's coming in, where the setup is from FaZe, they're thinking we're going to have to maybe maybe get over towards A or rewrap it through A Street to be a threat mid-map. Sims finally going to drop. As his defense of B was glorious. Now they're back onto the point looking for the extension. Yeah, nice transition play from Dashi and Shotzi. So the fact they're able to get out towards the A Street, as you said, it forces FaZe to spawn up, go over towards A. Shotzi then right through the middle of the map. The dive is through. <laughs> but the Ooh. shots are through for Dross. He's on four in a row. So B is done and we're tied in ticks. Now it could come down to lives. Nice little pop-up, but Pred wins the gunfight. Yeah, that's a tough one. Nice win there from Pred. Took a while to get B. Certainly not as efficient as FaZe. Like you're down it, you're down six lives and you don't have a lot of time to work with, but I don't know how many times if Optic Texas seemingly not had numbers, no respawns and made a play, but it's getting worse, unfortunately, for them. Now seven respawns remaining. The phase defense has been immaculate thus far. Just not really leaving even an opportunity for Optic to think about that A point. As your palace side with 30 seconds to go, and yeah, this is going to require a miracle now. Yeah, and if you're phased, you kind of play this two ways, right? We have the nine life advantage. Uh, if the ticks continue to tie on up for round five, it comes down to disparity in lives. So maybe try to take this even further and hunt them down. That's exactly what is happening. One last push for Optic. One last player now for Optic and Dashi. Yeah, that's one of those rounds that more than likely by itself will decide the kill differential. If you're talking about a round five, you're tied in ticks. Could opt to give him a taste of their own medicine, 100%, but like, it was pretty much even, right? We were about square on lives in the first round. They are not the case, so just keep that in mind when we keep tracking the ticks. For now, 3-3. Three, three. We're gonna take a look at the triple from Simp once again, which was a big moment, because he Costed a lot of time for Optic in this offense. Yeah, able to hit the stick on a dashy, nice little slide out on the Pred, and then hits the headshots on a Shotzi. So great play for him. Got a little streak going, and as you said, just gave them so much map control. Yeah, that moment. In fact, Draws gets the last, like that four down. Just yeah, you are back to step zero in the process. Abizi looking for one, just to maybe get the streak. He's able to do that. So you've got what? Two. Cell Cruise, Abizi Cruise. I mean, if you can hold them all the way to a round five defense, great. Gets you out of a couple terrifying moments. Yeah, we saw in game one, I mean, uh, streaks on invasion, not always the biggest deal. We even saw in the last True. series True. Uh, on a control map like this, you can have multiple cruises. It may just not matter. So difficult to put them in the right spots. But phase now, so they hit shut down over towards B, but you have two players on A. Oh, and you want to use one of the streaks. They're thinking we can get this A point if you can't connect. Trying to okay, get through it, does it. Three are going to drop. The progress keeps on going. Second bit about to be done. Third player rallying over. This is going to be done. They're going to get on. It's going to go so, so quickly. So they're just going to go right over to B and try to deal with Sip, who is here. As he's shooting everything basically in front of him on the map. A point secured. Great play there from FaZe. Yeah, and I think Sim, he's trying to get a broken. He could probably play that even a little bit more patiently because really what his goal is, is to stop them from getting to where Shotzi and yeah. Dashi are on the map. Well, but Cell now, he continues up to five in a row. 15 and seven, Shotzi, the last player. They're trying to hunt him down. Spots him, can't take him out. Shotzi still waiting, lurking, frying. He has watched so much time. Looking for number six. Has that, but already had the cruise, I believe, so. We'll still be holding on to that. 90 seconds now to go. Lives basically even. We've seen these crazy defensive holds would just be to do it. And Optic has done it. Can they do it again here against this Atlanta phase team? Yeah, you have to get push up B Street. Watch number two though. Shotzi going on a long flank here. Are they gonna pick this up? You're kind of waiting on him. What can he find? The lineup is in. There's the double from Shotzi again. Kind of bailing them out of a tough spot. He finds a triple. 
There's one player up in Celium, but Shotzi was in your spawn, almost ready for the next gunfight. Yeah, and that play is possible because they're thinking, you know, let's stack three, four, stack this, get this done. They've got so many bodies there, just try and close this out. But the no hesitation flag from Shotzi, everything, and sending them back to spawn. And now you start to get a little nervous, maybe if you're phase. Maybe not going to make any more progress here on B. Yeah, maybe oh, they will. my lord god, I thought Pred had the patience, but Simp had the snapper. I Back think they just want to go. They want every single 1v1 right there. Yeah. I mean, just to get out of that, now set this up. Dashie now trying to do what he can with that kill. A day drops on the Simp, so a chance here. It was three dead for Optic, now it's three dead for FaZe. Selium has been the last player inside of Broken time and time again. He still is. He's going to find one. 30 seconds to go, it's Sel! They're able to get two. That should at least diminish this front line a bit for Optic. They try to focus on Cell, allows FaZe to push up, try to get a trophy out, and he gets dropped. There's an awkward moment there for Atlanta FaZe. But Sim, a BZ, still forward and fighting. 15 seconds to go. About a tick and a half needed here to lock this down. Tucked away in a corner was Dashy. They're able to trade it out. Another team kill is going to come through. A gunfight went from Draza, though, and down to 40 HP is a massive one. Shotzi just keeps on shooting. The trade is there. Bodies on it with 1.1 on the clock. Second tick of progress. Done. Third tick. Looming. Draza popping and fighting. Can he get the kill? His teammates able to look over him. It's a BZ going massive. So close it comes. One person falls. Oh my Try god. Point two. Point two. Point two on the clock in phase. Get the round win. Woo. I mean, somebody gets off the point for a second, maybe to dodge a name, maybe to pick up a pinch. It was a four versus eight. It was a scrappy battle. So many players on both sides making plays. Shotzi time and time again, getting his defense pushed forward. Then you would have sell inside of broken. He's 20 and 10, but you get the offensive round win. I mean, Shotzi almost won the round for him. Yeah, you know how it is towards B. It's just this kind of, there's always an extra man. It's rarely a full reset. It's just battle of attrition. Shotzi gave them the full reset. There was just so much time left. And Thaze eventually able to do it. Now you're a defense away from a 2-1 edge. Spectacular map so far. Optic, best team on offense in control. They need something here now, but it's Draza. Working the flank, picking them apart. Yeah, I mean, it's a four-man B hit out of Optic. Now, you don't really get many players on the point. So, Draza, he was just watching A, and now you have a BZ on another five. So he's really starting to get going here in this map number three. And, well, there's going to be number six. The headshots Ooh. in the feed three dead. Optic back to Palace. I mean, there's just been a lot of stretches here where you can't buy a gunfight if you're Optic. I, the guns have just been hot for Atlanta phase. Just flurries of headshots, three four-man wipes. I mean, the streaks tell the story. That's what the fourth maybe that's been earned. And now the teardrops coming in. You drop Kobe there if you're a BZ. 45 to go. Still trying to build towards mid-map if you were Optic Texas. Yeah, and again, once Dashy finds the first one, kind of opens up the go, street. And look how forward Kenny and Shotzi are getting all the way in the spawn of Atlanta phase. Shotzi now going to reposition. His teammate gets onto the point. But they need this. A big play here could potentially get them an offensive round win, but out of the spawn jumps Atlanta phase. They get back on to B, maybe trying to make something happen over towards A like we saw phase do, but not going to happen. is still playing behind that streak. He's still on seven in a row. We'll hop back to him. Minute extension in, 90 seconds to work with. You just need one of those stretches you're opting. You know they can hit another gear unlike most teams in the league. They need that fifth gear now. And they're going to go to a round five. A chance here for Shotzi. He's just kind of lurked behind. They thought everybody was dead yep. on this B street. And while they're focusing on this spawn, watch for number two. The playmaker for Optic behind enemy lines. And here we go. Pred finds one. Shotzi with the second. That is going to be three dead. Now, Shotzi on the point. You still have a BZ lurking out towards mid. Chance to kind of cut off these reinforcements to Shotzi. The rest of the players wrapping back towards gas. That's a big win from Dashi. Dashi now trying to get push up and help, but they take him down the street. The trade comes in, and just too many bodies with the close spawn there for Atlanta phase. And well, you still have the streaks too. Well, as you said, yeah, a BZ was still middle of the map. He's able to find one. That just staggers the push, staggers the help for Shotzi. Did buy some time. Cruz though in. 
The extra utility is there. At least you get the info. You find the comms and you find two kills. 30 now to go. Desperation for Optic to try and get onto this A point. Shotzi trying to make the plays into the back line. Not able to do it this time. Red gun is hot, but good survival. And good help there if you're phase. Last chance. Time dwindling. Last chance is right. 10 seconds to go. They're hunting them down. They're pushing out a street. No openings in the defense. FaZe have locked it down, put up a wall, shut it down. Control win for Atlanta FaZe up 2-1 in the series. As they fire back after a wild search and destroy before that. Yeah, it just comes down to that offensive round win, as it, it normally does on Invasion. And it just feels like throughout that map, I mean, you get one round win if you are Optic, but yeah, just guns maybe a little bit hotter on the side of FaZe, just winning some big one-on-ones. Just a retake control of the map, stop progress for Optic. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've seen from Optic, you know, throughout the course of this tournament, what they're able to do. I mean, just putting Ultra in like the blender, like how strong they have been, but FaZe, a little bit of a different beast, it seems right now. As they really get rocking and rolling, they're on the map three. So they take the edge back. Um, you know, we've seen some struggles from them in control. It makes you kind of question them a little bit, but then... Have a map like that? You, yes, you remember that they were the best control team coming into this event. Yeah, you see a BZ and Simp. We showed the graphic coming into this one, and they go off. A double 30 bomb from that duo. 6,000 damage from Simp puts them up to one. Yeah, uh, Simp. Having a series right now and trying to close this one out. The control is dumb. We'll take a look through some of the highlights. What are some of the big moments that stand out? Give me the offensive round when getting on A, obviously, but any other major ones? No, I mean, obviously, you get those streets that were coming in from Atlanta Phase. Those put a big moment, but yeah, I mean, just the A play. It was a two man game from Abizi and Cell, and you kind of called it, right? Using that streak to secure the points. And then I think, really, even after you got the A point, coming down over towards B, throughout this round three, it was Shotzi at moments, it was Cell at moments. There was such a war between these two near this point. It comes down to 0 0.2 seconds. The final eyes for Optic, they almost clutch it out. That kill onto Draza, and then you can see Sims and Abizi are like, we gotta get on this point, they fly to it. A game of seconds, whether it was Shotzi diving in for the plant in the map too. The hard point coming down to seven seconds on the clock. Point two there for the cap. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been unbelievable so far. Some banger maps within this best of five. And now we look forward to the hard point. Invasion was Optic's pick. Karachi, the pick here from FaZe. And for Karachi and Optic, I mean, this is one that they were trying to kind of add into their map pool, right, uh, over the course of this thing. We first cast them against, I think it was like LAG, LAG, and they got slammed. I'm like, well, I don't know if that one's going to be in. But since then, they've really improved. No, I mean, at times, when you look at opted teams in the past, they've had these auto vetoes. In deeper and deeper runs in tournaments, it's kind of screwed them, right? It feels like other teams then prepped in the other way. It feels like throughout this stage, not only have they been undefeated, but they also, yeah, they've been getting better at terminal, getting better now at Karachi. We saw it on land. And, you know, if you're a FaZe fan, this is your hard point pick. You're going to be feeling great about it. But uh, this is not going to be an easy map. As uh, Opti have gotten better and better here. No. Uh, I mean, kind of like that. <laughs> the subliner series of FaZe, just no easy maps. This one, no easy maps. Uh, that's the, the fun part about having uh, two of the top teams in the game go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Sure, some of your weaknesses at times get exposed. But for the most part, heavy hitters battling back and forth. To get this to a map five. You got to get the dub here. Just a reminder maybe for anyone tuning in late or anyone that just joined us today in attendance. Like, it's winner's bracket final. Win here. You are into the final. Guarantee that spot. A loss here. You're still live in the tournament. You just got to get another win to get back into the final. Yeah, drop down and play the subliners who are uh, looking good earlier today. But not out of this one. 2-1 one for Atlanta FaZe. They can close it out. Or are we going to game five? Give me a game five, baby. Let's go the whole way. Hop to rally up in this Karachi. And let's go the distance. But... This is one, you know, for a while you didn't want to chow phase on with their best hard point. This is one they've been so, so good at. So now it's the bread and butter of phase versus the, I guess, kind of qualifier long improvements you've worked on. If you are Texas, you've worked to add this one into your bag of tricks.
Now we get ready to go. Map four underway. Optic fighting to push this series the entire way. Muster up some magic for a deep tourney run. This will be Optic into the point first, and Shotzi looking to get Lucy Goosey. I was like, good luck with that gunfight. Yeah, he, he wants to see Lucy Goosey, but is cut down. So nice early time here for Optic. But now you can already see Pred inside of red. Teammates off his of spawn. He's going to be the one, though, starting to push alongside of Shotzi. Shotzi just jumps on in, not worried about anything. So the rivals get it done to open that up. And I kind of mentioned at the beginning of this, like, you know, Shotzi hasn't had the best year against Atlanta FaZe, but he's been on another level. This is the exact kind of map that we're going to see, right? Like, if he can hit that gear against FaZe, because they've oh, shut no him down for the most part. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because he can get lost on Karachi. He can have that insane playmaking ability. How well do FaZe deal with him? How well can Shotzi play? But it's a double again from Semp, who's continuing his great series. They are set up for the early time here inside a diner and dealing with the red push. Yeah, now you're starting this pinch. Kenny's able to find the first one onto Celium. So tries to reposition. So it's a two for two for now. Close funds over to Atlanta phase, but Simp has been so strong on this rotation. Onto a force free, <laughs> make it five, locked it down the bus area. Almost able to find the six, but here comes Optic. So in the first 30 seconds, oh, over my. to phase, but behind Dashy. Right back into the hill. Yeah, a little beamer there from Dashy. Start winning some of these massive one-on-one -on -one fights. Try to get yourself some time, get these 20 seconds, but spawning kind of close and trying to send another push at this is Simp. Yeah, this is kind of the choice. Do we rotate, take the long route to P3, or try to fight for the scrap time? But the two-man game inside of Cafe has shut it down. So now on the rotation, you do have Sim working on up, but I imagine Dashy's going to see that. And Dashy gets the spawn in for Pred. So you get another person there. He's going to spawn up on the point, and Dashy gets the kill. So hitting it once more doesn't work out for FaZe. The rotation for Dashy pays off. Now you look at the lead change if you are Optic. Dashy keeps on beaming. Up to five and five. Some help now from Shotzi, who's looking to get forward, stunned up, damage in, Simtex through. Tex is still holding jump. And that's kind of what always FaZe has done, right? We've seen them time and time again on this map. They'll fight for the P2 scrap time. They won't hit those long routes. And then from there, because that's where they want to start their P3 push from, their break from his junk side, as they're doing right now. You have one player pushed up in Draza. Can he find the tail? He does. So now is when it's going to start getting messy, but you have the 20 point lead. You get majority of the time if you're Optic. Shotzi looking to get nade in. It's an awkward one, but Draw's able to finesse there around the counter and then get the kill. It'll be just about a tie game with the remainder of this time as you light up the feed for a moment if you're phased. First person over will be Cell. In the map one, he had some massive rotations. He has a massive gunfight win. Slow here for Cellium so far at three and eight. Uh, well, really, it's a race to the hard point area now. Yeah, and the reason is, is, is Ken's cooking. I mean, he is 12 and 6, double positive, and he has won some key one on ones versus Cell. Chef right? Ken in the kitchen, huh? Yeah, so Cell just trying to get to his spots, but Ken's already there. But you do get a four dead through the middle of the map, though, no, is the sub duo of Pred and Shotzi trying to find the break. Yeah, and it could be tough here to get time, right? Just where the hard point is. How's he, how's he usually come through with three or four down? But you're able to get, you get a few seconds, nothing crazy. 25 or so remaining here as you clear them out of the point if you're Texas. Big one-on-one -on, -one on the opposite side of the map. That's Sim trying to fight rotation versus Dashy. Dashy able to win it. So spawns for P5. And I feel like P5 has been the difference maker on the map here at Major 2. Out of the air shots from Draws. So you see FaZe, they want to go try to catch maybe some timings on the spawn, but the same spawn's there for Optic. That's multiple plays from Dashy on rotation, right? Where he's winning a one-on-one -on -one fight, kind of making sure FaZe can't get there first. Dash will spawn up and get right into the hard point. Some nice kills through for Optic to keep the pressure away. Pred, a little jump to the side and snap as well, but now you're starting to layer this if you're phase. Look to get towards the point. Shots, he can't stagger this. Cell's got the kill. You got two players on top of each other on the other side. I think you just noticed, yeah, a BC just gets that info, but traded from shots. He fight now to the hard point. But it's Ken again, able to find the double, the last player near the hill. Shotzi off spawn, able to find that trade. But the MCW, uh, that man is hitting. A clean 40 seconds for Optics so far. The final 20 may be contested by FaZe for just a moment, but a great lead here. A nice comeback throughout this one for Optic. Listen, man, I think with this team composition, Kenny has had to be uh, sensational as like an in-game leader. He's had to have the comms.
Sometimes maybe this that's art there, but a reminder that Kenny's one of the best in the world as he's 18 and 9 and dominating this phase lineup so far. But into the next set we go. Phase with the control early. Cell, who what has a 1.4 against Optic in this matchup, 8 and 13. We'll see if he starts to get going. BZ struggling as well. It's still a tight one. 20 points game. Yeah, very close game. Back to fourth battle. Back to this P1. We're off the, They don't mind just hitting it. Behind Pred, behind Kenny. Shotzi especially. You can already see number eight cell. He's already thinking about rotation, so he's going to go that way. Kenny winning the one-on-one -on -one versus duo. And draws. You see that 17 and 10. They love battling each other. But Optic, they're just like, fine, we'll give you a P2. We're just going to take all this hill time. Yeah, that's why they send a couple bodies of your face. Just try to get them out and try to disrupt some of this time, but you disrupt only a few seconds. You just want to make sure you don't give up spawns as well. But with that gunfight win from Shotzi, now we threat so sort of through the back alley push. You have Kenny wrapping up towards the junk to red. You're backing everything up now. If you're phased the hold and you're finding the kill so far, you need the answer here. If you're phased, you gave up a lot of time at P1. Yeah, I was going to say, a break here, and maybe the, the game is pretty close to over. Shotzi from up top hits here the dime. Here we go. Dead. Into the window is Shotzi. It's cut down, but numbers still here for Optic. Phase one map away from going to the final. Let's go to a listen with Atlanta Phase. Right I'm going to We're going to top right. Let me go back to you. Yeah, I'm better. I'll see you top better. On desk? One shot on climb? Yo, I don't see anything, Ken. Hey, 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 Nice. Nice. I'm nice. 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 I'm one shot right. I got one left. There's one. Yo, this one right. 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 One 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 One right. 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 One Actually, one shot. Nice. 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 Optic nearly with that full break on P3, but you fight back if you are faced. You do just enough to hold on. Now you pick up three and a Shotzi left dancing towards the point. What kind of time can you get here? It can be so, so hard to get the points, but you're back within 30. You've done what you need to do to stay fighting in this game if you're faced. Yeah, I thought, it, I mean, obviously, as soon as the, the listening goes in, it's an optic break at P2, and then over to P3, it's just a two-man game from Draz and Abizi who hold on to majority of that time for phase, but a break in now. A 30 point lead for Optic. Trying to get us to a map five. A great game here from Kenny, but look at the mini map. 20 seconds left, phase are playing for this P5. Looks like you're gonna have a one-on-one, -on -one, but that was Draz who was able to win it. So one of his uh, dashy last time, right? The one on the one-on-one got him spawns. This time, more to deal with, not able to do it. Draza going big, four in a row now for a BZ, finding another a BZ now with the cruise into the backpack. And you're roaring back in this one if you are phased. Next hard point, ready to pop. They still can't kill this man. Seven in a row, eight, my God! It's too easy for a BZ as he is tearing them to shreds. What in the world? If he won that, I'm out. Oh. Okay, but now you have two dead, and that's both a BZ and Simp down. A chance right through the front. You're able to find that cruise, and those kills were great because you pushed optics so far away from this point. But here we go. Could come down to this, but a BZ back from spawn with another triple. 28-19 for a BZ. He is slamming them right now. The man can do no wrong. Backs up, taking his time, snapping up top, give him another 30 on the board. Lead changes there. 
Only 10 left on the point, though. You can't win it here, but it's been a volcanic eruption out of Ibiza. Draws are right there with him at 28 and 16. Suddenly, though, all the kills the way up base. Back to mid-map we go, and it's Simp with the double. It's Shotzi sending it forward. Help can't quite get there in time, but that man finally you shut him down. Shotzi able to do it. Optic in the point. He's like, P1, screw it. I'm hitting it. I'm going to finesse and play my life. Now, you do have the crews on a BZ. You're going to use it right here to try to break this and maybe win the map and the series. If not, it's going to get us to a map two. Oh. Sorry, P2, but he dodges it. Uh -oh. He's able to dodge the crews, and now you have the full setup for Optic. One player, Simp, might be the one to make the play. Of course, it's Simp. He's able to find two, and they wipe him off the board. They didn't win here. Simp gets through and gets two and turns it on its head. You just cannot enough. rotate, over rotate if you are opting. It looks like Kenny, he realizes that. Now going to go into red. Cell going to play safe. Still, someone's got to get on the hill for opting. Yeah, you got to contest it. You got to get him out. You got to do something. You're still inside. Five points now for the victory. Draza still soaking. Simp with the cross. The multi kill. He wins another hill. Tiny tears are taking. Brother, this series was something. These maps were bonkers. And Vintage Abizi, Vintage Simp with the takeover late. That stretch from Abizi, because it felt like a P3 when you thought the break was in for Optic. You and I are looking at each other, listening to this one's done. And then he said that two-man game brought it back. You set up your super source to make plays. And they do. Yeah, I mean, you think about it, after that P3 where they split the time, then they get to that P4 setup where he just goes nuclear. I mean, what a play. It has been a while since we've seen that from him right. versus Optic. And, you know, we just kind of thought, like, maybe if he could find a little bit more confidence in his game, get back to that, then maybe they're, they're raising more trophies. Maybe that's the moment we're looking at that sends him even further. Listen, I don't know why, but, it, yeah, it's just been... You know he's capable of, hasn't really yeah. been at his peak at times. It was yesterday, like, kind of clicked for me, dude. When we were talking about him on uh, the defense, on search and destroy innovation, every gunfight when was going his way. Just seemed like he was playing with unbelievable confidence. And that carries over here. I mean, you know, a, a very 13-25, a, a human game from Selian, but it was Draza who was keeping up with Kenny. Kept them in the game. He drops 30, but then, yeah, a, a BZ and Simp. Well, takeover mode. Yeah, I mean, BZ kind of got you there, but then once you cleared the point of P4, or sorry, P5, and got like three, I think Sith, that's when he gets two. He just sort of gets lost in the middle of it. It gives you a chance to get early setup on P1, and it's insanity. Yeah, but you see that second P3, oh, sorry, where P4, it's 201, P4. Uh, 167. You had to break in, but then you can see after that, towards the P4, it's 208 to 180. If that 13 to 20 seconds goes the other way for Optic, you just kind of get on P4 a couple of seconds at a time. Map probably done, but it is not. It continues. And that's when uh, that Abizi moment happens. Well, you got 250 to 237 in both maps. That's crazy. Nail biters. And you can't get any different than Invasion Hardpoint and Karachi Hardpoint and the way they play. But the score line is the same. The search goes all the way to around 11. Yeah, I mean, the invasions have been maybe the, the lopsided map. But outside of that, it is just a tug of war on which of these Titans is going to be able to take over. It was op Optic all of last year. It's been phased so far this year on stage. A BZ, the tear. Take it away, Blaze. Miami, it was too easy for a BZ in Atlanta phase. As they're going to be our first team in the grand finals. And man, a BZ, these hard points. This entire series was absolutely wow. How does it feel for you and your squad to get this win? Oh, I mean, it feels amazing. You know, we were just firing on all cylinders. Like, no one could trade us, you know? It was oh. insane. It definitely was insane, man. Some of the closest maps that we've seen all weekend, all year. Let's talk about the hard points, okay? What was the what was going on through your head as even when Optic was kind of making those comebacks and when you guys came back in that map for? Oh, uh, honestly, I mean the first map, I feel like we started out super hot, kind of let off the gas a little bit, but then we like finished strong, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a good clutch in the end. And then map four, I mean, I just started taking over at the end. Like I feel like no one. Was he taking over Miami? <laughs> 
absolutely taken over, but the job is not done just yet. And I want you guys to get backstage and start preparing and seeing who you're going to end up playing in this finals. But what, what do you want to say to these FaZe fans in the crowd and the ones at home who have been trying to out cheer these Optic fans yeah. and successfully doing it? You know, I appreciate all the love. You guys are amazing. And we, uh, you know, we hear you guys, even though you're a little bit of the crowd, but appreciate you guys. All <laughs> right. That's going to do it for Atlanta FaZe for now. Take us away. They are loud and they are loyal. The Atlanta Faze always supporting their favorite team at the front of the stage. Tonight, we see a rematch. The same match we saw twice back at Major One in Boston. And for the third time in a row, it's Atlanta coming out on top over Optic. Man, and what an exciting series that it was. Unfortunate though, that map number four. I was really hoping for a game five, and Optic was playing fundamentally perfect hard point until those last couple of kills. Nameless, I thought we were going to game five. I thought it was yeah, locked up. It was too, guaranteed. Bro. Where did this turn around? Listen, I mean, just such great plays by Atlanta Faze. They were getting out rotated majority of this game, and then we get into a situation where Optic has a lockdown point. They have to give up P2. Atlanta Faze completely forfeited, get a perfect rotation over towards P3 a majority of that time. And those last two hills, I mean, we're talking miracle plays coming from Abizi. This guy went on a nine streak just lighting everybody up. And since he's getting his kills from this side, his team has full rotation. This is literally just Abizi destroying Optic, yep. spawning them deep so they can get a perfect setup going forward. Unbelievable plays by Atlanta Faze. Yeah, I mean, first I'm off in Texas, like I said, it was fundamentally perfect hard point up until that last coup hill where they overcommitted to like literally six seconds of times. Nobody went over to Church Street and they were all trying to force in through their front. Some trades go out and Selian gets an off spawn and ends up getting the kill on the roto. And then suddenly it's Atlanta Faze in the next hill that they should have been in the spawn trap for. And after Texas since then just started to lose their way, allowed Abizi to get lost in Church, go on a nine spree, get the crews and get the early setup for the final P5. Not only did Abizi get the crews, the nine spree, he gets a five spree. Simp finishes with a five spree of his own. The tiny tears are out in full force and they're waiting to find out who's going to come play them in the championship match later tonight. They are looking terrifying in the hard points, man. You even talk about that invasion. He said they went up 110 points early on. Optic has a crazy comeback and they get the rotation over towards River to close it out. I mean, Atlanta Face playing sound call of duty at this time. Well, we all missed our scuff pickums, but I think we're all going to nail our scuff play of the game. It's the attacking clutch. Allie, you were losing your mind backstage. This is a difference maker. If you can win attacks, you can definitely take the control on Invasion nine times out of ten. Absolutely, especially on Invasion. This is a series where both these teams are incredible at defense on control, but Optic Texas historically were better at offense on this map. They had one of the fastest rounds throughout the qualifier, but Atlanta Face takes it this time in. This was nuts. So right before that, you saw if Shotzi decides to shoot the trophy instead of the other Atlanta phase member, they have a real opportunity to win this round. There's one second left, but he goes for the second kill. I mean, it, it, that's a tough decision at that point. But Atlanta phase, it definitely was not easy. They went through like four different sets of lives trying to break through to beat. Incredible stuff. That is your scuff play of the game. But we had another one that deserves some extra love. Here is our runner up. The nominee. It comes from the hard point. Shout out to production cutting up all of these videos for us. Ali, are we going to see this rematch? Is it going down in a few hours? I think we might see this rematch, but I know New York has something to say about it. They are licking their lips looking at this matchup. And here are some of the key plays. Kylo Ken looking great throughout this series at times. Simp and Abizi, though, the difference makers. This was another moment in this hard point where Atlanta was up 115-7 to seven at one point, but Optic Texas battled their way back in, and there's a huge play where Shotzi goes for rotation on P2, but unfortunately, Cell actually plays for him. There was 40 seconds left on P2 heading to P3, and Shotzi goes for it, and Cell makes the read and gets that kill back A Street and snuffs out any heroic play that he was trying to Listen. get. By the game. In this situation on that rotation to P3, Kenny has a streak. If he uses it a little bit earlier and spawns somebody behind the yep. palace, they have the opportunity to then go get gas ones and just win it on the P3 River Hill. It's just tough to make that call in the moment. Just a little bit more composure out of the Optic Texas folks, and they might have won up 1-0 in the series. Optics were the king of clutch. That was up until this yeah. match, and now they find themselves in the elimination bracket going up against the New York Subliners. Let's take a look at the big picture here. As Optic entering the tournament with the number one seed, they took down the Heretics, then sent Ultra Packing. But FaZe, after two game fives, gets it done in just four, and now they're waiting in that championship yeah, match. Unfortunately, FaZe stays perfect against Optic in this game. This is now a 4-0 series lead that they take on them.
Name was 3031 so far today, but the game's been much closer than the scores will show. I mean, we've watched some of the best Call of Duty we've ever seen. This has been incredible. Maps are coming down to the wire, and it's going to be no different in our loser bracket final. Miami, show some life for the chat. Make some noise, because when we come back, Optic takes the stage again, putting their throne on the line against the subliners. up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store start the season strong with the call of duty league pack grab yourself the cdl operator weapon blueprint and so much more check out the call of duty store in game now I'm feeling very sexy, Joe, and uh, ready for a fantastic match. This one went the whole way last time. I have a full matching ensemble. These are shorts. Yep. A little yeah. bit of thigh, a little bit of thigh. Yeah, you look like an absolute moron. But Thank you, Joe. Is why we love you. Uh, you honestly, it looks like the re remake of Malibu's Most Wanted is about to come out, honestly. Yeah, no, that's, that's basically yeah. what it looks like. Herring's now 16 and 9, and forcing the issue on the flank. He's inside of their face. being one of those players might have a, a little dance with Santa here in a moment and as the pre-fire as well gets it done and gets out with his life possibly the best player in the world big cool down 
Last one up. He's got a trophy though, right? He threw a trophy out. He threw a trophy out. I think this might be too slow. He got it. Oh, he does get it. Yeah, it was too slow. He gets it. He just hops it right away. Nobody checks the bomb. Oh, take a look at this rush. Take a look at this aggressive play from Minnesota. They make their way in through middle. They instantly hop into this whoa, B zone. Standing with a nice little angle. Oh, he's oh. Oh, oh, play. Oh, it's minus three. Eli with the snapper. Down to three for either side. This is going to be it. Last ditch attempt. Final of the point. Joe deceives gets his. But three seconds to go. You've got to get on the zone, lad. Fresh mag. Send it. Wins it. Oh my god. It's a 2v1. Diamond Con. Can you do it? The boys are on the capture. It's now a 1v1. What a round of control. Diamond Con, if you win this. God damn, what a round. Like when you have the slayers, when you have the talent there, it's all about putting it together. About to find out and in a very quick manner. Arshdy's putting in a few bullets toward the tractor. As here comes the nade, that could be big. That's massive as Arkane's able to find the first classic. Everybody explodes and that will be it. That will be it, Seattle. Getting one of the biggest upsets in CDL history. One clean break, one set of kills there. Afro sneaks in and steals the victory. Busting Envoy to make the play, or maybe with the stuns coming through. See he's scum backing up the hell of a mouth, but he strikes, gets the first blood, and for the moment, he gets away. Oh, he's got another kill! No way! Envoy is on one right now. sliding out and tell him he is adding on to his numbers cammy those gotten three what's up guys it's Puckett here in miami and i am here with the running back of the dolphins raheem mostert and i know you're a gamer yourself i've seen you in the war zone lobbies but when you come to a cdl event who are you cheering for right now i'm uh you know I, i'm a big fan of optic i think they have a, a solid squad and obviously it's, it's a good match right now so Absolutely a great match. We got Optic playing phase, always a great rivalry. Now, tell me about your experience. Have you always been a competitive gamer? Is it something as of late? I know you're streaming these days. It's something as of late. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also creating my own gaming organization down here in South Florida, try to give back to the community. Um, you know, I feel like that's, that's a missing piece down here, um, especially, you know, trying to learn the aspect of gaming. I feel like a lot of kids want to get into it. So. Roger Saffold was invested early with Rise Nation. Big shout out to him. We've seen other NFL athletes come in. What is it about gaming that kind of drew, drew you into this? Well, I've been playing gaming. I've been gaming for a little over, what, 18, 20 years. So, I mean, I've been, I've been involved in it, and it's, it's been a huge part of my life. And I know you know a lot of gamers these days. Do you have any favorites? I met you on the golf course, and you said you were, I was one of the many that you've beaten now. You were definitely one of the many, man. You were definitely <laughs> one of the guys that I, I really cherish and appreciate gaming-wise. So. I appreciate that, Raheem. Well, I appreciate you winning me a few fantasy Super Bowls. We're going to do that again next year as well. Make sure to draft them on your team and support the Dolphins. And what's the new org name? Can we launch it yet? Yeah, we're about to launch. We're about to take off. It's called Vicio. It's, it's uh, Spanish for vice. So. Of course, you're in Miami, so Vicio. I'm in for that, man. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. Appreciate you, brother.
a city, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent, hands down, vibes so unique. Three teams remain, and after this, we find out who plays Atlanta Phase for the Miami Heretics Major 2 Tournament Grand Finals presented by Gamergy. It's Championship Sunday, and just one week ago, we saw this showdown between the New York Subliners and Optic Texas. It went to a Game 5. Not just a Game 5, it went to the final round of Search and Destroy. And Allie, now they're playing on land. There's no excuses, and there's $90,000 guaranteed if you make it to that championship match. And both these teams have fell to Atlanta phase, so both of them are looking for that revenge in the grand final. Nameless, let's start here with the New York Subliners because they had that number one seed up until playing Optic in the qualifier. They were looking great up until they ran into Atlanta. What have the Subliners shown you here in Miami? Resilience. I mean, search and destroy efforts. I mean, overnight, they come back way stronger in the game mode. They get a convincing 3-0 to start the day. The New York Subliners are one of the best teams in the world for a reason. They won the World Championship because they have guys like Hydra and Kismet. They're so crafty, so creative on the map. And then they have some maps that they've been working on. Like their control has been so good throughout this stage. And when we get to a championship environment, you get two of those. They got one more match, they get to the finals. That's what their eyes are on. And, you know, I want to count them out to come in and just be the dominant squad in this matchup. Allie, as we take a look at their road to the major, they started with a reverse sweep of the Royal Ravens, then established dominance, took down FaZe in a game five before eventually falling to Optic. Where have they looked the strongest? though if you look back at the last 30. Well, if you look back at the last 30, I'd just say they look the strongest on land, right? A lot of those 3 O's were a little bit closer for comfort than you would think from the New York subliners. And when it comes to the Monster Energy pregame, the control is going to be everything in this series versus the Optic Texas. They've looked good in the hard point. They've looked good in the search and destroy. And since being on land, a 4-0 record, 3-0 in round fives, and 10-0 on defense, they are the best defensive team in the building, not only in control, but in search and destroy as well. Do you think they get Invasion nameless? They've been they pretty good on attack. They have Invasion. 4-0 on it. They've been unbelievable there. They got some maps in the series that they're just licking their chops. You can see Monster Energy pregame, six map win streak, four control win streak, lost two straight game fives. That's so that right. And I think that's kind of the big thing that blew our mind because coming in, we said they have the best SD player in Kismet. They looked like one of the fiercest teams in that game mode, but they've been slipping up on land. They'll try and avoid a game five against a very dangerous optic squad. Let's highlight the team playing from Texas. Shotzi, the superstar, joined by some legends. We've got the world champion in Kenny, one of the best players of all time to come out of Australia in Pred. And then, of course, this guy, Big Bruce, is in the building laying down those AR shots. I mean, we just saw them on the main stage, right? And honestly, I felt like Texas might have beat themselves a couple of times in that series. And that map number one, they come out incredibly slow versus Atlanta, allowed to go by over an 100-point deficit in map number one. And then that map number four, they were playing flawless hard point up until the very end in that last coup hill where they overcommitted and kind of let Atlanta Vegas caused some chaos. So for Kenny and Fred, they've been shooting. They have been those guys. The slang has been there. They just need to not get ahead of themselves in these series. Nameless, I'm looking at these numbers. Clearly, their aim, nothing is wrong. Their positioning, oh, yeah. nothing is wrong. But some of the decision making has cost Optic up to this point. I'll be honest, even in the, the hard points that they lost, like they didn't make very many huge mistakes, honestly. It was some big playmaking ability on the side of a BZ that we saw. I mean, we're talking the most minute things. They call right. that streaking from Kenny map one just a second earlier. They put potentially win that map. So for Optic, keep doing what you're doing. Ice Ice says the Monster Energy pregame says uh, 3-0 and SD with round 11 Ice versus ATL. Kenny with the 1v1. You know, one thing that you should know about this Optic roster, it's a lot different than years past. They learn very quickly. They fixed so many of the search and destroy issues coming into stage two. They've improved in hardpoint and they can definitely fix the issues that they just had versus phase. I'm going to be honest, with this series, the fact that we're getting an invasion again in that map number three, once we look at that map and modes, I almost wish Texas would prefer to play a Karachi or a High Rise or something, because they're the best offensive team in the world right now in the league. So the fact that they keep forcing a yeah. defensive map like invasion in this series, I wish they would test their luck on something. Are you surprised to see sub base? Both teams agreeing to play this game number one. No, I'm not surprised. The Optic's been working on it. New York, I felt comfortable there as well. Uh, definitely the edge towards Optic there, but the invasions are extremely 
really terrifying because New York has been dominant. When I say they have the number one differential on Invasion Hardpoint, it's plus 112. They're beating everybody by an average margin of over 100. So once we get to that triple invasion at the end, New York feel comfortable, man. Optic has to feel good as well. They just played that map less than 30 minutes ago close. against Atlanta Phase. Now they get a chance to do it against the Subliners, our 2023 world champions. It's time to make our Scuff Pick'ems official. And Nameless, still looking for 79. I think I it's am. time. I'm going Optic again. I think they bounce back. You know, they get, their guns are hot. They just came off of a match. The hard points were extremely close. I don't think they make the same mistake twice. Allie? Ooh, this is a really tough one. After seeing the maps and modes, I'm actually going to change what I was originally going to go. I think New York Subliners continue their run. I don't know what to pick here. <laughs> it's a win-win for the fans. Whether you have Atlanta versus New York in the final or Atlanta versus Optic, either one is a rematch, and it's going to be epic. But I think this is going to be New York finishing it in four. I got the Subliners versus Atlanta in the grand finals. We got about a minute before the players are ready, so let's dial in and highlight individuals. Nameless, yeah. who do you think is going to be the key individual to look at from the subliners? From the subliners, I'm going to go with Sib. You got three invasions in this series. The kid's shot is second to none. We've seen him making some massive plays, and I think he's one of the most underrated players, at least in the top echelon of teams. His spawn knowledge is unbelievable. When you watch him, he is working it nonstop. Great communication. I think Sib's the guy to watch. The new piece to the puzzle. We'll find out if it's enough on the other side, Ali. What do you got? for Optic for me, who do you have to put eyes on? Dang, I really wanted that question, but I will do on the other side for Optic Texas. I think for me, maybe Pred, I think maybe he needs to be that takeover guy. I think Kenny has simply been him since the day one that they spawned in on LAN, and we've already seen what Shotzi's capable of doing, so I'm ready to see a Pred takeover series. And how many players will score over 20 kills in our first hard point, Nameless? Everybody. Everybody. Get a sub base. It's going to be tight. It's going to be on sub base, and you are going to see this man making plays, hopefully, like this. It's Shotzi, who set six different records during our Major 2 qualifiers. He is in action for Optic Texas tonight. And I was talking to Raheem Mostert. I was asking him, what pros do you enjoy watching? He said, oh, it's got to be Shotzi. The guy's got the moves, and he's also got some clutches. I love this round 11 as well. This is what we just saw from Atlanta phase. Shotzi goes and plants a bomb. He stops, okay? This is a mistake that he fixed in the middle of this game. Every time they went to plant B and put the bomb down, they kind of put themselves in this situation where they're like sitting ducks waiting for Atlanta phase to make the collapse. So instead, he gets up the bomb, gets the kill, re-goes for the plan, and then just plays his life in top eskies here. He is simply that guy for Optic Texas. Yeah, I mean, he was making plays. This is something that was hurting them for the longest on Terminal. They're two and six on this map. They've really been trying to add it to their map pool, and you know, a big reason in part because Shotzi has this playmaking ability. Uh, also, for Shotzi, he has been an MVP form, but the hard points have not been as great throughout, throughout this major. He's got a .82 in HP. That's a big difference from online during the stage. He was running everybody in that, so if you get a little bit more activity out of him in the HPs, you have obviously a better chance in this one. And on sub base, he can get loose. And just so everybody knows what we're waiting on, we are fixing some setup, making sure he is locked in. It's a tech timeout for New York. This match is just moments away, but this gives us an opportunity, Nameless and Alley, to revisit the match we saw just seven days ago. It happened online. Yeah. It was our final qualifier match, and this one decided that Optic was coming in with the number one seed and Subliners with number two, Alley. Yeah, and it was a battle as old as time, right? Last time those teams went up before that, it was almost a reverse sweep from Optic Texas, but New York clutch up and close out the game five, but not this time. Opti Texas end up solidifying the reverse sweep with some insane search and destroy ant. Yeah, and you know, even though Optic, they, they came back reverse sweep to this series, they lost to Rio by about 25 points. Although, in other matches, they felt comfortable there. They decide to get rid of it. They banned Rio in this series. They feel more comfortable on Invasion. So, you know, these guys take a note from the series that they once had. But yeah, Optic with the reverse sweep, round 11 win. It was a great gameplay. And it was on sub base that started that hard point run for them. The match is ready. Miami, you ready to make some noise? I need you to be louder than that. Miami, <laughs> make some noise as we send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris, for helping me get this stage set for the losers' finals. Only one more team can make it to the grand finals. Now, the first squad coming to the stage is from the Lone Star State, but they're definitely not alone. Miami, get loud for Optic Texas. We got
The guns are still warm and the seats are still warm. Optic Texas fresh off of a loss to Atlanta phase and they are hungry for a revenge match with only 10 points separating those respawns and around in the search and destroy. They now have to go against the matchup that they are used to from the qualifier. Blaze, we got two more to go. Let's find out who meets Atlanta in the grand final. All right, stand clear because here comes the New York Subliners. We got the Bulldog Kismet, Sim, Skies, and Hydra. The New York Subliners ready for demolition. It seems like the New York Subliners are hitting their stride. We know what that means for the league. It means dominance. These guys are 6-0 map count since they dropped down to the lower bracket. They've been leaving a blaze in their trail, and they got to go through the green wall to get to the finals. Let's get this match started. I'm ready to get it started. Miami, I already know you're ready to go. But for the Call of Duty fans all around the world, are you ready? Miles Chan. Let's get it going. We are all so ready, guys. Thank you so much, man. What a crazy tournament. I said it at the start of the day, and I'll say it again. This has been one of the most memorable, memorable events we've had for a long time. An insane series of events. Now, though, we say goodbye to one more team, and we say hi to who goes to the finals. My name is Miles Ross, and this is Chance, and we are ready for a fantastic match. Dude, it is going to be an absolute battle. A bounce back from Optic and New York Subliners looking to continue that momentum. I just don't doubt at this point any player on the main stage. Nah. Any negativity towards any one player. Shotzi's been absurd with his playmaking ability. I'm just watching Kismet walk around. That's the most focused player I've ever seen in my entire life. He Ever. looks ready for the main stage, but these guys are going to be dialed and locked in, ready to go. And I think we have a special map set series as well for you just to kick things off on sub base it is going to be a great time optic they love it they've seen this map against the subliners as well but i know new york it's like these guys went to the lab after major one they placed top 12 they have bounced back and they have been fierce so much so that like the map two that we have against optic new york chose karachi that is the best s d map from optic by a mile and new york are just walking into hell choosing that for the map two s d but we've already learned these guys have done their homework. They know more about the game seemingly than everybody does, including the guys who designed the map. These guys have been breaking <laughs> everything down. It's funny when you say it like that, breaking everything down, breaking down the simple geometry of most of these maps. Well, that's right, the New York Subliners from 12th to now a top three finish. This is what their stage two has looked like so far. A streak of three wins. Is that enough for Flames, Ian? I don't think so, brother, but the record is not bad whatsoever. Hard point for them has been very, very solid indeed. At this event alone, of course, what we saw that Rio in the matchup against Toronto Ultra, absolutely lethal across the board. Will that be the same against Optic Texas? I mean, look, these guys are just comparable. It is toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It was a game five, round 11, the last time they played. You know it's a nail-biter. You know it's about who can pop off and make the better plays on Championship Sunday. Every single player has to rise to the occasion. Any small mistake on any given map, and you are going to lose the game. Both of these teams, incredible at capitalizing and keeping things calm. The mental results all tested once again and for the sub base I know right from the jump because it's optics map pick they're gonna be starting from the bad side but the way it played out last time they dominated them on p1 outscored them 90 to 12 uh -huh. so I know New York subliners yes they're gonna try to stay ahead of the rotations but they got to make those quick adjustments on p1 and make sure optic can't just farm them on that first hill Sub base a great start to the series again optic Texas coming into this series very hot after the loss to phase subliners have been warming up backstage we'll see how hot their guns are though as we go into sub base a map that demands mechanical proficiency no mistakes can be made not a map where huge comebacks happen often but again i still feel like we're in the early days of mw3 where we're still learning just as much as the pros are it is just such a difficult map to manipulate and organize, but it is a perfect record from Optic Texas. So no matter what hills or spawns have been coming through, those gentlemen on the stage, well, they have been on point, but it is just time to get locked in and ready to go. It is going to be a ferocious battle. I just want to jump straight in and get the ball rolling. But we've seen these players, everybody on both of these teams, an absolute shooter. The top four, they have risen thus far in the CDL. You are just looking for that small degree of separation 
between teams on either side. Well, that's the gorgeous thing as well. I mean, when it comes to Optic, guys like Shotzi there, the guy's making big difference plays. Guys like Kismet drives his teammates forward, whether it's a strong leadership, whether it's a playmaking ability. The only difference I see here is, I don't know if the New York subline has got any beef. 99 Kiz, but no, no beef needed. Again, I think it's going to be respect on both sides. No reason not to. You got world champions on both sides of the stage. And just on a, a tone setting front, you talk about the playmaking ability of Shotzi. I know that is going to be the big goal of New York, especially so for that like Karachi SND. Shotzi was 4 0 on the first blood front. The game plan, absolutely. You have to design it around a player like Shotzi. Make sure you keep that game plan on point. Well, like you said, the game plan is absolutely going to be red because both of these teams have watched tons of footage on each other. There's specific maps and modes. We'll see how that one goes. But we've got plenty of stats, boys and girls. You know you love them numbers. We're going to find out exactly how this matchup's going to go on paper before we dive into the game and find out how it goes in the pixels. Looking now at Pred and Kenny, the new bricks in town. This was Subbase versus New York back in March 17th. Look at them stat lines, baby. Pred was cooking. Yeah, the damage especially. 27 kills, absolutely exquisite, but he was just the ever-present force on the map as well. So at 5,200 damage, if one of your SMGs has to rock an MCW for the majority of the time and can fry like that, oh, you are having an absolutely dandy time. But again, all the adjustments being made, especially that focus just on that opening hard point. You can't let Pred get away from you. And I know on the flip side for Kenny, I got to say, I think he is the most valuable player on the Optic yep. Texas team. Like, if you're first round draft picking, go Shotzi. I get it. He can do things that nobody else can. But on a leadership front, when you listen to their comms, the direction that he brings on top of his playmaking ability, I mean, he's got to be the MVP of the team. But if you want to be most valuable, these are the matches where you have to set yourself apart. Yeah, we've been having this conversation quite a lot recently. Many, many folks, not necessarily the biggest fans of Kenny, with a criticism towards the stat lines, what he's doing in game bit. That man is a winner. He does exactly what needs to be done for that squad win. On the other side of the table as well, Hydra, another man who has sprung to life since his debut in Cold War. His very first match was against Atlanta Phase in that New York sideliners lineup. And he won. I, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the game and brought the most incredible plays we saw to the season at that point in time. Now he's a world champion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hydra is just one of those special players. It's a rare feat in Call of Duty to, like, firmly establish yourself as the best player in the game. There's always a conversation around a handful of players, but Hydra, when he was at his best last year, well, he achieved that feat and then some. But... That is just a, a dangerous man. You don't want to get unlocked and not an easy one to contain. When we think back to like the greatest sort of rookie debuts of all time, Simp back in Black Ops 4, unbelievable stuff. And in the CDL era, yeah, Hydra coming in, Scrap and Hixie, their season was absolutely outstanding as well. I wonder if we're gonna have one of those this year, who knows? Almost ready to get the game started, folks. We've rebuilt the lobby, players are now flooding in. Exciting to get into sub base, but while well, talking of rookies and talking of, of next tournaments, Major 3 going up north, March 26th, you're able to grab tickets. We're going back to the Matame Athletic Center. Those who have been there before is an absolute delight. Tickets on sale March 26th. Get that in your calendar for the Toronto Ultras Major 3 and the Ultra Open. And that's the 16th to the 19th of May. You can't wait to get up to Toronto in May, Sean. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be the uh, the Toronto attempted bounce back because obviously if oh, yeah. out of fourth place, those guys are going to be hungry going into the next stage. But before we get to the Major 3 tournament, well, we got to focus on our own. The battle just for that extra cash for the CDL points and really to set yourself apart. Already in top three, 60 grand ain't too bad, but for these players on stage, it's the pride, it's the trash talk, and it is that extra advantage as we go throughout this year. I know looking at the stage, it's definitely Sib that is having the issue on the main stage, because anytime he's not shooting bots, that means something is going wrong. That is a man that lives inside of the firing range, but both of these teams, you can see, maybe they met their maker in Atlanta phase, the only ones that have bested them thus far, and, well, we've seen what meteoric performances it took to take these squads down it goes from a bz getting 16 kills three hills in a row to slow optic down and well new york met a similar fate both of these teams hungry for that revenge hungry indeed phase waiting in that grand finals we'll find out who gets to go to that grand finals we'll find out who gets third place in this very series 
Wouldn't it be something for Optic to get a big major win here on MW2 still? A couple of majors left to go for all of our teams after this one, but I could hear the tick of the pregame lobby starting, ladies and gentlemen. The fist bumps are ready. It is now time to descend into sub base. Elimination final matchup, the New York subliners, Optic Texas. Here we go. No more yapping. We let the gameplay speak for itself. Sub base to kick things off, and ooh, baby, the opportunity to make amends for your previous sins. Subliners would love to take Optic down at one of their best maps, be the first one to drop them as well. A perfect record across the entire year for Optic. That is old spawns and hills and the new. I know Optic, they've already beat them on it once. It was P1, they set themselves apart. The opening break always sets the tone. We descend into the hard point. We fly forward. The subliners in all the usual spots. The trades are going to come to a close in a moment. We're going to see who finds that opening time. But it's not just that time we're fighting for. It's also that map pressure. It's keeping your opponents locked in, keeping them far away from the hard point. Oh, this is already beautiful work by the New York subliners. At least to strip away a good chunk of time off the rip. And you can see the containment they have over towards P2. Sib right now worried about long. But Optic continued to collect just a little bit of time. The Chati, well, they jump on him. No trophies to keep that man alive and already and infinitely better p1 hill right now for the subliners maintain the spawns and i just got to make sure you watch the back kenny he's approaching it skies though that is the l trigger irons oh. up, put player down kenny getting it done players trophies you name it they're all dropping to kenny right now spawns there for the boys of the subliners the other side of the map good work out kids dash you with the trades Whoa, Hydra finds it. Shots you there to keep the time going. And that is literally just Kenny, the difference maker for the team. You win the one gunfight, you flip the spawns, and you break through on P2. So that strong start subliners had, well, that is completely washed away. Gear up again and try to break this time. Here comes the break. Shots you up in the hill. Time ticket. Good tags, not enough for the kill. 35 seconds still on the point and through the back door. Dashi holding them down. Gets himself two. Heavy fire. Subliners get the break. Yeah, Sib, well timed flank. Both these teams getting Boom. after it. Pred from up top, but maybe falls down for the movement. Got to get rid of that nade and we'll get back in the time. Optic clean house to get the final 20 seconds to scrap. Damn. And happy for the lead as you at least attempt to rotate over to new. New York subliners keeping him pretty far away. Hydra going to be the player that wraps back to block those spawns. Everyone else, they just want to be a nuisance. You want to stop Optic in their tracks. Right inside of the minimap. Oh, nice nades. Again, those coordinated nades from Optic. We see them in every series so far. Brilliant at taking care of those players. Kenny looks like he was stuck there for a moment. Now over to the East Dock. He's trying to creep his way through that back line. Bad news for him. Skies and Kismet. Guns at the ready. They know something's coming here. And I think the stun or the nade may have given it up as well. So a two-pronged attack right now for Optic. And Kenny applying that pressure. So number six has to back down and deal with them. Skies not collecting the time because Kenny is trying to hunt you. He gets the help and you can see the feed. Hydra for two. Sid for the extra. And Pred, the last man standing from Optic. And he's going to get the cruise. He doesn't get you out of time, but utility long-term Pred awoken in the last Whoa. series, doing what he can. And Dashi able to strike as well. All of this, though, just to keep the subliners at bay. That is still a strong amount of time that New York is able to get. About close to tying this game up as we rotate towards new. You can see Optic very well ahead of the rotation. Players pushed out. They got all their cuts. No one is slipping this net. Yeah, subliners are not going to be able to get to that new hard point without a whole heap of trouble. And Skies is doing the best he can to just navigate. Ah, but there it is. Pred, the first on the board on this hard point. Time ticking away, we're looking at that lead change. Kenny cut down. Immediate trades though, once again. Fred continuing the absolute masterclass so far. 14 and six. Subline is yet to get close. Got it, Shotzi being so annoying too, slowing these players down and keeping them at bay. Great damage as well. Not a single subliner can actually make the push. 30 seconds have gone by the hill, completely uncontested. Finally, Hydra in Sky is able to get through, but the gunfight's on the time. Dashi keeping them at bay. Big Bruce winning the gunfights from in the time. Okay, finally cuts him down. Kenny there, unable to save him. Spawns in the back now for the subliners. No, they've split. Shotzi in time. Is he going to be able to identify this? Final 10, the scrap going the way of Optic Texas may be a blessing. Split spawns, though. 
over towards the new hard point. Pred secured it once again. Kill number 15. Yeah, now you got to read the flank, though. Skies, he's going to be taking a long route to see if he can break this down. Optic haven't jumped in the hill just yet because they're waiting for the kills. Skies, though, working with Kismet. Oh! Look at the teamwork and coordination. Everybody winning their fights for subliners. The perfect start to the new hill. Oh, yeah. Here comes the cruise. You're going to bounce back straight away from that four down. Hopefully, flush these players out. Pred's going to be calling out every player's location. Catch is one. Dashy now on the approach, finds Kismet. Skies bounces back. Big tags, but not enough to slow down the approach. That's Optic's hard point. That dolphin dive is so extra. Just a little bit of timing change that you have for moments like that, just to be the bait and Optic strike right back. Great use out of the crews to make it annoying. And Kenny flying in top P2, cutting you off. Right now, left side spawns coming through for New York, or at least mostly. They've pushed out and flipped him over to the right. So a 2-2 split, Optic trying to read this situation and set themselves up again on P1. Back over to P1, first go around, very strong work out of Optic Texas. The lead is certainly theirs. Opening time going to be going the way of the subliners should they decide to dip a toe, but again, Pred continuing to be an absolute menace, lying in wait, 18 and 9. Once the time is right, he'll hit that hard point, stop the clock. Yeah, eventually, if nobody chows, you're going to know where to look. That's a great stun, but Pred, the damage is out. Kismet tucking himself away, and you got to reposition. Optic right now, they have the spawn swords new, but he can't give away too much time and pred the distraction for Shati to get in the mix. And now from up top, so annoying, letting his teammates get the kills. Kenny for two, pred, he's all but a distraction. Optic at the time and still ahead over towards new. But now over towards new again, Sid V Kenny. Kenny winning the life battle, but not the teammate battle. Shati trying to get his way forward now as well. You've got a lot of angles to take care of on the approach. Whoa, Sid finds another. Trades again. Subliners, though, this time round, a lot stronger on that way to the new hardpoint. And I took my eyes off the minimap for a moment. And in the meantime, New York subliners have at least flipped it and gone over towards B2. They're down by about 70 points. But the opportunity now to get back in the game. Sid winning gunfights from range. And that is from time, keeping these players at bay. Kenny, well, he's trying to shine skies in the background. Oh, wins it as well, but they're having to work these gunfights. Last one standing, Sid, well, from the heavens above. Kenny there to take him down. Kenny cleaning house once again. Well, a solid lead now developing even further. A 70-something point game for Optic Texas. Let's go for a quick listen in. I'm playing your own, Ken. Yeah, another push me on. Name, name. On me on. Back on. Go prep, 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 One's in server, in server. Yeah, in server on me. They can go right. I'll pick up right on the right. I'll be right. Oh, he's on the left, guys. Oh, what, what do you want? What do you have for me? I get your top. I get your top. I get your top. Go on top. Look at P-top. We're going to see tunnel one HP. Tunnel one HP. Okay. Tunnel one HP. Tunnel one HP. He went to the top. I need back left. I need back left. I need to reload. I need to reload. AG. Yeah, he. I'm on back left. I'm on back left, kid. Back left, I'm challenging me. He can be the back left. I don't see him. He went back right then, Ed. He has to be back right. I'm looking at it. 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 I'm the two players we highlighted from Optic talking about their prowess on sub base are popping off once again. Kenny has dominated P2 and Brett has dominated the game. It is a massive lead built up by Optic who now just get a break down this hill once again. The kills flowing their way. The time being collected. 37 seconds and they win this game. Holding on. Subline is fighting tooth to nail just to get close. 30 seconds remaining here on the dry dock. Kenny still sitting there with streaks. 
able to blast this hill wide open if he has to. It's a stalemate right now. Nobody able to get to that point. And that's a fine thing if you're Optic Texas. You've got such a strong lead as Shotzi now tries to exfiltrate the hard point. I mean, it's just a moment. Try to get out and make sure you just keep the kills falling your way. They do miss out on a good chunk of time, but again, a 100-point gap between these two teams. Subliners, though, doing little things right. You pushed out P2. You're trying to set up around this hill in skies and Hydro oh. are striking. Optic now off spawn, but look at the splits coming through. Number one and number four have at least gotten out. So Subliners now, they got to fight the two-front war. You turn your oh. attention, and Shotzi pierces the middle of it, picks you apart, and sets his team back up. Somehow managing to do that and seemingly undetected. Dash, you now in his happy place. Pred causing nothing but discourse through the lines of the subliners. Pressure now on still. Find a corner. Enjoy the snow. As there's the kills again. Slide! A second for Pred. Looking for number three. Oh, and with a butt of his gun. But Kismet tries to keep the play alive. You have to get going. This could be game. This is just a victory lap now from Optic. The kills are flowing their direction. They are making it look easy. What a way to bounce back and set the tone. Optic Texas perfect on sub base. Four more points just to get it done. Here comes the next few. Final five. Optic got in position for the old hard point, but they are for the new. Uh -huh. Subliners finally able to tighten their grip around the map for now, but good God, is it too late? It's first of 250, and this is certainly going to help. Kenny calling in the streaks. Easy pickings, not a lot of cover. Bye-bye, Skies. Able to get in the hard point. Now that might be it. Dashy with the opener. Looking to find their way in, but it's still the subliners. They are holding on to the snow. The hands will be getting frostbite soon, and Optic are still unable to get a toe in. It has been a 100-point deficit for the longest of time. The subliners, though, they're falling, and on P1, you just get to flood. Shotzi, the safety net just in case. Pred, though, from two. You get to strike one more play right now. It's oh. <laughs> Hey, he wins the gunfight. He's keeping things mixy. But Optic, there you go, 249, a contest for a moment, but the game Yay! is done. Delaying the inevitable, not an easy thing to do, get time on B1 without a perfect setup, but Optic Texas open the series strong. The subliners sadly come out a little colder again, a benefit of being in that winner's bracket final matchup. You go down to phase, you're still hot and ready to go. You prove it right then and there against New York. And how do you think Fred is going to respond after holding the L in the last series? Well, bounce back, leading the lobby in every single category. 27 non-traded, more than every other player had total kills. His damage out of control. And even in the comms, you hear what he was saying about his former teammate in Civ. He's giving the gas to his teammates. He's let them know the trendsetter and tone getter there from Optic Texas. That is a comfortable run on sub base. The early advantage now in the series. 36 and 20 Pred currently worth his weight in gold. The 5.5k damage as well. Beautiful stuff. That's going to be that sub base. Over and out. Subline is not able to get too much going there. It was a little too so slow out of the gates. An issue that the team has had so far here, and especially at Major 2, and, and uh, again from D-Real, from their coach, saying if they come out hot, all good. It does take the subliners a moment to get that locomotive going, but once they do, a very, very formidable team either way. Highlights now on your screen, and for those wondering at home, Dashy, 2 minutes and 20 in the hill. Yeah, no, not too bad, the uh, the Super Soaker indeed, but it is just a map where I think the subliners had maybe one strong P3 hold, but when you win P3, you lose the rotation over towards sub, and Optic just able to do all the little things right. I think Kenny, especially just on P2, it was the opening break. He wins one gunfight against Skies, blocks those back spawns, gets him for a team, and you break that setup down, and that really does just set you up long term. Talk about one mistake being made and you're going to get punished. Well, Ken picks you apart. They get that momentum and never look back. A flawless performance there from Optic Texas. And now this is where things, to me, get extremely interesting. It is Karachi that New York chose to play for Search and Destroy in map number two. But it is a map that Optic have been feasting on all year long. They have beaten the very best. They have an argument very clearly to be the best Karachi S&D team in the game. That's what New York wanted to go into. So this is a big opportunity. 2-0 in the series, but a dominant performance like that, 
the guns right now from Optic, they are feeling quite hot. Yeah, I would imagine we've got something in store from the subliners when it comes going back to Karachi. We've already seen, again, wall bangs. We've seen different angles. We're seeing new looks. But are you going to test that out? Are you going to pull these tricks out against an Optic team that looks so formidable? Those one tricks, they maybe get you a round. They maybe give you two rounds of, you know, of maybe second guessing a game plan. But when it comes to teams like this, man, I mean, you're going to have to take way more than that. This Karachi is going to be a very interesting one indeed. After Karachi, we take a triple dose of Invasion. We'll be playing Control, Hardpoint, and Search and Destroy on that one if we have to go the distance to find out who makes it to that Grand Finals. But for now, Karachi, Search and Destroy. And we talk about the uh, the tricks in the trades. Well, it's the trades that might be necessary on the first blood front from Optic when they played New York on this map. Last time, Optic won 9 out of the 11. Jeez. That being said, you win that many first bloods, and it is still a nail-biter game. Subliner certainly had fight, but it was Shotzi 4-0 on the first First blood front. He is a magician on Karachi. I look at it like a Call of Duty player. Shotzi looks at it like a playground. He dances <laughs> around the map. He finds all of the new unique routes. He messes with your timings and obviously a very difficult player to contain. That is going to be the goal right now from subliners. You have to prepare, literally design your setups just around what Shotzi is going to do on the first blood front. And maybe that design is just let him do his thing and play on the opposite sections of the map, but especially around top and bottom red. Shotzi going to be trying to do wondrous things. And I know certainly Optic were paying attention earlier. Maybe a couple cheeky wall bank spots they're going to have to be privy to, <laughs> but I'm sure they will be making that adjustment. Well, no pads out, folks. Class is in session. Map number two. Optic Texas taking on the New York Subliners. We're going to Karachi for search and destroy. And there you go. It's another nade. And that is exactly where Envoy died in round one when Subliners played Toronto earlier. You take down Shotzi, already feeling much more comfortable. And it was virtually the exact same strat. The difference now, though, Pred, he has found himself in the privy position to try to break this down. The timing is on point, and he has struck. As soon as he knows the bomb's not got a player on it, he checks all the usual places, finds one out. And Preds moving loud, not running covert. Making just enough noise. Big win there from Hydra. The right gun at the right time. And now from Hydra, he's behind enemy lines. Kenny, though, not a gun that he can really chase with. Has to be a bit more cautious. He's directly above him, and Hydra's headset has been out of control <laughs> on the Karachi S&Ds. He knows Ken is up top, and that's why his team isn't yet planning the bomb. Trying to isolate this one player, and Hydra hasn't gotten it just yet. Well, he was there. He had him lined up, and Kenny, oh dear. 20 seconds to go in the round in this 2v2. Optic Texas don't have to move, but there's the bomb plant. Hydra, oh dear, that's going to sting, and there we go. Kismet cleaned up for the final kill. A swift and relatively safe retake, and I do believe Pred shot a body. Well, I mean, hey, Pred can do whatever he wants after the map one he just had also absolutely makes the play. That is eight New York subliners get the first blood and lose the rounds. Players right there from Optagon Point, Pred sets him up and then the instincts from Kenny. There is no chasing Hydra. You can see he heard you coming from a mile away, but Kenny just maintains the high ground. That is Kylo Ken understands the importance of elevation. It's a family thing. It's a big family thing. You wouldn't understand unless you've seen all the Star Wars films. Three to nothing there for Pred. Lovely first round from him. Dodging all the days this time round. No trophy in play for it, but the boys of Optic Texas have learned their lesson. Shotzi's going to make his way out towards the street side. There are plenty of members of the subliners in position, but whether or not they see him is the other thing. Trying to clear out mid. Dancing the dance he does. Shots he's now in his horribly unfortunate new home. And he's up here with an MCW as well. And this is a spot where, like, I would never check it if you get up here for Shotzi. This might just be a guaranteed kill. His team gets the bomb down. It is a 4v4 retake. And Brett found himself in an interesting position as well. Shotzi going to hear all of this. He knows players are in green. Complete coverage in the middle of the map. Brett cut down through the middle of the street, but there's a halo gunfire. Keeping these boys at bay for as long as possible. Shots, he springs alive for the final kill of the round. Goes his way. Back-to-back -back rounds. Optic. That is absolutely easy. Shotzi gets in position. His teammates take their time. And as soon as you get the bomb plant, it's just about the patience waiting to make his move. Notice how he doesn't jump as soon as the door gets open. He waits for the engagements to roll through. Doesn't give the subliners any time to calculate. No time to think. 
And that is back-to-back, -back, very impressive rounds coming out from Optic. Kenny is well on a three spree. Got to keep that in the back of your mind long term. But New York Subliners, they wanted this. They wanted Optic on Karachi. <laughs> We haven't seen enough just yet. Those nades from downtown, though, they were looking for the first blood. So close and yet so far, but now you know Shotzi, he's in his home. You think he's top red, already repositioned. There's the reposition, there's the fight, but there's a lot of members of subliners here. Shotzi can't get any more. Info passed over, though. Lots of red dots on his minimap. Passes it to Kenny. Kenny finds one. Can't get another. Sky's good work. Dashy there for the trade immediately. And now it's a 2v1. That is trust in the comms. He heard the one-shot call out and flew in with a pistol. Now Hydra in between these two players. Great trigger discipline, but question is, how quick can he be to trade out Dashy? Oh, no! Slammed. Big Bruce Boy's fists to the back alley. What reaction time. Wham! Never go against Batman in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He is going to take you down. Three rounds now in a row from Optic. Exquisite performance so far. You saw the idea from the subliners, by the way. They were catching Kenny with the nades, but not quite perfectly coordinated. It was only there for the damage. And Optic are playing with all the confidence in the world. They are running it down. They are challenging. And for good reason, Subliners right now struggling so far on Karachi. Yeah, dodging nades, such lovely routes taken to avoid the usual spots. Shossi got some damage in, Sib. EOD might not save you here, mate. Oh, it just about does. Hydra there for the immediate first blood, so good work. An advantage now had. Can you turn it into a round win? Well, here's a day one corner. Optic, something you need to check. Well, Bred's actually clearing the routes toward mid. Hello? And that's just above Kismet. He's calling this out to his teammates, but he, Kismet's giving information on the A side of the map. And two players from Optic are stacked up towards mid and green, but the difference isn't going to be enough. Kenny does get caught. Dash might find a pick, but it's still a man advantage. And now last man standing. Doesn't last for long. Subliners off the back of the first blood on point. And it was Shotzi just a little bit too aggressive. That answers the question why Shotzi has the MCW. He's looking to catch Sib on that cross out to bridge. He was slightly off, just a little too slow. That was enough for Hydra to go and get that kill. Subliners executed after the fact with a man advantage. No mistakes being made. Starting to build a spree here. It all starts with one. Plenty of comebacks been had in this tournament. And again, for a team like the Subliners, albeit for one change, your current reigning world champs. What have they got in the playbook? 2-2, two, two, split. Not talking about dancing attire. Hydra's in. Catches shot, see, that's an, out, that's an outstanding first blood. Aggressive chow, just going straight down mid, run it down, and well, with the man advantage, you have so much time just to let Optic make a mistake. Everybody pumping the brakes in New York subliners, spreading the map, waiting for the information to come to them. It's full pockets for kids. There's the smoke. And Fun this is a, it's complete bay, by the way. He's making noise at B just to drag two Optic arrows over towards this site. So Kismet just playing with Optic Texas. Meanwhile, Kenny, lone defender, dealing with three. He's at the bus stop waiting for the play. There it is. Bomb down. Can Kenny find another one? Reinforcements arrive in the form of Dashi. All bases are covered right now. The fake play over by B still going, though. Big Bruce gets involved as well. What a brilliant defensive round from Optic. Hydra, though, still alive. Makes it a 2v2. And you still have Pred that's been worried about Kismet this entire time. But the SMG duo for New York, they have grouped up together. They got to go towards this bomb, and they got to go straight towards Kenny. Kenny's lying in wait again. Found a different corner this time. 15 seconds. You have got to get moving. Hydra recovers the bomb. Hello. The second. Hydra gets it. Got to plant fast. He has time to plant. Pred now in the 2v1. Can you get information on both of these players? Kismet from up top, you see one cross. You've seen them both, you know they're both there. He has to send it. And Pred, he's not gonna cut him down the middle, he's gonna hit the front. There's the fight. Ring around a rosy. Pocket full of posy. A tissue, a tissue. Pred falls down. Subliners. Back to back. And credit to Kismet, man. You have no time left on the clock, but Ken playing a day one corner.
It was a nail biter, but they checked it. Those instincts on point. And even for Kismet in the back alley to make sure nothing gives away. It was actually Hydra. There you go. Just speedy wow. as well. Flying past and checking in. So Hydra for the first, Kismet for the next. New York sub honor, smooth sailing in that round. Can nearly made the play to break him down, but they take care of business and stay afloat in this game. Those Hydra kills and the bomb recovery, bomb plant, you name it, man. He really had to do it all there. Brilliant, brilliant work. Subliners one away from tying it up. Slightly different looks here. Dashy just hops, checks it, gets it. And you have Kismet there basically just baiting for a Hydra, but Dashy built different. He gets the kill too fast, so he does get traded out, but he's changed things up. And I think Ken felt the instinct that Hydra's up above. Shotzi certainly knows and able to take him down. These two SMG players, they are flying at each other. Oh, this guy he spots him out. He's damaged. The dance is on. Big tags. Skies gets away with his life. Teammates now scrambling to help out. Sip from behind. Cred doing everything he can now in a 1v1 against his old teammate. Who is the better player off the old Surge squad? MCW in hands of both. Here we go. Intel stuns it. Sip brings it up close. He even got a body shot in before the round ended. Three to three. Gotta let the old teammate know. Sib, the movement <laughs> clean. Nice little two pump. Goes prone and hits him with the one after the fact. Respecting GAs and keeping it as close as you can get. That stun, it did not matter. <laughs> what a play by Sib. Uh, such a hard fight to take. You saw from Preds POV as well, even with the rival. And Sib has proven himself to be such a formidable, formidable 1v1 fighter. So, so tough to bring him down. Three to three, all square. Optic on defense. And I think they're going for nade kills off the rip over towards B, but nobody home. So a lot of frags expended. No kills coming through. Shotzi on defense, though, straight up the middle of the map. You get control of that. That is an impossible gunfight to win, even for Sib, getting out of dodge. But now, if you're on the subliners, you're just uncomfortable. Got to watch out for Shotzi. He's going to make you real uncomfortable. Oh no, the timing, Kismet. Chews him up, Pred gets brought down again. Sib now starting to get in his head, maybe. Getting caught, solo chow after solo chow in so many rounds in a row for the subliners. Kenny trying to find the timing to get through the smoke, but it's the coverage to get the bomb down and nobody getting through that. Subliners, another dominant round. It does not feel good when you have no presence on the map, when you are stuck in your spawn, but Shotzi and Pred both getting caught completely over aggressive. And Subliners iron dub. You saw even the way Sib was playing it in a corner, waiting for the squad to come help him out. Not an easy moment to get used to. That is trust in the comms and coordination of your teammates. That is also four rounds in a row for New York. They have been on a tear. Yeah, the first three looks so dominant. And now they cannot seem to stop. It's straight Pringles now from the subliners. What have they got in this round? Middle of the street has been absolutely obliterated. I'll take a bring the bomb to B. And maybe on the flank, Pred versus Kismet. Always potential in the minimap for one of these players to make a move. But the rest of the action over towards B. A lot of noise has been made. Kismet just gets caught. Over aggressive advantage for Moptic. Pred's have enough of this. Big Bruce, what a gunfight. So they've got just enough shots in there to push him back. A peach of an eight as well. And I think they're going for the plant. They're going to take their time. They back down, and Shotzi might be one HP, but they're waiting for Pred to get back in the mix. Oh! Well, Dashi might fall, but there's Pred. The trades are in three versus two. Optic playing very smart in these moments. Skies and Sib looking for the clutch. And again, they're thinking about that A-bomb as well. So now you've got a very awkward moment. Pred, the timing not necessarily paying off. Shotzi there to help out. His timing all good. Skies finds himself alone against Shotzi and Pred. And there's just nowhere you can go. He killed the bomb planner. It was a nice attempt, but those SMGs just flying around the map. And that is the pace switch up as well. If the players on Optic go for the plant in that moment when Pred is out of the picture, who knows how the round plays out. It could have been a punishing moment. They make the right call. They back down towards the bridge. They wait for Pred to get in position. That's when Dashi goes back top third. Everything is timed out perfectly right now from Optic on Karachi. 
Tied up 4-4 though. New York back on the attack. You can see the pressure is on. Optic have burnt their three round lead. Now all square. It's first to six. We're very much in the business end of this s and Ow. This B side effectively wide open and Hydra's gonna get that first blood. And as soon as he falls, New York to make the call. Do you force it through on B? Yes, they absolutely do. Kismet going for the plant. Man advantage. Bomb down. And how many times this round we've seen that smoke go down with no bomb? Hydra finds his second on the round. And now forward you fly. Optic are in trouble. Skies makes it all on the dashy. And dashy shooting, but it's not going to amount to much. Map point, New York. Just catching these players a little too aggressive, playing off their tendencies. So much homework you do for these moments. These teams, they know for a fact, high likelihood you play against each other, especially on Sunday. Subliners have chosen this map. It started out a bit rough, but the adjustments are here. One round away from tying up the series. Hydra has had one hell of a map. 11 and seven. The first bloods have been on point. He's had shots his number. And here comes the nades. Un, deux. Oh, my God! You may never see it again. Three. Oh, they're all gone. Preds here. Where are my boys? I've got the bomb and I've got no hope. It's a 1v4. Seconds into the round. Optic have a van. Subliners have a car. The bombs explode, and what a way to put the stamp on this game. Oh, my God. Hey, if Skies had got that, that would have been something, but it was Sip. It wasn't a nail in the coffin. They built the whole thing. Nails, the wood, there was a sweet plaque on the top and everything. We have not seen a search and destroy like that before. And that was not the first time subliners were going for those pre-nades. All they did was just mess with that timing. They do it perfectly. And as soon as that bomb went off, I saw the smile on Hydra's face. They knew <laughs> they absolutely got them. Water performance there on Karachi. The homework pays off. You get an A plus and credit the whole way around, especially so. Sid might not have had a ton of kills that game, but that 1v1 he had against Pred when his team is working on the comeback. Former teammates letting them know. Look at the start and the finish of that round, though. The first round opens up with the Sky's big nade. Same place, and that time it pays off. You don't do it at once for the rest of the round. You, you teach Optic to worry about that spot, and then you mess with the timing. Same with the B-bomb smokes. Smoke goes down, bomb gets blinded, bomb doesn't. You're training your opponents to look out for these moments. New York subliners, big brain plays, big stats as well. Hydra in the gunny skies adds three to the pile in that round alone. Well, we have a series, folks. Invasion, invasion, invasion. That is not what's happening right now. That's what's happening in the series. We weren't letting everybody know that World War III has started, but in this matchup, it may as well have. We're going to a quick commercial break, folks. When we come back, we play Invasion Control to find out who takes the lead in the series and who finds himself one step closer to a grand final against FaZe. Upgrade your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
it's not just CDL points and cash, we're also playing for a trophy. To add to the trophy cabinet of one of our three remaining teams in this tournament, Optic Texas, the New York Subliner, and of course Atlanta Faze already in that grand finals. We'll find out in a moment who gets to go to it. For now though, we're tied up one to one in this absolute throwdown. Two magnificent squads going toe to toe, tete a tete so far. We've said goodbye to two maps in the series. We say hello to map number three, Invasion Control. And it is a grinder and a grueler of a map. Anyone that's played on it or watched it, we already know the deal. Defense is dominant. Any extra edge you can have to win an offensive round to get those extra ticks, it goes such a long way. Optic, they have been running it down on this map. One of the best, if not the best, attacking team in the game. But what we've seen from this tournament, subliners, they do not fear it. They will clutch in these moments. They can be out of control. Idris especially for an SMG player to have stats <laughs> that good in that clean. Always a force to be reckoned with and a reminder, the lowest of the low. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Here we go into the map, flying into what looks to be a pretty solid A hit. Shotzi's clean up B though. That's gonna be all good. Hydra manages to infiltrate the back lines of the optic defense. Stay secret, stay safe. Or let Dashy have it. Look towards the middle of the map. What heads up play? Kenny. Bang! Hydra. Finds himself another. Keeping the front line open now for his boys. Yeah, this is nightmare situation from Optic. Just the idea of trying to get Hydra out of your spawn. But the timing goes Kenny's way. But Kenny, Ooh. well, wrong gun for the job, but the right strap to make it happen. Clear out Hydra, feel a bit more comfortable, but right now, Subliners, they're pouring the pressure on A. One good gunfight from Kismet, he can be the opening, but no trophies, uh, nowhere to go. Actually gonna shut that door, and for the moment, Subliners a little bit desperate. You got Shotzi inside of your base, and Shotzi letting players run by, trying to be a nuisance, but maybe too big for his britches, a little bit too smart. All he's doing right now is forcing Skies to hang back, but less than 30 seconds on the clock. Only the first tick just now coming through. Optic, if you get this break, you can devastate the subliners. They've done a great job so far burning the clock. Red now on the flank. Good shots, couple in the dashy, no problem. Just about 20 seconds to go in the round. Hydra still finding kills all over the place. Middle of the map, no way safer. And that's it. The bee's gonna get drained as well, potentially. No hope in hell for the subliners so far. This has been a magnificent defense. This is as dominant as it gets, and for subliners, they're just simply nowhere to go. Everywhere running straight into the irons right now of the Optic players. Five seconds on the clock. You're forced to go towards B. The door is closed. And that is a perfect Jeez. round on defense. Already a massive advantage in this game. One minute and 48 seconds. Not bad whatsoever. Not quite perfect though, but pretty good. I mean, did they even get that single ticker? I mean, either nope, way, nope, if nope, you're nope, like no that ticks. far behind, that is quite literally perfect. You might add a few deaths, but whatever. Shotzi handling it perfectly. The decision making and the timing on whether he wants to flank or trusting his teammates, absolutely nailed it. Optic not wasting any time, maybe trying to speed run this invasion straight over towards B. They go. The stun, well, they can't ah. slow you down, but the Semtex can. Shots are going to fall, and well, Dashy, his only job right now is to draw pressure and attention over towards this A zone. B down doesn't quite work, but you see the kills from Optic being picked up on the feed on the other side of the map. They've got the pressure on B. No spawn traps just yet. Snap, crackle, and pops Hydra. Slow cap, still working out a beat. Dashy from his perch now finds himself down like, oh, Shotzi loses a tough one to Skies. And this is huge. Dashy now the lone man on point. You can see he's forced to back down. So as good as Optic's first defense was, well, New York have an opportunity to attempt to replicate the same. Hydra wins a big win, Skies, for the follow-up. The trades are all there. And Pred, well, last man standing can't get it done. Kismet guns you down, and you are back to square one. Welcome to the palace spawn. Shotzi's going to try to fight his way out. The rest of the boys have all stacked up towards that lower side of it. Kismet's still an unrelenting suppression from that side of the map. 35 seconds on the clock, you are burning this one now. Not quite as perfect as Optic were in the first round, but so far so good. And Sivin Skies are effectively containing the entire team. There are no open avenues of attack. This is a stranglehold, only a single ticket's come through. Optic desperate just to make a move, and before they get too far, they might have to worry about getting flanked as well. You still got Hydra behind enemy lines at B. 
12 seconds on the clock for Optic. There's almost nowhere to go. They can't account for everything. Can he win? 7.6 seconds holds it. The rest of the team should be able to get there. Fred passes some information across to the lads as now they capture the point. Three-man stack on a B. That's the second segment gone. Third's on the way out in a moment. Kismet, he might send it. Oh, he does! Whoa, to get it! To get him off! Fred has to get the kill. He's got three seconds. It's done! What a defense! That was unbelievable timing from New York. I, yes and no. Look, for a standard round on defense, that's great, but they are still going to be behind, so that is not ideal. And that is a moment where I think Hydra might have just tweaked. He was the one that was back tank over by Ice Cream, and, well, he loses that gunfight to Ken, and that was the open door. Yes, they slam it shut on the zone. It's a great round on defense, but you are still behind. You still got to dig deep and just deliver ever so slightly, just a little bit extra. Anything can happen. But as far as the segments go, Subliners trailing. Pressure towards B. They're trying to play it safe, trying to get themselves on the board in the long run. Skies gets his first as Hydra pressuring now forward towards the apartment site. Can he get this player out of that spot? Shotzi is unaware. The Frenchman cuts him down. Eyes oh, under the second through the middle of the map. So nobody really finishing the capture of it by B. And Dash is now the one that's sort of setting up the spawn kills right now and being a nuisance towards the subliners. He's wrapping back, though, just to keep A secure because Skies, well, he's found himself in Cafe, Hydra, and DVDs. And the clock now being stopped on the objective. Another big gunfight win. Whoa. Kenny gets traded, but before he can get the cruise, Hydra is going to fall. But at least that first segment has come through. The first one subliners are able to collect. Um, they're on their way over towards A as well. Save the foot race. Spots out one. Definite information pass now. Red dots are another thing. Good awareness from Kenny, but not enough for the gunny. Gets it. Three spree from Sib. And his teammates winning the gunfight as well over towards A. So you stop the clock. Got two players set up for the spawn kills. Kismet just has to live. His players can keep him at bay. Oh my god. Oh, Hydra cuts down another. So you're keeping that front line safe. Optic out about to get in a position. Dashi finally punches a hole. Here goes the hit. Big win! Bruce saves the day. He's got to keep going, oh. though. He's going to get traded. Sky's keeping the pressure up, and he gets the trophy out as well. The second tick, though, doesn't come through. But in the meantime, you've got the extra tick that you were desperate for on A. You're right back towards this B zone. Subliners maybe finding a little bit of that offensive magic. Still, though, a long way to go in this round. Stretch an optic as thin as they possibly can across the map, all the way to A, now all the way to B. That's massive work now. Two segments of B. So they're in the lead as far as the capture point goes. Looking to close this out now, and that has changed the face of this invasion map so far. Oh, Shanti dancing, though. Baiting out Kismet. He can't deliver. Enough work being done. And, well, Dashi keeps you around. And, well, players from Optic have been taking turns, bullying down on this, like, street. Kenny might fall, but with 30 seconds left, you got to flood through straight towards B. I just crept in. Pounces. Stop the clock for a moment. Pred still upstairs is going to be an issue. He does have coverage. So once you're able to get the kill on a Pred, you're able to capture the point. Kenny and Dashi now reinforcing. That's a big moment. Hydra still alive. Hydra down. 20 on the clock. Keep him away. Optic, you do not want to give away the extra ticks. Play nice and aggressive here on defense. Kismet has made it towards broken, but he's going to get gunned down. Ten seconds left. New York are going to flood in through the process. Here we go. Dashi trying to stop him. 6.1 seconds. Oh, Bruce pokes out. Teammates finding kills. The subliners, they can't deal with it. They cannot deal with the pressure, but Kismet is still alive. I mean, Kismet doing everything he can. You got a challenge. Just get him off the zone. Look at the angle he's chosen to go with. Is it good enough? You stop the clock. Kismet, he's bottom the time. Brad, Brad sends it, and they capture the point just a millisecond too late. What an unbelievable round of control. It's still going. In a 6v4, you win this on lives on either team. I think I have a small advantage, but plenty of time right now from New York. The nades rolling through, couldn't quite catch him, and well for subliners. Now you're down to three. Oh, my word. Kismet, see you in the next round. Skies and Hydra get theirs on the approach forward. Pred should be able to get one if they do send it into the back of this shot. Pump the brakes. 30 seconds. Dashi's making noise, too. I don't know if Sib can hear it. He absolutely Ooh. did. One small mistake. You might get punished. 3v3. Chelsea. Guns up down the street. That nade's not going to connect through the back. Hydra punches a hole all down the skies. A Shotzi with a tactical retreat. Can he find it here? I don't know if he knows exactly where he is. Yes, the teammates are there. 
Wow, from the jaws of defeat. I got to say, Optic maybe a little bit too passive in that round to give up that B zone. Kismet was the only player alive for such a long time, but the Bulldog, the intimidation factor coming in clutch. It could have been another de a devastating round on defense, but Subliners, they cut their losses. They create the opportunity. You still have to clutch up on the defensive end, but they've put themselves in a winnable spot. Map point optic. Chelsea with the Dolphin Dive just trying to dodge that first nade will not be hitting the B side of the map until the health regens. There we go, he's in. Here's the capture. Kenny's there in the off angle for it. Finds Sib. The door bursts wide open. Preds cutting mid map into pieces. And this is beautiful work as well. Again, Optic, all they're oh looking God. for. As long as you secure the B zone, you're feeling great, Pred. Well, he can't get the cruise. But if B is secure, Optic will get that defense. This has been such a strong attacking round already. Now let's find these kills. Push Kismet back. That's it. Keep the life advantage you've got. As many hit points as your players have. You have to make the most of the damage your teammates have done. And shots you in the cross. Pred pokes a hole. This is huge. They're into A. It's a two-man stack. Shotzi and Pred are there. Keep the subliners back. Who cares about defense if you can just win it here? Two players on the point. You're flooded into a tough chow. The stuns are great, but the trade for Shotzi even better. The only problem, they just did not have a trophy. An extra tick collected, but two minutes and so much map pressure. Optic, Kenny, right now, slowing it down, waiting for the reinforcements to roll through. Drain the effort. Optic managed to get there on that first hit. Back to square one on A. Huge damage, not enough for the kills. Dash is going to go in for it. Bruce, one down, two That's down, it. three down. All dead. That's the map. Optic are in. Our first part of the Invasion trilogy comes to a close. We're going to a hard point. Who cares about defense when you can play like that? A team that has been running it down on the offensive end on Invasion Optic. They make it happen once again. And both these teams, man, feeling the pressure on the main stage in an elimination match on Sunday. But Kenny, the resolve, just the patience he has in that moment to wait for his teammates. It is a two versus four around the zone. They iron up. They let the spawners come back and get into the mix. Those are the veteran plays there for the new man on Optic Texas. And I know when we take a look at this stats page, Kenny was balling out the entire time as well. Yeah, nearly 5K damage, a titan in that lobby. Kenny, the MVP of Map 3, 11 assists as well on top of 22 kills. The most involved player on the map and making those game-winning plays in the end. I love that sort of duo ship he had with Dashi. Kenny's the first one to get in the mix. He gets so much damage out on Skies, on Venning, and whatever player came in for the child that Dashi knows he can fly. And the gunfights that they can win completely on point. These players are absurd. Absurd. Highlights. We get to see some of that teamwork in effect. Whatever side of the showers, whatever side of the A zone you're hitting, you've got an optic player sliding it. Massive, massive kills from both teams here. I mean, we saw that very strong start from up to Texas. Subliners bounced back brilliantly in their defensive round and nail by it from there. But after that chance, all optic all day. Yeah, they were just making, I mean, their defenses are just too clean. They yeah. set the tone oh. round one with the near perfect round. This is certainly one that got spicy in the final moments, but Brett and Shotzi in effectively a round of S and D. They handle the map perfectly. And then towards the end, you see just the trades on point there from Optic. It was beautiful work, but not just these kills towards the end. This is the moment. It's when Kenny is calming out exactly where the players are, exactly how weak they're going to be. Dashi, we saw the way he was playing on Karachi, too. If he gets a call, he is soaring straight in. And with a beamer like that can be the difference maker. Optic, match point. One map away, and they've booked their trip to the Grand Finals. They've played FaZe once again with the New York Subliners. You've already played FaZe in the tournament, and it was a, a Game 5 banger. We'll see if that happens again. Well, our first part of Invasion Trilogy done. Part 2, Invasion, the return. We'll play Hardpoint next, and if we have to go to Game 5, that's the return of the Invasion, Search and Destroy.
The way this series is going, I mean, the first sub base was not that strong for the New York subliners. Since then, they have managed to pick up pace. They have got things going. But right now, Optic, the respawns are looking great. We'll find out how this goes in a moment. And especially so in the respawns, it felt like just one player from Optic just has that meteoric performance. Pred in the map one, absolutely dominant on sub base in that lobby. I mean, the damage numbers he had, he just stood above the rest. Kenny, the exact same thing in that control, rising to the occasion. Someone on the New York subliners needs to be able to fight back, but I don't on the flip side, maybe just another player to take his turn. Shotzi has been bonkers this entire stage. He hasn't needed to have a pop-off moment yet in this series, but him and Fred together so far, they've just been out of control. You see again, just a little bit extra there from Fred, but a wonderful map as well. It's not often a 1.24 KD gets overshadowed. And that's just this series alone. The series is not over yet. Invasion Hardpoint, we're loading in right now. Subliner's last chance in the tournament to stay alive and get a shot of redemption against FaZe in that grand finals. Optic, same can be said. FaZe have knocked both of these teams down. Who rises up to take it to them? This is going to be an absolute delight. Here we go. Map number four of our elimination finals. And the tension is in the air. Optic can smell the wind. Lean forward in your gaming chairs into the locked in position. Optic nades out and about, straight down the pipe, middle of the map, and you clear out mid, you look towards the wing. Shotzi, the timing, waiting for the door to open. Well, Kismet gonna slam that one shut. The Ooh. response is there from the subliners, picking up every kill, looking to set that tone. What the hell is this opener? It looked great from Optic, but the New York subliners just said, yeah, cool. Everything that happens there, we're gonna deal with it, and we're gonna get the time. I mean, again, on a homework front, these guys have been out of control. That was a perfect opening break. They have already flipped those spawns. Subliners doing everything right for the moment. Now it's just about holding on. 20 seconds left on P1. Optic looking to break it down to get the scrap time. Kenny and squad going to be able to do exactly that. Final 15 seconds to go to them. And keep in mind, Kismet actually spawns out. This is a tough moment, but Shotzi's turning for it. So the comms and awareness are right now on point, but the gunning for Kismet even better. Woo. Players from Optic doing what they can. By the way, Kenny comes off spawn. He's on a five. Straight into it. Six. Maker. He's not over yet. Trophy down. He's got a cruise. It's down on the Renetti. His teammates are there to keep it going. Hard point in the hands now of Optic. Sid may find two, but you have space to work with. Skies gets the third. Kenny now all alone by the dozer. Dude, if you were doubting me when I said he's the most important player on this team, there's a shade of exactly why. A perfect opening break for the subliners off spawn. He comes back and gets a close. Helps it for the breakdown and the kills now from Optic starting to go their way. That's three in the feed in the time now collected. Hyder on the flank picks up three before shots he can get him from spawn. This hard point has been a massacre from both sides and neither team really able to get much out of it. Shotzi driving forward, gets himself a Kismet. Hydra again in the feed. He's on seven and four already. Oh man, Hydra on this hill alone. How many kills did he just get? Five or six just on P2. And you'll take that. The way things were going on this rotation, it could have been out of control, but that is Hydra. exactly what Hydra is. The man has just dominated this kill feed. He's everywhere and everything. All at once. Yeah, you see what I did there, guys? Yeah, there you go. 15 seconds to go on our brand new hardpoint. Over to the showers once again. Optic Texas, so not in it to get the time just yet. Lead change, subliners for now. Sky's trying to keep these boys pinned down. And Predator Shotzi, health regen, back at it. Doesn't seem to matter. Sky's and Hydra once again. Hydra is on a massive spree. Seven. He's got himself streaks, and he's looking for more. Reading the spawn, too. Finally, someone able to shut him down in Optic. They will take advantage of that small mistake. Finally, the back spawns get open. Hydra picks you apart for that amount of time, and yet somehow, after all of that, Optic might might even come away with the lead. That is a ridiculous sequence of events. And we got ourselves a banger right now of a map four. Oh, yeah. Poke your head out and pay the price. That's exactly what's happening right now. The slaying department right now for the subline is working overtime. Shotzi has been spotted on the cross now. He's made his way through it. Pred, though, going to back him on up. And again, this is the park hard point. We know how hard it is to get time on this hard point. 
The streaks it, are certainly going to help, though. Hydra can flatten that whole area. It's also like the fight for these right side spawns. Kismet wants to stay alive, and now Hydra is going to have to get the player out of time, but he's going to need to live. He can't get it done, so that means Palace spawns for the subliners. And Optic right now, it is just about keeping these players at bay. I know it's 30 seconds to go on this old time, but you're trying to set yourself up on the rotation. Actually doesn't want to give him the time, and well, he's on a five. He is not going to let it happen. Started to slowly but surely ah, get things going before being sniped by Hydra. And it's, it's unbelievable gameplay right now. Dare I say we shouldn't look away from this POV because this man is absolutely tearing Optic to pieces. He's not missing a bullet either. The headshots he's collecting are out of control. Kenny having to tuck himself in a deep corner. They got the intel. They know Hydra's behind him, but Hydra completely by his lonesome, stunned out as well. That might be the only way to shut him down. Brilliant work. Sky is once again pressured out towards the point. Gets himself a couple. Open street. No trophies at play yet. He does have one to use. So we're going to dive on into this hard point now under the safety of that trophy system. Hydra pushing the spawns out, making sure the Optic have got no options. And he's reading it too. It's the awkward spawns in the back. Oh! But Hydra is on point. That is kill number Hydra. 20. Whoa. 11 for Sib, 20 for Hydra. This is an absurd performance. And the scoreline. They've only just taken the lead back. This is the French phenom that is playing out of his mind. It is out of control. It's only a 12-point game. But so many of these situations, subliners have been in bad spots, but the bailouts have been insane. Now to the degree where Optic have just been getting spawn trap back gas while subliners collecting all of this time. And you have a couple players on Optic with a slow performance. All four players negative. Shotzi and Pred, the SMG duo, simply cannot match Hydra. Back to P1. Low scoring game. A lot of contest time though, so again, the game clock not necessarily a huge factor yet, but it might be. Kismet now finds himself a five spree. 21 and nine from Hydra. He's trying to have himself a purge game. He can get himself that hill, hill time. But it's absolute mania here on Invasion. Dude, he's just ridiculous. All right, Ken's the only player who feels like that can back him down and well sets up Dashi for a two-piece while he does get traded. Optic looking to go and collect this time. Skies, though, as soon as the hill pops, wants to strike and make his move, times it perfectly, makes the time white just again. This is without question a game that is going to come down to the game clock. Neither team has made it past 100 points, and there's just over two minutes left on it. So long term right now, this has basically just been a massive game of TDM. <laughs> massive game of TDM. I mean, technically, what, the subliners should be winning it, but... Outstanding work. Back up to P2 we go. Just about two minutes on that game clock. We should see a bit of time here, Chance. Yeah, Optic are going to be setting up around the time, waiting for the cruise missile to come through. Here it comes from Ken. But in the meantime, look at the kills. New York subliners jump on it, attack you. The cruise can't get anything, and Optic could not get a single kill. Utility burn, and you are getting nothing on the map. Kiz. A suffocating performance oh. right now from the subliners. Kiz is absolutely shooting. Sib slowing down the reinforcements. Wow, is he slowing him down, putting Pred in a body bag. And they are roaring dead in the comms as well as those spawns flip. Optic, it is the only player out right now is going to be Kenny. Everybody else on spawn, and this might be the most important rotation of the game. Optic desperate to get away, but they are just running into death. A potential another cruise to come through. Kenny right now has to stay alive. He needs his teammates to get in the mix. Showers once again. Subliners would be there. Surrounded by Optic players. So at this point in time, you want to do everything you can to get in that point ASAP. The lead's starting to develop now for New York sitting prettier. Kenny with the kills, into the time. Dude, Kenny has got amongst men right now. He's over there making the play on those late flanks. And well, Sib desperate for a kill, but Optic in the meantime, just happy to collect the time. They could get the gas spawns again. In a moment where you needed Ken to make that hero play, not only does he give you the spawns and give you the time, Kenny shuts down Sib as well. Kenny shutting down Sib. The subline is still with a slight lead, but it is dissipating moment by moment. Let's go for a quick listen in with the New York subliners. I'll get down for the gas. Yeah. He's gonna push up here, okay? Nice, nice, nice. I'll get right, I'll get right, I'll get right, I'll get right. I'm getting left, I'm getting left. I killed one close. Uh, ACD, ACD. ACD, where's Chiz? On top of it, on top of it, Chiz. Chiz, Chiz, Chiz. One more on the left of me. Can I get him? Medic, we're inside. 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 Medic, we're in
There's three right. There's three right, guys. Someone guys on me, yo. I'm gonna There's three right. They're trying to take out one. They got 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 one. We have one left at time. Left at One shot, P2, bro. I need P2. You guys want me to shoot to get us out, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Wait, need P2. Need P2 first. One shot on the right. Yeah, big drop, big drop. Deep river, deep river. Shoot the hectic, shoot the hectic. Knock that one, knock that one. Oh, you shoot it or not? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Come up, come up, come up, come up. Yep. We get. I'm gonna take it. One's broken. I saw it's not broken. I'm gonna shoot it. Big drop, big drop. Shoot, 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 shoot. Just wait. Everyone wait. Are you one? What's my fucking ice cream? Fucking ice cream. One broken. Ice cream. Ice cream broken. I'll kill the guy. I'll kill the guy. Nate time. Nate time. Let's go to the mannequin. Let's go to the mannequin. Broken time mannequin. mannequin. That guy. He stopped broken. I need more time. Time to shot. Top out. Top out. Top blue. Top blue. Shot. Shoes in the other foot. Shoes in the other foot. Optic with a big lead, looking towards the 200 point mark. I mean, this has been an absurd lead that they have built. They have fought tooth and nail to claw themselves back in. They are getting outplayed massively, but have a oh 50 point lead. The gunfights are looking dangerous. And Optic now back in those back ass spawns. A tough moment for sure, but Kenny always the guy trying to get him out. Sky's down, trying to hold him at base. Stun check, lands. 200 points crossed. The final few moments here are going to go towards the New York Subliners. Mid-map, though, that's where we're going next. Third set of hard points. One minute 20 on the game clock. And Subliners are just looking to set themselves up. Get a stronghold here, just a decent chunk of time, and keep that rotation towards Jesus, new. But another team kill coming through the Subliners. They are Damn. feeling the pressure. This guy's doing what we can to get back into the good books of the COD Gods after those two team kills now. Into the hard point for a moment. There we have it. Sip. Another 1v1 you don't want to be a part of. Hard point in the hands of the subliners for now. Kenny stays alive. Dashy cleans mid. Massive time now for Optic. Everybody's worried about Ken, and now you lose the hill, you lose the time, and the spawns in rotation. That much more difficult nightmare situation. Shati, he's by your blue. These players are looking for oh, him, God. and well, they found him with the bullets in their face. You don't want this whatsoever if you're a subliners fan. Pred, he's keeping mid map safe. Sky's gone. The hard point is green once again. 10 seconds remaining here, and for the third time, the subliners are on P2. The gunfight again. Another five spree from Dashi, the only player positive on the team. Hydra, the only player on P2, and Kenny fries him. Rotation guaranteed. Peels him off the dozer. Dashi on a six. He's got a cruise. Hard point, optic, holding it down. Sky's now through the front. Hydra wipes the slate clean. It's an open field for the battle. Kismet as well, shuts down Shotzi, a big moment for New York, but well, when there's one cruise missile for one team, Dashi responds with one of his own. Hydra gone, Dashi with a hard point. Kiz stunned, trying to get the timer, at least the dozer for cover. As Pred's still alive and at large, down and out, 25 to go. And look, they're gonna be able to get all of this scrap time for New York, so the game clock being positive well is gonna be helpful long-term, but that showers rotation, Optic are gonna have three, maybe all four players set up and rotating towards Towards new subliners not being afforded any time to try to break this down. It's the Kenny in that back line. 29 seconds on the game clock. Any moment you stand off of the hard point, the game will come to a close and Optic knock you out the tournament. Subliners trying to fight their way forward. A long journey and not enough time to make it. Check every corner possible. Shot C drives the dagger, twists it. That might be the end. Try to manage the spawns in these moments. Two players out at Palace and shots. You can see the entire cross. Kenny dies out of hill, but the game clock a factor too. Okay, Smith opens a street flying forward. Pred the only man alive in this position, and this is a problem. Pred, though, somehow finds one. Skies brings him down. Hard point, New York. It is 242 on the clock, less than 17 on the game timer. New York subliners. It's going to be forced to new if there's any hope, but I think two kills in the feed. They can win it here. Trying to get it done. Big Bruce sends it. Sky stays alive, but there's too many members of the Optic lineup. This is it. It's done. Desperation as you are going to the grand finals to face phase once again.
no mistake, Kenny is him. He said it in Vanguard, and he should be saying it again. You doubt Kenny at your own peril as Optic have somehow, despite all the work from Hydra. 6,661 damage from the Phenom and 37 kills. You somehow shut down the subliners. Whether it was the game clock or that 250 scoreline, Optic found a way. I mean, that is just an absurd performance through and through. Dashy as well in the kill feed, lighting it up. That was one of Hydra's finest performances early on, an absolute onslaught of a player. So many hills in a row, but Optic, like the Tides, they just kept on fighting a couple key rotations, and they still win the game. I don't know how much they just got outslayed by. I didn't even bother to do the math, but I know the slang wasn't quite there. Dashy might have been the only player that went positive but ended up outplaying them on Invasion, winning both the hard points as well. That is an absolutely electric game. That is a brilliant comeback. A sensational comeback. The second wild one we've seen today on Invasion alone. New York Subliners, you've gone from top 12 to third place. Not a bad situation to be in, but still for your reigning world champs, they're setting their sights on first. What a hard point that was. Map four to a close, and we have now set the stage for our grand finals. And just dash it as that like sort of ironed up anchor player as well. Went on maybe three different five sprees in that game. Got a cruise missile on one of them, but just the ultimate player. If he gets to post up and knows where you're spawning, almost an unstoppable wall to get past. But Optic, there you go. They have done it. Grand finals, here they come. The hard point flowing as well. That is an absolutely absurd game, absurd performance. This is going to be an absurd finish to this tournament. <laughs> what a tournament from day one. Start to finish, Major 2 has been a banger. Arctic fans, we are shoulder to shoulder in this place. It is getting very loud, it's getting hot, and things are getting ready for that grand finals. Well, that was fun. That was a good time. time. That was a fantastic time. This has genuinely been, at least for the top four teams, one of the best tournaments we've had in the CDL. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, a day of non-stop bangers. I need to go take a shower. Chance is going to go to the toilet, and we're going to go to the desk. <laughs> All right. Good luck, Chance. Enjoy, guys. All right. Thank you so much to Miles and Chance. We now have just one more match to go, and it is the rematch, the battle that everyone in this venue has been buzzing about, Optic Texas versus FaZe once again. But first, let's revisit what just happened here with the subliners putting up a good fight. Hydra, one of the best individual performances we've seen all day, but it wasn't enough in that game four. Unfortunately, it just was not enough. Uh, especially, unfortunately, it started with that map number one that should have been closer than it started but New York was just getting out slayed completely the entirety of that map number one they were getting the early rotations but within 10 it was Fred 36 and 20 getting the opening two kills and breaking into those hills every single time man I hope people recognize how special that hard point actually was from Optic Texas. When you talk about the New York subliners, they are dominant at invasion hard points. This is the start of stage two. They beat teams by an average margin of over 100. Optic Texas hunkered down. If you saw that game, you saw New York Spartan Palace, basically the entire map. Right. I'm going to give a lot of credit to Pred. He was hard playing spawns, a majority of that map making huge plays, but majority of the credit has to go to Kenny with the best play of the game gets through blue all the way around sneaks through and breaks p3 one of the hardest hills to break in this game big time players make big time plays man and that's exactly what you needed to get that done he wasn't the only one out looking at the damage you had 6200 laid down by dashy in that game four and it felt like 3000 of it came in the last three minutes absolutely dashy was tired of sitting in that hill he's like kenny you got that and he took over at map number four with 32 kills to his name i feel like it's been a while since we've seen dashy be able to be free on the map and put in damage like that and, and nameless I've been back for a minute, but I haven't seen Dashy hold a trophy. 
how long has it been since he has won a championship on the CDL stage? It has been a very long time. And that's the big, that's the major criticism of Dashi is like, can he get to the finals? Can he win those championships? He is playing up to par. MVP form, best player of that last map. The guy's looking unbelievable. Their only slip so far came in the winner's bracket finals to Atlanta. Let's take a look at our scuff play of the game from Optic once again as they power through to the championships. It's plays like this. You're going up against a great control team. You got to win your attacks, Allie. And this was the point I was making in this pre-match setup is Optic is like the number one attack invasion team, but it has yet to come into fruition throughout the rest of this tournament. They played like four invasions, and finally, when it mattered, they got the offensive win versus New York Subliners, which is even more impressive because they're the number one control defensive team. So, New York, so Optic Texas was finally able to get one of their own. Yeah, you know, they just had this map in a series. They've been grinding it, trying to become dominant at it. And once again, you're going up against New York. It's no easy feat. You see the rotation over through Cafe. They get a player in front of the point, and they just play extremely patient until the rest of the team can pinch through and come in with the reinforcements. And that is what you need, communication to slow down, basically figure out, communicate where New York's going to be at, and then execute the push. Obviously, when you have special players like Dash, you can win gunfights like that. You're going to find success on the point. Nameless, you just won your loser's bracket final. You're playing for the championship match. Do you need a break? Do you take 15, 20 minutes off? Or are you trying to get back on that stage as fast as possible? I'm trying to get back butts in seats and lock the hell in, because we are shooting straight. That's what I would be telling my teammates. And I'd be looking around. I'd be looking at Kenny specifically like, man, you really showing up in these championship matches. This is exactly why they picked up a guy like Kenny, because they folded so many times in this spot before. Not today. Ali, a ridiculous weekend we've had here in Miami, we had a top four squad that were way ahead of the rest of the competition, it looked like, coming in. It kind of came true, right? Those were the four teams remaining here on Championship Sunday. But if they're just joining us, what other great battles did you see along the way? I mean, we saw some great stuff out of the Carolina Royal Ravens, one of those teams on the outer bubble of the top eight, making a little bit of a run, beating the Vegas Legion and the home team of Miami Heretics. And we also got to see some special stuff from the Vegas Legion. LAG making it to top six once again. Credit to fame and crew, but it's the subliners. It's all about Toronto Ultra, Optic, and Atlanta, and only two Two of them remain when we come back. It's Optic, it's phase for the title of Miami Champions. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in game in the Call of Duty store. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now.
Before. What do you think of my shirt today? Uh, it, it is a choice. It's a choice. Listen, guys, I put this shirt on. I felt pretty, I felt pretty sexy, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and thought, God, God, God damn. And then I got into the green room and everyone said, your shirt's too tight, you look like an idiot. And I was it's like, just a little too small, but it, it works. Whichever bomb site they choose to go to, 30 seconds on the clock and... Behind enemy lines. He's getting loose move. early every round. Like, yeah. oh, 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 do a little dance. Make a little love. Get down there. Who's dead tonight? Back him up. Make it all the plays. It's Grim Six. Such a fantastic spot. We'll find one. Looks over towards top three. We'll dip out as well. 3v3, J. Snoopy and Cop. Trying to find something. Capsule will find another, though. He's been an absolute menace over towards the market side. Snoopy lingering around the middle of the map, but Capsule has just locked it down from the market side. They need to get rid of him with a 15 seconds to go. He cooks the nade. And that's three for Capsule. Snoopy's fading out. The ace is on the cards. The ace and the map is there for Capsule and Boston. For, right champs is solidified now it's about getting that championship we know how that momentum can get you the ring and look at that trophy what's it's that the best in that's Call of history right there we did pretty good in black ops too i think that thing is better let's take a look though at the cash right. that picking up zig if you watch the white arrow start to funnel out simp and rc's have that crossfire it's a lot for simp to deal with and he is dealing with it four and oh start just sensational <laughs> Yeah, he gets get stuck. He, yeah, yeah. That, that was directly to his forehead, I think. Yeah, Toronto Ultra trying to get water side. You know, flip spawns for the second hill. We're going to head towards the left side of your mini map, dude. Over towards the kitchen. All right, oh, but at least okay. they're sticking was that, was that deja vu? It's like four in a row. Will, 25 seconds left. Now, there could be a timing here if they rotate off of this. They might, but RC's just watching the cross. Wow! The headshot. RC's absolutely deleted. Now the shoulder in the spot. Yeah, they spotted him. They spotted him. Oh, my God! Envoy to make the play, or maybe with the stuns coming through. See, he's scum backing up the hell of a mouth, but he strikes, gets the first blood, and for the moment, he gets away. Oh, he's got another kill! No way! Envoy is on one right now. He, he's he's got to be so happy. He finally doesn't have to worry about You're like a, getting first blood in round 11 on his team. You're like a adamantium oh, werewolf. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He couldn't get out, but he can do front flips. Look at him. Oh, Daddy's hungry! Oh my god! Riley takes him out, but oh, he dog, it. it's dog on dog right there! No. <laughs> that was the most intense round of SD that I've ever casted in my damn life. The best he might. Or the Not gonna happen. They get the plant down safely. I like the trigger discipline here for oh my sweet Jebediah. He's gonna yell for it. Oh. Try to catch the timing. Oh. Tries to ah. catch it. It's done! He sticks it! The rookie! Balls of steel! One clean break, one set of kills there. Afro sneaks in and steals the victory. Share your life. They actually went for the challenges and gave us an opportunity, which is just something I hate seeing. And oh, what the hell was that? Got That's gun, the best bro. gun in the game. <laughs> that is the best gun in the game. That's some laughs during this match, Maven. I'm going to openly just ask, who will be the worst player we see in the All-Star game today? The worst player from all of these teams? Oh, this is hard, man. It's the All-Stars. Oh, I got to think about this. 
It's going to be Octane. It's you think gonna, it's going to be Octane? Yeah, he's, uh, he he's, was a beast. So he was number two well, overall S and D yeah, KD. Yeah, yes, he has. But guess what? Octane's had one good event since like 2016. I'm going with Nameless just because he can probably hear me right now. <laughs> he's going to choke big time. <laughs> And see if decided to be a little bit of a body shooter recently during the split. Nameless, what does it mean when you shoot a body? When shooting bodies early. It's absolute disrespect. He's basically telling you you're trash. Don't even try to chow me, brother. And he's been doing that throughout this entire stage. See if the hero left alone, but can't do it. And sell. <laughs> Smoke out, gets it for on one. Down to a one versus one. And rip and sell. That makes the plays. Oh, there's the extra sauce. The only thing more disrespectful than shooting bodies is hitting on your opponent's mother, and I don't think that's happening tonight. But we may see some more bodies get riddled with bullets, Alley Cow. We got Selam going up against Pred. How's this going to play out? Chris, are you hitting on people's mothers at this event? Single moms, but I'm married. I'm a married man nowadays. <laughs> uh, Nameless, let's, let's talk about this matchup. We're in Miami, all right? Everyone, let's go down here. Let's talk about this matchup that we have in store for us. It's the grand finals of an epic bracket. Our top seeds powered through to the winner's semis. We saw this matchup in the winner final. FaZe taking down Optic for a third time on land, trying to make it fourth for their title here in Miami. Listen, you know these two teams, they have a storied past. They played in a lot of grand finals, but as of late, they haven't. So back in 2022 at Major 1, these guys faced off against each other. FaZe destroyed them 5-2. to two. Skump was still on the team back then, so they're trying to get revenge here in the grand final. It's been a tough couple years for Optic, but they find themselves with a real opportunity. Allie, these these guys are already riding in limos, they're dripped out in jewelry, but they're playing for some serious money. You gotta pay for this lifestyle somehow. How much money is up for grabs in this fight? 150000 is up for grabs, but you know what, Chris? It's not even about the money. You know, forget that. It's for the pride and the points for the world championship at the very end of the season. And Optic sitting outside, they don't have that first seed right now, but with this win, they could probably take it. And we got to celebrate not just the players that are earning the big cash with Ultra and Subliners taking home 30,000 and 60,000 respectively. We got Carolina in LAG with their yeah. performance on land this weekend. We can ignore their struggles online. They are still in contention after banking some more points. You know, Chris, Ali, we thought we had a clear cut top six coming into this event. We thought it was going to be Vegas. We thought LA Thieves. Yep. And then there was a huge drop off, especially with the performance of Ravens towards the end of the split. They lost to Heretics. They got cooked. Well, they come here, man, and they completely outperform themselves. Like, you come, you're come, you talking about a 3-2 over the Legion, and then they get that match win over the Heretics, the revenge match from online. So, for Royal Ravens, once they get into a facility and they're able to be next to each other and grow that chemistry and continuously grind, they can be a force in our league. We saw it here. We went out with Clayster and, of course, Felony after their match last night. Name was they weren't in the best mood, but they also yeah. weren't too disappointed. They said, we've got a decent squad, and we're starting to figure things out. Out. Fellow is the team mom, Koyser is the team dad, and the whole family starting to get things on the same track. So where does TJ stand? Because he's been around for a really long, ta long time as well. But the adopted Carolina son. Ravens. Adopted son? Yeah, I like yeah, this. I like an adopted son. I, I heard that they are actually moving to Carolina after this event, so we might see them all in the same environment for the next set of qualifiers sooner rather than later. And this duo specifically has been playing for quite some time. And that's why when they did go to play their first match on this weekend, I expected the Carolina Royal Ravens to take it. 37 grand finals for Clayster, six for Sheesh. Fellow, and they're hoping with the new location they can make it seven. We talked to Fellow with our crew, the breaking point guys behind the scenes. Here's what he had to say. What's the biggest di difference for you guys between online and land? We know you guys have struggled in the qualifiers, but here you guys look like a different team. What's the biggest difference for you personally and the team overall? So a lot of people at home maybe don't understand the magnitude of how important it is to like for everyone to be in the same space together. Um, it really depends on the teammates and kind of the personalities. But with our specific team, obviously me and Clay are the latter two. Tej and Isaiah, Gwen might be a little bit more reserved. So when we're all in the same space, everyone's talking, everyone's saying what's going wrong, what's going right. Uh, we're formulating new breaks, coming up with new, just a whole bunch of new stuff. And when we're at home, your day-to-day -day practice can sometimes just fall off when right. you're not all together. So. Uh, after this event, we're moving all down to North Carolina together, Let's and we're going to have a place together. So I'm excited to just keep going up. Shout out to the Royal Ravens. They improve on their terrible record coming in and now find themselves in the middle of the pack points-wise, yeah. leading into champs with three more majors to go.
we got plenty of time for this team to reach its potential. Absolutely. We raised the amount of points that you get on LAN as well. So even though they had a rough online split, if they come to LAN and keep placing like this, they can certainly keep themselves in the run. Another squad that we got to show love to goes by the name of Los Angeles Gorillas. That's right. The purple squad that entered the tournament with the 12th seed powered into back-to-back -back top six finishes on LAN. Fame and crew coming in with a plan. They said, we need to win two matches today. That's how they started their tournament. They got big wins over LA Thieves and then Minnesota before eventually falling to Toronto. Yeah, you know, LA Thieves a lot would consider a top six team. They pushed face the limit all the way to a game five. So headed into that match, I'm like, all oh, Thieves are going to wipe the floor with LAG. That is not the case. Diamond Con once again playing on a consistent level when you get him into a land environment. And Estrio starting to hit his stride. They came in as the worst control team by a landslide. Come in, win their first two controls. Search and destroy. When it's all said and done at the end of stage two, they're a top four S and E team so that we've good. had. They're so good at it. So for LAG, massive improvement. I'm curious if they keep this roster. I'm curious as well. I think my favorite part about LAG this weekend certainly was seeing what Estriel was capable of because there was flashes during the online split That's where crazy. we could see what Diamond Con was capable of. We saw moments from Fame as well where he would take over maps on his own. But I feel like Estriel really stepped into his own after playing on that main stage, not only in the response, but as well in the search and destroy. What is that grab? 16 and 36 online? I, I didn't want to say anything, Gorillas. Let's ignore <laughs> their animals, literally. Full of failures and focus on the positive. They won some matches here this weekend, and they're going to take yeah. home some money because of it. Other squads, though, are leaving empty-handed, including the local squad, the Miami Heretics, bombing out of the event just like they did at Major 1. Zero map wins for Miami on land. Yeah, I mean, Miami, they've been not great, honestly. Uh, the, you know, they've had a couple iterations of this roster. The only one they did have success with, they changed it because they did not win a map on land. Well, guess what? The same thing happened here. So I think you got to look at another change, man. I know they have a, you know, two real on their bench, maybe potentially figure that out, get him over here, uh, or Real, excuse me. And then also the Span Spanish team got top four in challenges. Yeah. There are players to look at to make changes. At this point, I think it's due for the Miami Heretics, but nevertheless, you want to root for these guys. They're so exciting to watch when they get going. If you're looking for one star piece on the current roster, is there anyone that you're looking at GMs and saying, you got to keep this? Absolutely. Uh, v. Cole, uh, he has been extremely consistent for the squad. Even when they're losing, he's been an IGL. He's been a leader. And he's been on this Florida squad for a couple of years now. Uh, I think he was probably the shining light in their Minnesota series. Uh, he was taking over a couple of maps. Unfortunately, though, they just weren't able to close any out. Here's a look at the numbers. 0-2 at Major 1. 0-2 at Major 2 after sneaking into the winner's bracket once again. 0-12 map count total. It's the worst in the league. That's the team right. that's right behind them, though, LA Thieves. And I think that's a bit of a shocker for a lot of us that have been working on the production and seeing LA Thieves, especially in the qualifiers this stage, Allie. These are probably the two teams that we are talking about and possibly could be some roster changes as we head into the next stage because for LA Thieves, they were able to put together a couple of match wins and we thought maybe they had finally hit their stride but unfortunately, even after changing half their roster and coming to land, they weren't able to make the run that maybe all of us had kind of put them on a pedestal for. You know what? They were good, though, throughout the they stage. They were good. They really were. I mean, they took Atlanta Face all the way to a game five. I personally believe they should have won that series. They threw all trying to hit through Dark on Invasion. A story for another day. Go back to your Thieves fan and cry. But listen, for the LA Thieves, I think they're one change away. I, I, yeah. I think Afro has been really off lately. I think you, you look to him first if he's unwilling to sort of change the way that he plays, sometimes selfish at times, and just been underperforming. So they have Joe, Joe Deceives on the bench. He's been fantastic in challengers. Might be time to bring him back in. Cammy's been lighting it up as well. Here's a look at the numbers for the LA Thieves. 0-3 on land despite a 6-8 and record online the squad has not been able to find success when in the same room as their opponent yeah and it's been in the response uh, the slaying this hasn't been there you can see in the team KD it somehow got worse but the reason they got better when it comes to those map counts is simply because they're search and destroy you can see it 10 and 7 they got way way better at the games two and fives but there's still a short step of respawn away whether or not they've been winning or losing I think all of our players have felt the love here in Miami we want to show some love to the awesome fans staying overnight I saw somebody with the Marriott blank 
blanket and rope this morning. <laughs> These fellows are rowdy, especially those who run to that front row as soon as we open the doors. Man, I was wiping the crust out of my eyes, walking in the venue this morning. I'm like, all right, another day at Cod. And then everybody was lined up to the venue. They just started screaming. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're here. We're in Miami. It's a good time. <laughs> it's a very good time. I did the same thing. And me and Chris walked in. I had my glasses on, my headset on. I was like, it's too early for this. I look, and I see a line wrapping the building on the inside. People have been outside since like 5 a.m. this morning wanting to get in the front of this venue. Oh, We've had some incredible music artists as well as pro athletes stopping by the venue as well. Much love to Sauce Gardner, Raheem, and everyone else who made their way to Major 2. Remember, this is just the beginning. This is 2 of 5. And coming up next, we're going back to my favorite venue. It's in Toronto. The crowd is rowdy, and we are going on sale March 26th. So make sure you grab them as soon as you can to secure your spot there in May. And update your passports, because you don't yes. want to try and get tickets for this and then try to cross the border and get turned away. I Not speaking from experience. Man, what's I got great news. What's, what's going Maven on? and Merck just got up in their booth. That means the games are almost ready. <laughs> Let's take a look at your maps and modes, Alley Cat. Who has the edge as we go into our grand finals? We extend to a best of seven. First win four maps takes home the $150,000 and the title of Miami champ. Uh, respectfully, we have to play almost every single map, and both these teams have an extremely deep map pool. I am happy to see that invasion control number three again, because Optic is going to test their luck with trying to win that offense. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's interesting that Optic have just started to veto Rio Hardpoint. I thought it was a map that they've been very good at. Maybe yeah. they try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Atlanta Phase, but you see Atlanta Phase, their auto veto in sub-base forced them to play Karachi once again against Optic. They've been dangerous there, but so have Phase, and you saw it was a 13-point game. This is going all the way, Chris. Going all the way, this Game 7? Uh, just looking at this, the back and forth, this is going all the way to Invasion. Miami, make some noise. Let us know where you're going with your scuff pick em as we lock ours in officially here on the stage. Nameless, you have an opportunity to hit 80 before major three qualifiers. Can you do it right now? Who are you picking? Optic Texas. They're going to fix their issues. They were leading in some of those hard points. They're coming off of two match wins. I think they get it done. I have to hit a little bit of rewind here. I don't know if you guys remember last year. Every time I'd pick Optic, they'd lose, and then I'd pick against them, and they would win. Um, it's happening again. It's happened to me this weekend, so I'm going to pick Atlanta Phase. I wanted to be the only one to pick Atlanta Phase, <laughs> but you just did it. And I've been wrong on Optic all day, and an Optic member came up and said, do not pick Optic in the grand final. That's so I'm going to go ahead and say, it's Atlanta Faze walking home with your major two title. Ladies and gentlemen here in Miami, please get on your feet and make some noise because the grand finals starts right now. one more time. Are you ready to get this started? Coming to the stage first. Call of Duty fans, get ready to phase up because Atlanta is ready to throw down. I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Go for one, go for three, go for three. I want to take light, look into my eyes. Oh my I'm goodness, I'm so coming for the prize. Do you really want these problems? I put you in that coffin. But I'm never tossing. You put this in and stop it. Hungry for the beef, leave you obsolete. See my lines deep, see me in the streets. So if you want the heat, yeah.
You could love him or you could hate him, but you're going to make some noise for Atlanta fans. We got Celium, Seth, Abizi, and Draza. Atlanta fans about to get it done. Atlanta fans finds himself in another grand final, a spell of second places. It's almost felt like a curse, but they're here again. The last time Atlanta Fays played Optic Texas in a grand final was March of 2022. This is going to be special. Let's bring out Optic Texas. It's going to be so special, and it's time to bring out the next squad looking to build that dynasty brick by brick. Get ready for Optic. You hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent hands down, vibes so unique. Show some love to Optic Texas. We got Dashi. They've been on the back foot, and all that revenge has been simmering until now. We got one more match in Miami. Let's go, Blaze. One more match in Miami, Alley, and I can't wait to get it started. Miami, are you ready to go? Give a warm welcome to your casters. It's Merck and Maven. Thank you, Blaze. Here we go for the 11th time in the history of our eSport. Optic and Phase go to war overall. 6-4, the advantage to Optic in these grand finals. I can't wait, man. So many storied moments. Well, we casted it once already here today, and it was godlike. Yeah, shout out to Brian for, uh, you know, the stat right yeah. there. Obviously, going through that history, but yeah, they are... I mean, this is this is what they wanted, right? Both teams phase trying to change the narrative, trying to win. This is what they do. They get to this point, but they have been stopped time and time again on the opposite end, trying to find a four man roster that can make you competitive on championship Sundays. You have the four now. I mean, yeah, for phase, I mean, the average placement, one of the most impressive statistics you have in the history of our esport, but you're also the silver surfers at this point. You can't close on Sunday. Now a chance to do it with the top three or many you'd already beat sublanders you already beat optic you know you can do it optic obviously has been playing for a long stretch now there's two sides to that coin do you come in hot do you run out of gas we'll have to wait to see how it plays out but as the lights dim the party gets started here in miami it is grand finals time map loading up but i think we are in for a treat Joe, I know you've been enjoying some sensational Call of Duty. Talk me through the pregame before we get started. Yeah, Monster Energy pregame here for Optic Texas. I believe in the hard point. Listen, they were 250 to 237, two losses to ATL, but five in one versus everyone else. Let's get it going. Last time we played, a BZ goes God mode. It's a 13 point victory, but that's a distant pass now. All that matters. Is this grand final, this best of seven. Fred from the top rope, looking to get it going, not quite able to finish the next. Yeah, nice start here by FaZe. Shotzi doing what he does, getting to that P1 area. Able to finesse play his life now, just kind of lurking right now. Uh, last time you watched this a couple hours ago, uh, really what it was, it was a phase out to a nice lead, but then Optic with some big breaks, had that P5 hold, Woo. took over the game. But then it was just a clutch. It was a clutch on the back half of the game from a BZ from Simp 8. We're just unreal the second half of that game. 
Well, Shotzi tried to battle around this B2, looking to make the plays, trying to bounce and bounce, not quite able to take the fight. It's Raza that gets in. Pred through with the trade. Three through back alley on rotation for FaZe, looking to set up and now secure this time. Through Ticket comes the wave that is Optic Texas as they look to collapse on this, but it's Shots in behind from Simp. The opener to slow it down. The finesse from him around boss that last game was unbelievable. The multi-kills were flowing. That's all four down. It starts with two from Sim. I mean, that is a great setup there by Opti to break that. Really, you have bus control. You have Pred in that position. But Simp able to sneak on through from Red Balcony. And he just throws his stun. Has a couple of kills. And now, push it forward. Ooh. Simp with five. And a triple to get us started. They flip the spawns for P3. Phase right back to where they started. I mean, it was multi-kills in big plays from Sim, too. I mean, Beezy had his moments in that 250-237 win, but Simp was right there with him. The five in the row, we'll see if it can turn into a streak. Abizi reaching deep into his bag yet again, back in an unbelievable form. Simp just trying to stay up to try to get this streak. Nade over the top, beautiful Nade, but nice job avoiding it and getting the kill. Cruise through for Sim. And now remember, last time on Jirachi, Tenny was really the guy, the standout player, especially in the playing category. But starting off 0 in 6, had a great series versus New York. Can he turn this around? But right now, it is all Atlanta phase. Eight in a row for Sim. Make it nine. The tiny terrors going off. Yeah. Nine in a row for Abizia that last matchup. Simp's like, I can do better. Looking for double digits. And there it is. Ten in a row. In a grand final. He won't slow down. Up to 11. It's a godly effort. 12. Keeps going. Another 13. The streak just won't stop. The flow state is in. Simp erupting on the main stage. One of the best at talents in Call of Duty history. He keeps it up in another final. A 90-point lead for Atlanta Phase. Still, this is, could be a seven-map series. A lot to go. Kenny finally on the board. But 13 in a row is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, you can say that, Joe. That's one way to word it. But yeah, massive advantage. Can you start to swing back into this? Can you rebound? The resilience of Optic has been so strong throughout the qualifying stage. But right back to Sam, 14 and 3. Nice little snap to get some shots in, even though he had no chance to win that fight. Cell, <laughs> 4 and 2, he's hanging out. Yeah, but maybe a good chance here for Optic. This is where you need to get back in the game. Is this P5? It looks like Shotzi. Shotzi was spotted, though. It looks like Simp was locking that down. He gives a call out to his teammate. Shotzi was trying to get to a spot to flip the spawns. But a nice heads up play to find him, not allow him to get through. And this is kind of what we saw at the end of the winner's final, locking them in on the left side of your minimap to get set up for P5. Absolutely. She's one of those hard points you can clear somebody out of with relative ease, make sure they don't get time while also retaining spawns. And you, you do some work there. As good as it was from Simp early, I mean, Draz is right there with them, but let's take a look at the minimap now as the next hard point pops. You have an opportunity now to get through. Good finesse from Cell. Looks like to stay alive and try to buy time for some help. He's able to do just that. Still a chance, still numbers there for Optic in a big moment, a much needed moment to try to get back into this. Uh, yeah, you kind of just overstep if you were Atlanta phase. They were a little bit too far pushed forward. You had one guy greedy. around to P5. What ends up happening, you actually split spawn, so Optic gets a good spawn, but a cruise earned by Simp is in. Get a land on the headache, Teddy. But the next line of defense is here. It's Dashy on the hill, able to find one now, waiting for his teammates. Kenny with that deep push through. Set up to stop it. Some great time here. Now a one-on-one -on -one it's going to come down to with a healthy chunk of time. 15 seconds left to go. Abizi makes the play, gets back into the point. Now a two-on-two -on, -two on the other side of the map, developing bottom left. Joe, what are you seeing as we get ready for our second set of rotations? Yeah, I mean, a, a nice a break there behind the Drews from phase. At least split some of that time up. Keep that 80-point lead. But this could be a very strong hold here for Optic. Okay. Sim knows you have to get this player off the bridge. Does just that. But you have Shotzi set up. Couple of players looking over him. He's just going to be hanging out. All the kills starting to go the way of the green wall. Yeah, I mean, you have a, a massively slow start from Kenny. You have insane streak from Sim. You survive it. Like, yes, you're down, but you survive it. You're still in this game. You know you can make that same kind of rally and run. Now it's Optic's turn to throw the next punch. Try to get back in control of this game. Some healthy time here at mid-map as Dashy and the boys continue to try and lock it down. Number six, Shotzi rotated across for that upcoming P2. 
chance here to swing this if you're opting. I mean, you were 0-9 if you were 10. Now up to 10 and 15. Another five spree trying to find a cruise. So much time earned here. Not a full 60, but pretty darn Ooh. close. But Simp through the middle of the map. He's going to find a double and a big time double because on rotation, you have Cell and a BZ set up at P2. That's going to make this push a slow very start here for Optic, but they are here. The first kill over to Shotzi on the Simp. Now the break attempt in. Oh, you're right. As much as that spree was incredible, too, there. You stop them getting a cruise. You give yourself a much better chance here to fight at P2, but you still have a chance. Two on two now around the point. You get numbers odds if you're Atlanta phase. You look to push it out. Dashi's going to drop once again. Phase do it. Yeah, no, it's not just phase. It's the tiny terrors. Two from Simp, two from Abizi, a four, four dead moment. For Optic Texas, you slow down if you are draws, trying to get a trophy out. But 30 seconds left. You have P3 control on rotation if you are Optic. Shotzi, going to be the man on the right side of your mini-map. He's going to control P1, and you get in here. You will take this 20 spawn Atlanta phase all the way out left. Yeah, I mean, this is where you want them. Exactly what you need to do to, once again, stay in this game despite some rough moments at times. Resilience is key, but the multi-kills keep flowing for Sim. You see the lock on the minimap. Next hard point is upcoming. You've got the right side of the map covered. You got to make a run now if you're Optic. You got to make a run now to listen in with Optic Gaming. You can only go middle. You said it? No, no. Go for it. I got one. I have it. I'm in. She is middle. I got it. I ran away. I'm all left. Are you? Nothing right, nothing right. We're back in the game, bro. Top third, top third, top third. Hold on the right. I'm going to leave you on the right. Top third, top third. Yeah, top third. Top third, 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 top I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm one shot. I'm trying to set left. I'm making him away. I'm making him away. They can go front. They can go front. All right, I'm front of them. We're going to stop three. Top 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 I'm hoping to find the coop. I have third. Thank you, go found it here. I'll play the coop. I'll see the coop. Tippy garage, man. Garage, garage. Tippy garage. Okay, nice. One on old. Sip it. Sip it. I got a bump machine again. Nice. I'm on old. I'm on old. I'm leaving. 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 I'm on old. I'm he doesn't go mid. Sim, but oh, dead! Back left, back left, back left. 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 We're trying to go one HP. They're into us. We're trying to go two, 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 two. They're playing through it. I'm going, to, I'm going left to help right now. Big fuck, they're running through it. Yo, what's top three? Top three, eight. He's gonna get there. He's gonna get there. I can't get back. He went top three. He went low. I'm trying to pick it up. I'm going for new. Try to get top. I'm for new. I'm for new. AP got P3. AP got P3. I'm going to go. Down 50, hanging on his optic Texas and looking to rally here at the upcoming hard point. Big one on one. Maybe gonna start to go down. It's Sim starting to push forward to the next point, waiting for teammates to rally. Pride looking for the angle in from behind. The fight so far going the way of Optic Texas. Synth though does get to the point and clear one out. How long can he finesse? How long can he stay up? Pred should be able to deal with it, and he does. You make the run, can he get some time? Already, what, 30 seconds off of this? Yeah, I mean, I, this, you, you kind of heard it. We're back in here, boys, says Pred towards that P3, and they very much are, but FaZe have done a, a great job at making this messy. You had the spawns if you were Optic. 25 nice. seconds, you get a clean hold, and with that 25, you are very much within striking distance. Here we go. It'll be, what, 15-point game once he get this time, so you soak that up if you're Kenny. The rest of the fight's going on around mid-map to get ready for our next set of rotations. Kind of all over the map. You got, like, every quadrant here if you're Optic Texas. They can pounce from just about anywhere. Spreading it out, same thing can be said for Atlanta Phase. You get the kill at old, so you take care of the top side of the map. You start to collapse if you're Phase. Sliding into Shotzi as the movement is on. Forder over him, lands behind one, keeps on rolling as he starts to take over. Down 18. And this is where they found so much time last time we were here. Oh, Simto with another double. He's up to 30 on the hill, though, is Kenny. 
He's got the help of Fred. Here comes the pressure for FaZe, though. The break attempt, and they're able to get in. I'm pretty sure that's the third time there's been a player on five in a row for Optic Texas, and Simp has got the kill. He stopped them from getting a cruise, which may or may not have been a big play. They've fallen just a little bit short, but in the scoreline, still here, still battling. It's Pred. Starting to rotate over, Draza, he's going to be there first with a big kill. Help from back alley is going to come in the form of Sim. You get this time if you're Texas, you're basically looking at a tie game, but you die inside the point, you die on rotation. Two spawn out, two junk. Here we go. Yeah, but these are big kills. A nice opening for Dashi. Last time through, Optic were able to okay, split this okay. hill, maybe when majority of it. You did a nice close spawn for Simp. Abizi's going to have to jump over the dumpster. Here comes Dashi. Fred the next man up, able to find one. Trades going the way of FaZe for now. Stuns are out, nades are out. FaZe know they need to hold. A pretty good job here considering it's a three on four, at least for a moment since one player was out. Back into the point they go. Desperate times now for Optic Texas. You're sitting at 199. You're getting so close for the phase side. A BZ starting to dance. The tiny tears popping off. 10 points away from victory. Trying to push out the cuts. Alleviate the pressure here, but both are going to drop. Dashi able to get two. They clear them out of the point. Looking to survive. At least to maybe see another hard point here, Joe. Yeah, I mean, you could, right? What do you want to do here if you are phase? 15 seconds left. They need five. On rotation, it will one -on -one. be Optic. A Shotzi trying to do what he can, dancing what he does best. Look at your minimap, number eight, uh -oh. that's Dashi. We're going to a P3. Uh-oh, uh -oh. here we go. You get another two seconds from that, but in the point and a chance to win it there will be Optic Texas. Everybody tracking back, trying to set up the pressure on phase now to break. One break and this is done. The green wall. He's got to hold strong as the routes come in. It's Simp with the opener. He's on 34, 4v3. Now you win it on the bottom, you win it on the top. It's a tiny tears with a pinch, and just like that, wipe him off the board, FaZe. Up 1-0. And it's the break attempt, and who finds the two opening kills? It's Simp on to Pred. That has all the focus from Optic over towards Coop side. Abizi then able to find a Tommy on the player junk. Instead of four on two, they're able to win it. But it's the tiny tears throughout this map that lead the way for Atlanta phase. Yeah, it's like old school phase. Like, uh, yes. I mean, how many times when the break came in, we I mean, think one time I said phase do it, you're like, no, the tiny tears do it. They got all four. If it wasn't all four, it was at least an entry or two to get them in. Yes, you were ahead most of the game. Yes, you were ahead on rotation a lot, but when you needed to be clutch, when you needed to get a break, it was the tiny tears doing it. Shout out to Kenny, who really yeah. bounced back. I mean, he was 0-9, and he puts up almost 6K damage. So he really rallied back, gave them a chance in that. But it's another – wait, so you've lost three hard points now, and it's like 50 total points. I mean, whew. I mean, honestly, props off to, to bounce back oh, the way that they did. I yeah. mean, they give up a 13 spree by Simp. You were down 100. You heard it in the comm, sort of, hey, we could do this. This is where we get back into the game. But that's a couple of times now where FaZe, they have these crazy starts and then they allow their opponents back to the hard point. It gets scary, but they're able to close it out. As much as I'm sure as an Optic fan, sometimes it's frustrating, like the, the starts where you're in the holes. Like, that's what's been different about this team than some in the past, though. Whether it's within a map, their ability to rally back, whether it's in a series down 0-2 when they can rally back, they've been incredibly resilient. You just love to not be down 100 at the beginning of the game because it plays out a whole hell of a lot differently, but Simp was just putting on a show throughout the course of that. Just shredding their setups apart at times. Yeah, that's where it got scary, though. Towards that second P2, that's when Optic were able to break in. They get the rotation over to P3. And they just pretty much kept control of the right side of your map. Putting FaZe in a very difficult position. They're able to hang on. But uh, honestly, what Optic does so well on this map, compared to FaZe at least, is their P1s. Uh, like, their P1s, I, yeah, they really know how to cash in on a lot of time. And that brought them back into that map. It absolutely did, but I think, yeah, when you had to answer sometimes in the P2, you were able to. I mean, you get a good P1, then you break if you're optic, and that's when you start to unravel things. But for the most part, you're able to stabilize if you were phased. But, yeah, I mean, as good as a win and as good of a start as it was for phase, props to optic on making that an absolute battle. So I thought as close as you had, know, what, 250 to 237 in both hard points in the first set. Like, I'm thinking, all right, here's our first blow off. Like, it looked like it was going to be, but... Should have known better in this particular matchup. That not going to be the case. So there's the game flow, the breakdown from our first one. And yeah, I mean, really, once like 
if it's not for the beginning of the game, that 105 to 111, it, they played pretty 50 50 from there forward. No, they did. I mean, after, yeah, we're right there with them. But it's a, a phase break that starts with Simp and Abizi, and that's where they end the game. That's where they'll seal it. Now we get ready to go to Terminal, which was also in <laughs> our last series. That one goes all the way down to... I don't know how many 1v1s this had. Uh, four or five. I mean, it had so many. The Terminal was a banger. So many sensational moments throughout the course of that one. I think able to win it in the round 11 in case you missed that winner's bracket final. So since you just listen, I, respawn and search are a little bit different in how maybe you react and make changes on the fly, I mean, on the fly, like not in the map, but like when it was a couple hours ago. Yeah. If you played that search for both teams, are there any like, I don't know, big adjustments you're trying to make going into this next one? Well, it kind of just depends how FaZe really want to play top SEs on defense. That's the one that stands out to me. Optic were, fan were great on their offenses, okay. right? They only played a two-man game top SEs. Now, if you're FaZe, do you kind of overload early? Kind of allow two players to play book and flank? That will be the question mark for me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, two rounds, it felt like Shotzi was like solo taking top SK. He's like, I know it's two of them, but like he was just like, la di da di da, like Walt stuff with all the confidence in the world. See if maybe you make an adjustment to deal with that, but uh, let's take a look at our Monster Energy pregame here for Atlanta Face. Yeah, 21 to 9, record above 500 on all maps. That map pool very deep. Second at attack, a first on a defense. They have been so darn good in SD. Grand finals continuing on, map two now. The terminal, search and destroy. Simpa not quite having the vertical he wants, and that's going to lead to a death. Shotzi able to get the first blood. Draza at least gets one, but three on two quickly. Can they isolate Dashi? Dashi trying to get away. The help is coming through on the plane side to try and get him out. Dashi for now gets out, and he gets a kill. Great work there from Dash. Yeah, I thought he was going to get isolated, but he's able to play his life. He gets some help from Kenny. They know where a BZ is. And this is one of those rounds where they really switched up the pace inside of A, sometimes going slow, sometimes just hitting it. And you saw it that round. Catches Simp and Draza off guard. Now a 1v3 for Abizi. Well, Simp's trying to like jump onto the railing, just can't quite get there. And then things unravel from there. You strike quickly. Well, think about it, right? Optic. When you're starting to work that bomb site, what normally happens? You get it across the jet bridge. You shoot the fire extinguisher. You're throwing some shoulders, some nades. They don't do any of that. As soon as they cross, Simp gets maybe a calm. They just fly. They go. And he gets picked apart. Very little hesitation and a lot of their hits on offense, as we saw in that last best of five. I hey, keep it going here. He's now face try to work it on offense from their side. Spread all across looking for an opening pick, but bombs starting to develop over towards A. Low man in isolation for now will be Shotzi. Can you see him? Sure kind of looks like he yeah. I see you. Nice yeah, shots. he's going to find the first one. I thought Predator was going to drop on the backside, but he drops second story. They're able to find that first blood. Now. Taking control of A. Rotating across will be Kenny. It's trying to get there with help. You can get a line of sight as well, I think, from top AC if you're dashy, but it's Shotzi. That has been lurking. Looks like Draza trying to find it. Maybe. Is it busy to check this? So many rows. Hello! It's got a rival. Get south for now, 8 HP and a dream. Can't quite get away. Selium's got the angle and Simp wins that rotation fight. I mean, what? It's, it's sort of first round, it's him kind of getting caught. <laughs> this time, Fred gets spotted and caught, and all the executions kind of come after that. Yeah, maybe if, if Shotzi has a rival, or sorry, an MCW in that spot, maybe he finds two, turns into a two on two. But during that gunfight, Kenny gets picked. So it was a great play. Not able to get out with his life was Shotzi. But as you said, the first blood, just too important in that round. I imagine a little bit different here with the setup over towards A if you are Atlanta phase, but it's gonna be towards B, kind of that two-man game. A little different though. It's trying to cut across, maybe get the trade. It's gonna be Shotzi, the trade is through though fast. It's two versus two, BZ trying to back down. Pred taking some shots. Things slow down for just a moment, but Simp, do they know there's two here? Do they know there's two here? Answer is no. Now to a 1v1, so many earlier. Another one here. He's looking right, and he's left round of Texas. And that is just a bang out top SCs, right? Just right through the middle hallway, Joe Shotzi able to get things going. 
It's just in the two on two. It's all about the trades and Kenny was ready for the next gunfight. Big Ken, he has been on this uh, stage time and time again. It's a great slide and reposition because like it's just a timing and angle thing there for a BC. Like you don't want to get caught sprinting. You kind of have to ADS up for the gunfight. Just doesn't get eyes on the reposition from Kenny. Three straight for Ken. Two on two throw, three on two, but that slows down because knee to the face. I mean, in the last one, we saw a similar thing where it led to two kills for Optic Texas. This time, not the same result. Yeah, Cell puts down another trophy. Uh, yeah, a little late again. <laughs> so he, he's like, well, he doesn't want to need it again. They yeah, know maybe yeah. he's still there, so he's able to play his life. So first 30 seconds off the board, lots of needs, lots of stuns out of hand. What do FaZe want to do with this one? For now, just looking for maybe an opener, trying to catch Pred again. Can't do it. Now to Shotzi, where Simp was trying to get in round one. It couldn't quite get there, but as he gets spotted, he's got to reposition. Pred once again peaks. Draza was holding it the entire time. And Pred will get blooded again. Dash again, bringing it back. Kenny with the absolute laser. Five straight now for Kenny as he gets closer to a streak. Simp, 1v3. 30 on the clock, drops down low and nearly snaps. <laughs> that was way closer gun by that I thought it was going to be, but Kenny gets him the round. Yeah, so after Pred gets picked, he saw the wall bang. We've seen plenty of them this week, but Abizi able to spot Shotzi on the ledge. The YY comes in from Shotzi, able to reconnect. But basically what happens is maybe you're like, hey, we may need help over here. So what do Kenny and Dash do? They just get aggressive up towards Burger. They win those gunfights. They leave Simp all alone. Great reaction there from the two ARs from Optic Texas. Five straight for Kenny. Close to the cruise. A little bit different defensive setup this time from Atlanta oh, phase. The needs will hit. And again, a five spree gone. Couldn't get him in the respawn. Can't quite get it here. First blood to Atlanta phase. Team showing out. Nice nades there from Atlanta Phase. Now what does Shotzi want to do? He just gets so much info playing these positions at times. He's got to be careful. He does have bomb. But he's trying to make the play. Simp though going to read it. Bomb down. Pred now trying to follow this up. Dashi goes for the peak. Simp's got the read, but Pred is there. You trade out the first. Dashi scrambling away as he was a bullet due to Simp's shots. BZ hoping maybe to get the kill on the cross, but he got back to full HP if you are dash. But 1v3 now. Just over 30 to go. Bomb down outside plane. Yeah, bomb is just I down in such a tough spot. Draws it just got eyes. Yeah, I would assume that they're going to have an idea on where it is at, but just watching the cross is a BZ and sell. Woo! Dash, you don't. Great shots. 20 seconds. Time dwindling. Has to go for it at some point. Draws has still been set up. Nice tags in, but you got one in front, one to the right. No real opportunity with time dwindling, and you hold on. If you're phased, you get a round win. You keep this close. I mean, similar to what Optic were kind of doing in that map one, like doing just enough to stay in the game and get a chance to strike. You keep it within a round if you are phased. Yeah, obviously, you lose that first blood. It puts them in a tough spot. Shotzi's thinking, I got to make a play somewhere, find an opening. I mean, there's a choice to always drop the bomb, but like if he does find a timing, maybe he can wrap that back to B. But once he goes down, I mean, there's just not much he can do. Yeah, I mean, a couple of their rounds for success in offense was quick plants that put the pressure on a phase. We'll see if they can do that. It's an aggressive defense. Oh aggressive gosh. defense to Kenny. Give me a triple. What are we seeing on the stage today with these nades? Uh oh, uh oh, I'm gonna say if he loses that, things get interesting, but Pred able to finish it. It's Kenny, it's Optic with the nade, it's all laughs at <laughs> Kenny on the main stage. The team nade comes through. Kenny's gonna get credit. We're gonna take a look at the replay as well. There it is from Optic, and uh, unfortunately for FaZe, you have three players inside the bookstore. Yeah, that's a read. <laughs> That bookstore is uh, a little bloody now. Uh, <laughs> just torched is Atlanta phase. Great answer. Quick round for Optic Texas. But yeah, no, this, between the wall bank spots, the nade setups, 
It has been a wild one. Now it's not even champs time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Draws it with the first blood. You got nine and three out of Kenny so far. Slow start to map one since then. Been popping off. But these early first bloods from FaZe. Yeah, it's keeping them in the game. And Shotzi, he gets caught. So we saw those books nades. So what's happening is normally there's a player who's watching mid hall, but FaZe, they've been throwing two nades. So Shotzi, the one time, able to just hit B without a smoke. He just hit it. That top SG's play. Tries to go for it again, but this time it gets caught. Now, what can Simp and Draws do as this starts to build up? A BZ will be to get an angle to help once he heals back up. They try to go before he can. And their mode down to bits. Pull out the lawnmower, ran right through him. Around to phase. Nice two man setup. A Simp, a very patient. But he starts to hear the steps. The team shot is in. Draza does a take down his teammates. Yeah, I, I was going to say, that's a really good job to kind of paint a picture of the bullets around Semp there, right? Just how often is there a team kill there? All the time. But again, the first blood so impactful between these two. Similar to the terminal search. We're going to watch it one more time. It's similar to uh, the winner's bracket. It's very back and forth affair. Looking to be headed to that round 11, but more work to do. Trophy keeping people up. Nice shots from Draws. Another first blood for him as Kenny gets picked, and now it's four in a row for Draws. I think they know where Pred is. Yeah, the nade is in. He's still alive. Uh oh, smoke, smoke down, down no. Smoke down, so he's okay for now. And you do have a two man setup here if you are Optic. That's where FaZe is going. So you're still very much in this round. From the cockpit. Shotzi ready to strike, but unfortunately he just lost his teammate. Will they be ready for him as he's lurking? Has he been spotted? Not yet. They're shouldering to let up in front. Trying to finesse and get away. He's dancing. He's still up. Oh my god, another bullet, and maybe he does it. He's made this doable though for Pred. Your two players are very separated, but Cell are gonna read the flank. And now a simp. Trying to reposition a watch. His teammate bomb now rotating over to B. I think I just tore my rotator cuff reacting to that play, Joe. I'm all right. <laughs> Fred, see if he can do it. He's going to have to get the kills, get the defuse. Opposite side sight. Now the rotation across 40 to go. Yeah, at least able to find an MCW. So yeah, he's got both true. guns to work with. But I don't know if you're going to be ready for this angle. He Sim does spotted. spot him. You see the red arrow start to maneuver. Ready for this play is yeah. Selium. And there we go. All tied up at four. I mean, if he can somehow get across that being spotted, maybe different. But yeah, sell on a heady. Holding the angle, good luck. 4-4 four, four now. A great first blood from Draws. A nearly uh, just insanity. <laughs> They're out of Shotzi. Another bullet or two, and that might be one of the more spectacular three pieces you've ever seen, but just a little bit short, and we're all square now at 4-4. Four, four. I mean, they were trying to bait him out, right? With all those shoulders, he hears the steps, but stays very patient. Almost made the play, does Shotzi. Canopta get a first blood. Feels like it's been a while since they've had one. Nade through Book. Maybe this two-man game we saw earlier up towards Eskies. It's going to be Dashy and Shotzi. And Teddy's going to find the first blood. So a little bit different this round. Sal, so, this is that same gunfight we saw earlier. Well, not so much anymore. Dashy positions, gets the fight this time. I thought it was going to be that same lower fight where Sal got the headshot. But not this time around. Pred with another one player up. It's Sim's turn to try and clutch up in a crazy scenario. But now he's in a world of hurt, shot from every angle, match point. To I, optic to tie us up. And that's just going back to what worked earlier, right? I mean, it's a two-man setup here. Phase do not adjust. There's still two players on the flank watching that pinch. So what FaZe have to do if they want to retake that is just sort of four-man from bottom SCs, but they aren't. They're still very spread and, well, getting first-blooded does not help them. Yeah, because then Cell feels like he has to make a play and he gets caught. They're just throwing a smoke and taking ground. Like it is phenomenal aggression. They're out of optic. Can they close it out here? Or is it one of 75 round 11s over the course this weekend? Here we go. Pride with the info. And now the reposition. Simp once again will be the lone man kind of watching that rotation across for now. We'll see. As FaZe start to build this up, can Pred be the one that rips this apart? Yeah, watch Kenny and Dash here on your mini-map. See if they get aggressive through the flank. They've done it before. It's going to happen this time. Adraza starting to work on up. A man for, who lives for these moments. 
Shotzi back in his spot. Actually, he's actually down low. No, I thought he was. Yeah, no, you're two down low. I'm like, this dude, this plane push is terrifying. Like, they can just be anywhere. Shotzi with the timing. Oh, no! It's okay. He just repositions. He's out, he's out with his life. Bomb net yet planted so much info over to Optic. Oh, a little more trigger discipline. Maybe you get a pick there. But you're so deep in security. If you're simp, you're kind of out of the play because everyone's kind of cutting this across mid map, and I don't know that you've got a line of sight well, on this. He might have a one v one to pounce, to attack, you drop, draw, sell, get kills. Simp now rotated to get in the action. It's on Shotzi and Dashy. Shotzi trying to get away with sub 50 HP. He will drop one player left. It's Dashy, and what do you know? It's not around 11 yet. Not yet, but it's looking that way. They're yeah. hunting him down. <laughs> And man, that trigger discipline, it's like he waited, he waited, yeah. and then he starts to shoot. That's why I was like, oh no, you're like, oh, he got away. I'm like, yeah, but like, he, he, he holds that a little longer. You might get one or two. It's, it's always tough, though. It's always yeah. tough. Tough spot for Shotzi, because before that, he's, well, he's been great in that position. And you know that angle. It's not usually a fast hit. They shoulder 20 times. Try, you know, you want to check cockpit. You want to get whatever info you can. So it's tough. It is a tough position, but another round 11 on terminal. Last time, Optic Texas able to take it. Can they do it again here? Okay, so it looks like they might do that two-man game up top Essies, but it's kind of a fake if they threw the smoke because Bomb going over towards A. There is the smoke down from Shotzi. You have three players over there if you are faced. So you have what you want if you're Optic. It's time to plant this bomb. Simp gonna get the info. Just trying to stay up as the boys start to rally across and help. Trying to pick up the deep push through will be Dashy. Trying to keep eyes on both the mid and the deep lane. A BZ outside on boxes. Looking for the attack. The bomb now starting to get planted here. Four on four retake. Around 11 madness. Here we go. Cell Dashy watching the flank, very patient on both sides. 35 seconds, 7.5 to defuse. 30 to go. Info, spot, Shotzi wins it, Abizi trades it. Kenny has to worry about both sides. 25 to go, time dwindling. Celsius Dashy, Celsius Dashy. Now they're gonna start to cross, start to work this area, but Dashy able to win it, Sim now. The last player alive. Not a lot of time, and Dashy goes huge for Optic. We are all tied up. Another round 11 ice from Optic Texas. Ties us up 1-1. Hey, maybe not all the 1v1 dramatics of the match of the winner's bracket final, but plenty of amazing moments. The triple from Kenny with the nade. Spectacular. Some of the first bloods you got up your phase, you were finding opening picks, but Kind of a very different round, that round 11. Nothing we had seen throughout the course of that map was just a kind of a four on four retake. And it could be so hard inside the play. Uh, I mean, you got the adjustment for phase, right? You're like, okay, let's send three top SCs. They do just that, the smoke is there. Maybe they're thinking that that opens up the plane play for Optic. Gets a little bit dicey. Sim throws that nade. He's hoping some wall bangs come in on somebody crossing. Maybe he finds a kill. Does not happen. Just well, trying to find Dashy on the pinch, but he plays his life to perfection, wins both gunfights. I mean, if we're thinking about the two-man game and the SK pushes and how they're going to deal with it, they're thinking about that too and thinking maybe you go to their bread and butter. It's like the perfect setup and fake, and it works out beautifully. Plant in with four people up. This is how our series looks right now, a 26-point hard point around 11. We're live from Miami. It's Major 2 here for the 2024 season of the Call of Duty League, and it has been nothing but insanity. We're tied up, Joe. We keep going on. Yeah, we got ourselves a marathon here. It's not a sprint. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely true. What an answer there from Optic. These teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in every mode. Where will the edge come? Who will be the first of four in this best of seven? It's the two most storied franchises in the history of our eSport. Coming up next, the series will continue on the battle of Optic Phase back after the break. Upgrade your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with...
with the Scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Major two in Miami. There's alligators. Tall, handsome, bald man in action. And it's called an eSport like you've never seen before. It's grand finals time. It's optic phase. Two biggest franchises in the land. And it was a war in the winner's bracket final. They look to keep it going now. There was a very long rock, paper, scissors battle. Yeah, I was, going I was on. wondering, I was like, what's going on with Blaze in the crowd? Is, is it Blaze? I, I don't know if it ever finished. I think it's there, still going on. It's still, still going. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of ties. <laughs> so long map three is loading. The crowd is locked in on that. It's over with. Oh, wow. That was, that was impressive. That stuff. was a battle. I guess so, yeah, because that was several minutes of rock, paper, scissors between two people. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, intense party games uh, here as well. Close games, in game and out of Everywhere. Game. Doesn't matter what the game is. It's a barn burner. And map three, time to lock it in. Face Optic right back in to control on Invasion. And Joe, take me through, Lisa, if people that maybe missed that winner's bracket final, what was the big separator there? Yeah, Face just able to win uh, an uh, attacking round, similar to what we just saw from Optic in our losers final versus New York. They were able to win that. That wins, uh, puts them in a great spot. We'll see if Optic can hold on. Maybe they can win an offensive round this time through. Yeah, I mean, a spectacular control team on the attack. Finding some nice success here early on. Just taking a little bit of a life advantage, getting to four positions that allows you to work on the point. Probably trying to pinch him, but Simp with another multi-kill. How many has he had? 
through these matches, just been terrific in the response. Slows well, that, it down for now. That's a gamble, right? If you're going to push forward on B, try to play a little aggressive if you're the attacking team, leave one on it. What ends up happening is the defense tries to find a timing to get you off of it and leave those players on the right side of your minimap, and that's exactly what happened. Simp able to find a double, then they hunt down Shotzi. Now they can retake B with numbers. That is three dead, one more in Pred, all four down for Optic Texas. Yeah, started all right for them, but uh, things unravel here a bit. Now all spawning up. Pals, what do you opt to do? 40 seconds to go. Two ticks of progress because like they never finished it the first time, but so much was left. It just took a moment to get it done. But they're just looking for some opening gunfight wins to maybe start to get the map open. But it's Simp that was taken down two before he drops. Cell looks to pick up that same A Street push and shuts it down. So maybe you're hoping for an opening, get a body onto A and spread the defense then. Doesn't work out for now. Well, really what you're trying to do is find one kill and then show some presence towards A and then just cut it back to B. That's what we've been seeing our teams doing. And that's what's going to happen. So you have the presence of Fred. That keeps Selium very honest in the middle of the map. They're able to find the one player, and just with three seconds, able to get on the B point. Yeah, they've got a nice stack on it, so that should finish quickly. It does. Now you have 60 seconds to go, but the crossfire setup is here. You get all the bodies just to send them right back, pack into Palace. A BZ, Simp, all the kills, the tiny tears have been going off in this. Now you get back to step one, you try to break through the street. Find openings, you're just not gonna have a lot of time. You have 12 lives up, 45 seconds to go. I think I've got to be perfect. And well, Sell, he's on four in a row, but Dashi able to spot him, so no streak in play. Now over to Abizi, he's on three. Does have one player in front of him, that's gonna be Fred. Able to just play his life. The rest of Optic, they'll pretty much cut down middle of the map, but Dashi, he's gonna get to his teammate. Maybe they can work something through blue. Just staying alive right now and backing up if you're Abizi. This is your chance. 15 seconds to go. You got a pounce. Kenny, able to get a pair. Abizi trying to play Disruptor. The Tiny Tears again, finding the kills when they need to to slow down this push. Five to go. Pred backed up, tagged up, traded out, and dropped. Nobody close enough now. You hold on, and hey, they was shooting the, the laundry there. No bodies yet. That'll be Cell. Guy's a freak. No, I think Draza was definitely doing that, but... Uh, to your point, I mean, a very standard at defense there. So I think you're happy. You get the B point. He just missed, though. Like, well, it, it, it moved away. Yeah, yeah, wow. but you got to shoot the body or it's not shooting bodies, you know? Well, you ran out of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you get the three ticks, so I think you're happy if you're optic. And on the side of face, you're able to lock that down and not give up any more. There was a chance where optic maybe was looking at only, only two, but they were able to get that B point. And Shotzi, who's been so, so good, mostly has been kept kind of pedestrian. Verse phase, but a nice open here. As the nades pop off for Pred, Kenny involved in that too. You get three down quickly, allows you to get some map position, get to some of your spots. Sell the one guy that stayed up. How many can he take down before he falls? Gets two, and now with a closer spawn out towards A, they try to send it that side. How many kills can you get? Can you maybe get across to the point? Draws is trying to. I don't know how you maybe win that one. I don't know how you're actually alive, but it's Kenny that shuts it down for now under a minute to go. Yeah, the problem now is, again, you send a couple of more players over towards A. Optic were ready for that. Fred on that tank, just cutting him down, but you had Shotzi all the way pushed up ice cream. He is taken out, and Simp finds two to get them up the street. Yeah, it's just a moment where you need some kills. It's Simp and it'd be easy there again. Often on Invasion, I felt like it was, you know, really, we talked about selling draws, like the ARs, how good they were at those picks, but so far, it's been the Tiny Terrors that have been the influencers more often than not. Second bit of progress through, looking for the minute extension that'll be here shortly. Dashy snaps, but Simp wins the fight. Now we'll see how these next moments work. Right as you finish the point, you get a wave of kills, so it allows you to push this optic defense back. What are you seeing so far, Joe? Well, I think that Shotzi right popping Deddy, so uh, you're going to hear that if you're Sim, so he keeps it going. You have the life advantage. Almost able to snap. On the other side, Kenny, he was able to win the one versus one against Cell near that A bridge, so no pressure on that side of the map. His three teammates know that they can hunt down the rest of phase. That slow start from Shotzi leads to well, some big kills here. Backside is making sure things aren't as open for Atlanta phase as they try to erupt onto this A point, but they've kept the presence here towards mid map, kept them on their toes. If you're Optic Texas, multiple coming off the of spawn now. 
allowing phase players to get back into this, start to layer the map, start to push this through. Another big moment upcoming, Joe. Yeah, this is exactly what you want if you're phase and nobody A street, everybody pretty much in the base for Optic, but 45 seconds, Cell's gonna find the first as he starts to work the pinch. But the tight setup still holding strong Dashy. for Optic. Nice trades going down yeah. and a big re-snap out of Ken because Cell, he was hitting shots, but down to six HP was Kenny. Now at 30 seconds, we would be tied up in ticks. And Dashy didn't get traded out. The fact that he took down two there from A was was brilliant. And behind that, what shots he's got all the way. Bridge side, three are going to drop. Shots he's going to be the last guy. He gets smoked. He has 18. This might be everybody dead. Now you're flooding across. Oh, two players stun. might be able to get there. You're on the point. 13.8 seconds down to go. Second player able to get in it. Draws trying to get shots to run the cross. The nade is going to hit. Optic players dropping. Dashy trying to make plays. A BZ back it up. It can't hit it. It's Dashy again with a double. It's Dashy with a triple. But there's still a body here. Sip gets two. He's still up. Third is in, it's Kinney who survives it for now. You do get one tick of progress though. And draws is still here and fighting. A BZ here and fighting. You have the players, the numbers if you're Texas. And if there's a little more time, you only have four lives, but there isn't. You skirt by maybe. <laughs> yeah, nice recovery from Optic. Great stuns. Uh, I mean, you had no trophy on the point. So the nades were, were able to hit. Kenny able to find the stun as they were crossing to the point. That slows things up. That slows up progress. That allows him to work those picks. But yeah, it, it's a little bit scary because you go three down shots. He's all the way a bridge. He ends up dying. But you had just enough. Well, the push before that, Dash, he got two. That push on the retake, he's able to get three. I know the stats don't look super uh, pretty, maybe on the Optic Texas side. But when you needed the kills, you found him. Shotzi still trying to get something going. Four on the board for him, but the fact is it's tied up 1-1, but you do have the advantage in the ticks if you are Atlanta phase. And now we haven't seen this in a while, sort of an A break off from both of these teams. Really from anyone in the league, it feels like we kind of moved away from that. Teams know how to handle it. But a chance here for Optic, some early A progress. No trophy though, he throws it, a back does Pred. But Cell Sim draws all here, able to find the picks. Kenny now trying to give his team some room to work with. He finds three! Kenny with a triple. Now trying to move over to A. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I mean, great retake from FaZe, it's clean, but then Kenny does Kenny like stuff. 16 to 13 from him, gets them back onto the point. B is going to be wide open just due to that constant pressure over towards A. So what do you do now? Do you just set up your, if your phase and try to hold the transition and cross? Well, it really just comes down to how many players are going to have this if you're Optic. Only one right now. Now it's two. So I think that pretty much says the phase. We can retake this. And there's the first pick and the second. They know they have to take nice advantage. Shots. But Kenny is just locked in. He had a bad start to map one. Map two goes, what, double digits, drops 11. Now leading the way in control. Ah. Another double for Big Ten. Oh, harnessing his inner Sam LaRue as he is beaming at range right now. Four in a row for him. Mid-map wide open, a chance to get some progress over towards A, but it draws a pick and the continued struggles. Maybe a shot, he slow it down, at least for the time being. You got a lot of time to work with. He got 90 seconds. You're not pinned by any stretch of the imagination. This is all about how you execute, Joe. Yeah, life advantage as well. Very pushed up and Pred maybe with a timing here. Does he get spotted? I don't think so. Cell's kind of playing an off angle. Ooh, Almost gets ooh. smoked, but able to reconnect onto the head. Shotzi now trying to get on the eight point. Doesn't happen. Draws. draws up with two. It's Kenny on one side, draws on the other. That old duo both having their moments. Yeah, yeah, draws and Kenny. Uh, former teammates just love battling. You know they're having a blast. Under 60 now. As you got to take your time trying to get staggered but these picks. I mean, Sip is just finding kill after kill kind of when it's on the four on four and all it does is just delay it bit by bit as you got longer to go. From a map position standpoint, if you're optic, Trying to push up this A street. You have two players here. Gonna be Preds able to win one. Kenny gets his as well. Oh, Kenny will drop nade. though. The nade hits and takes him out. So any kind of support kind of disappears. He got all four up for phase. Yeah, even when you hit the first two picks, I think it was Drazi in a, in a BZ able to find two middle of the map from some different angles. 
Maybe a chance if Ken doesn't get nated by yeah. Simp, but it, but it yeah. happens. You at least get on A. You can see the tick count, four to six. So, Optic, if they want that round, round five defense, as of now, they cannot give up the B point. And now, a Simp six in a row, our first cruise of invasion control. He has been going off 23 and 15, six in a row into the next round phase. Now up two to one. And Optic will try to make it a adjustments. FaZe will be doing the same, trying to close it out on an offense. It was the one offensive round win that was the difference the last time they played this. FaZe a chance to shut it down, maybe behind that streak. I mean, that's what it was last time, right? That's what got the win. That, that missile comes in, then caught Kenny on the cross trying to get the A, and they closed it out there. Yeah, able, able to get that A point. Well, but that put them up 2-1. True, true. But yeah, that, that was the difference. But, yeah. that, yeah, that but even right moment. now, right, you're up one take. You only need the B point to secure a round five defense. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe Optic get very aggressive this time. Try to put them in that palace spawn trap. Try to get them in the good old invasion blender. Draza, an opener. First tick should be a wrapping. Kenny fists of fury there, man. But Fred will finish him off as he was weak. They're trying to get for you, get aggressive. Look at seven and eight, Fred and Dashy. Trying to isolate Selium, maybe get him tucked. But if you've got one guy that can fight his way out of a situation like that, it's Cell. Gets a kill onto Dash. He finds the timing. He's going to know one is there, but what about Pred? It looks like they're still trying to find Pred. Pred might get some good timing. Sip. He's still up on seven in a row, but they get his teammates off a B. So, yes, playing very aggressive, just kind of hunting on both sides. Who can recover out of this situation? Simp, he's ready to take any gunfight. Thinking about transitioning over to A was phase. Shotzi still at B. He loses the gunfight, though, to a BZ. And look at this. You just sneak on through. For now, if you are Simp, I think Kenny get a spot him. And now you got to make some decisions. They're on both points. How do you want to play this? How does the split break down? To flying towards it quickly. You deal with Simp real fast, but it takes that pressure off of B. You stop the clock at 49 seconds. You slowly start to milk this. And now you add the minute on. Remember, there we go. Defense the still secured. There. Yeah, defense secured, though, for FaZe. They get the three ticks at B. So they will have that round five. But can they win it here? Nice forward position here for Draws. On the other side of the map is that one-on-one -on -one that always goes down. This time it's Shotzi versus Simp. Shotzi able to come out on top. So Draws just has to hang out back here, see what he can find. Yeah, kind of buying time for now. He is on an island, that's for sure. And you keep staggering this due to a kill from Kenny. Draws, uh, I wasn't sure if it was the best timing or the worst. It doesn't end up working out, or does it? Nice little finesse. Fancy footwork there out of Draza with 9 HP as he stays up. And now the help, I was about to say maybe there, but some kills through for Optic Texas. is still battling, though, but still kind of by himself unless Cell can win his fight. Okay, now you're on this point. Kenny, though, able to earn a cruise. He's watching the reinforcements for FaZe uh, with Shotzi. So they're pushed up a street. What can Shotzi find? He's able to find Simp on the point now. Comes a retake. Trophy taken care of. Nice stun from Dashi. Renetti out, but the crossfire is there. Trying now it's all about the wall base. I mean, Draws has been alive for so long, but the retake is in. You get one tick here. They already had defense guaranteed, but maybe that'll help towards finishing this if they get a chance to do it. Still the streak to go. Well, on either side, right? Yeah, Ken able to find one. And now maybe Shotzi gets another one. He will, so two okay. cruises to work with if you are Optic. He's hey, still got to hold here, though. Hopefully hold both cruises, and maybe you can make something miraculous happen. Deep bridge, pocket is Kenny looking to get shots in. Both players rip, so that'll slow down for a moment. 15 now to go, still two people with a presence over towards Zay. One more chance to throw some lives at this, but Dashy staggers it. Kenny maybe closes it. Looking like round five, no one close enough. All right, you hold on, you get two streaks. Like, that's about, I mean, as good as it gets in the sense, well, okay, as good as it gets would have been, you, you locked him in enough that you got defense, but at least if you don't get that, you, you get some streaks, right? Like you get some extra utility. Yeah, just not the easiest hard to map. Use. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, the easiest yeah, map, yeah. but you know, you can combo it. Maybe if you die over towards A, can help your teammates out, find some players on the cross. But here we go. We know these final rounds can always be a little bit different. Optic last time on offense tried to hit A quickly. I'm sure discussing what they want to do. 
in a perfect world, it's similar to what happened with FaZe. Like, they're pushing towards A, the player that drops is the one with the streak. You win a couple of fights to the other side, and you're able to call it in perfectly to kill someone on the cross. Like, that's your ideal world, but will that end up being the case? Sim still has his, so three on the map right now. Trying to work A in mid early on. Thought Kenny may be trying to find an opening for now, but is trying to take this fight for herself. Should be a double child here in a moment, but he's somehow still up. They're going right through the middle of the map. It's off They want to try to find a timing to get on to A. But FaZe are ready for it for now. Shotzi <laughs> able to win his gunfight. And what a little turnaround here from Shotzi. He's up to 21. He was really struggling early. Yeah. But got going. Last round through. Selling a BZ though. Aggressive. Up to B Street, draws down a full flank. Did he get spotted by Shotzi? I don't think so. Not ready for that, but a quick trade. Yeah, I mean, that was like deja vu. He has a situation just like that where he's able to snap back and get the second. This time, timing a little bit different. B, just one portion of this done. Simp maybe looking for the opener, not going to find anything. One streak of the three into the fray. Abizi will drop, alleviate some of that pressure from the B side, Pred balls it up as well. Second bit done and slowly moving on. Lives wise, stay just about even. Nothing too much to talk about there. 43 on the clock as well. Minute added on now. Here we go, round five, minute 40 to work with. The tough part now for Optic Texas to get the win, you gotta get A. Yeah, and the point man right now is Shotzi. You see all the red arrows trying to hunt him down. They know how pivotal it is to find that player, Simp. Over towards Palace, the first kill here for Optic. Here we go, trying to get uh -oh. to A. That's okay. two dead for FaZe. A very close spawn. Okay. But you have two players on this. Do you have some trophies? I'm not seeing any of this. So the stuns are going to hurt. Simp desperately calling in the crews. Draza on the pinch, and they deal with it for now. They deal with it. You mean, you mean Draza deals with it. Draza kills all four. He gets the first two. He gets the last two. All streaks have now been used. So now you just got to get it done with the gunny. The first opportunity was there. Draza said, no, sir. He's on 31. We've seen him being the absolute invasion blender this weekend at times, but not one of those maps. Kenny on the other end of it, 35 up for him. But you're running out of time. You're running out of hits and opportunities to execute here on A. Will it be a slip up from FaZe or a massive moment here from Texas? It's all about this info again, One. first skill for Optic. Can they pause the clock? They have a life advantage. Simp now inside a cafe. A close laundry spawn. Optic okay. winning the gunfights, okay. but a BZ the last man. And there we go, three dead. Oh Sorry, my. four dead, three alive for Optic. Three on it. Oh my God, Trophy here we down. go. They got the stack, second tick is done. Faze trying to go, it's moving so quickly. Can they get in and contest? They're soaring through. It's just about done, the contest is in. Shotzi kills everybody in front of him, but Faze are able to get in. Just barely get in, one team kill hurts, but my God, it's close. Still time, still time for Optic seconds. to get there. Kenny with another one, four lives remaining for Faze. They you got, have one last chance if you're Optic. Got Kenny the point man, here we go. Gotta hold with no response. They're holding for now. They win one, nobody left. Faze, hold with no response remaining. It's another crazy finish here on Invasion. And there you can see just both sides, the battle that this match has been. Both teams bringing the best of the best to Miami. And the difference is just that one tick over towards A for FaZe secures the round five defense. And it gets very scary. And I think Abizi ends up spawning like laundry with this team, which leads to a kill. You still had three up if you were Optic. But if you're able to have a four stack, that might be done. Yeah, and the whole sequence with the streaks too, like what well, you got two or three kills if you were Optic. It forces a streak out of Sam, but it draws it that gets two. You use your next streak, I think if you're Optic, but the same moment draws it kills an another two. He puts up almost 6,000 damage. The big map there from Draws. Kenny and Draws just going back and forth. Almost 7,000 out of Kenny. It's just not quite enough. And that's more of your kind of typical invasion. Comes down to the defenses.
got a little close there, though. No, yeah, it did. Yeah, 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 no. <laughs> It certainly did. I mean, I'd have to watch back how that situation went down entirely on the point because it was just everybody threw bodies in the paint and there's just shots everywhere. I, there was, I know there was one team kill in there, but I think he got two other shots he did. And yeah, he really started to pull it back within that map. But the advantage of defense, you can get there a whole lot quicker. The reinforcements can come. You just have to be a bit more efficient on the kills if you're gonna have a chance to finish it there. Yeah, I think both sides had some chances over towards A. Phase on one end, they get shut down. Then Optic throughout that last round time and time again. You kind of saw Phase. They, they were pretty much turtled up a, a lot of the times. You had really nobody be street cutting off the reinforcements. And this was kind of that end play. Draza goes big. He's able to find two. There's the flank with the crews in, this, in, in, you know, in the air. Yeah, because Shotzi dies, so he's hoping to kind of say what we talked about, right? Just reinforce from the sky with the cruiser, help his teammates out. But Draza able to get through. Yeah, I, I think that, that was it. It's just, I, I get the game plan. Like if that if Draza doesn't get two, if he dies there and the streak maybe finds one, sure, you might be able to go for it. Close out the map right then and there. They have a couple opportunities, but Draza who, uh, listen, I, the reason we thought he was such a great addition to this team, it felt like at times with all the second places for FaZe, Maybe the confidence wasn't there. They needed a strong personality, I think, at times at these moments. And that's why you got big draws, laying down the hammer, making some clutch plays. But now we get ready for the, the main thing that's different from our first best of five, right? Instead of having an invasion hardpoint, it'll be Skid Row. Take me through how you feel about this one for both sides. Uh, I mean, this is sort of a, an optic staple, right? From the beginning of the year. So good on this map. Obviously, it changes up a, a little bit, but team's still a little wary to, to play them on it. Uh, I think for face, I mean, they don't really, neither of these teams really have a weak hard point. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see who's funny on that good side, bad side. You know, you can have these big point swings. We saw Shotzi with an incredible play at P2 yesterday versus Ultra. Other than facing sub base, they're not playing that yet. <laughs> yeah, not played sub base, so. <laughs> That's a switch up from the best of five last time. Yeah, no invasion, this time Skid Row. It's the same map five. We just didn't get there in that Rio search. True, true. And, you know, Shotzi started stepping up in that one. I mean, listen, you you think back to, like, a skid brawl. Shotzi would maybe the play of the tournament at that P2, one of the most memorable moments from this weekend. But we keep saying it because the Tiny Tears have been back to vintage Tiny Tears. They've been terrific this weekend, especially Saturday and Sunday. The map one stats out of them back and forth, just like two tiny hammers. Yeah, both with the 30 bombs. Gonna be a little bit different here on Skid Row, you would think. Obviously, you have those rivals going crazy on Karachi. Skid Row a little bit different, but as I said, seven and two overall on the season for Optic, three and two for FaZe, so not when they play too often. And you can see FaZe because Optic picked it starting on that strong side. Yeah, uh, for a long time, I think, yeah, I mean, FaZe were playing, willing to play sub base, and then finally they're like, no. So guess, yeah, you're gonna have to play some Skid Row, especially when it comes down to a best of seven, but you gotta think, at three and two, and you know how they like to work on stuff, maybe pull something out of the hat late. Maybe this is it, but you need a win here to tie it up with your Optic Texas map four now in the Miami Grand Final here at Major Two. Because you got to watch a couple of things here early on. You want to get whatever time you can to P1, but the all important P2 underway. Because we'll see who's first to rotate, who's first to clutch. Is it's at least kills for Atlanta phase early, and that might let number four. Head out, it will be. Draws a pick it up tunnel. Yeah, he's gonna have a couple of players to deal with though. So time going to phase, the stun connects, and now phase had to deal with this. Shotzi already in position, has the help again. Right through the middle of the garage, and you take this if you are optic. You're gonna give up a good amount of time here at P1, but you see number eight, he is hanging out. That is Dashy's new home. And that's just your your draws, you're hoping you can get to like a power spot or a good angle. You maybe have a one-on-one, -on -one, catch someone sprinting. The timing just doesn't work out. He gets double child, you get set up now. It's Pred starts to pop off. I mean, you're happy if you're phased, at least you got 41 seconds. So like, you know, the P2 time doesn't hurt that bad. Yeah, but a nice transition for Optic. Yeah, that's done on the draws. Here we go. A very difficult hill to break. See what FaZe do. Some trophies out, but Shotzi trying to get going early here. Shotzi, Kenny, Pred, whole squad getting involved. 
Locking it down to me. You don't want to give up any streaks or anything extra if you can if you're phase. A one-on-one -on -one towards the point. Dashi able to win that tunnel side spawn. It's five now for Shotzi. He's looking to maybe get a streak, maybe over Chow's a bit. Not going to be able to earn that cruise. But you're still inside the point. You're still racking up the time. Now phase thinking about the answer upcoming to P3, but kind of doing what you expect if you're Optic Texas, holding on to the point where they need to answer back. Yeah, you, you probably love Shotzi, maybe to play that life a little bit more patiently. Try to bait someone in the inside a tunnel to push on up so that kills easier <laughs> to use the cruise. I mean, it's so big, especially when we get to P5, but it is all good. They are in the lead and now over to P3, a phase with the setup. Kind of like draws when each other. You're probably hoping you catch someone sprinting, yeah. but they're instead holding back with MCW. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's a 50-50, I guess, but one thing leads to a team kill here is a moment where you'd really like to get some points up now if you are phased, but it's big kills from Optic early on to get them out of it for a moment. You see a symbol to balance here as you fight back through if you are phased and stabilize here for a moment, but Kenny, after the big map three, continuing to win fights as Kenny has been disgusting on Sunday. I mean, this is what you would want if you're an Optic fan. Uh, Ken, just play at such a high level of getting your team to the final and then performing throughout this series time and time again. But honestly, it was a little scary there towards the P3, but Draza took a big route. He was able to get behind the player who pinched for Optic. He gave his team the, the close laundry response, kind of stabilized that P3. So a nice job there by Draz. And now inside of Harbor, you have a BZ, uh -oh. but here comes Optic. A BZ. Just getting a nade out and getting out, waiting for the help to get there. The help is in the form of Draza, who's stunned up. He's got to wait for a moment. You got all sorts of bodies set up inside. Three on the objective right now. If you are Optic Texas, Abizi is blown to smithereens. He's falling apart. Simtho with a double, trying to bring him back into it. Can he dial up a triple? Wants to maybe just get in for the contest for now. Wait for the help. The trade is in from Simp. That is three trying to hit with a pistol. They fire it! Oh, Lord God, if Shotzi doesn't slide underneath, maybe. Maybe a spectacular moment from Seth, but he did enough to at least keep them here and fighting. Yeah, it looked like Abizi was fighting Spider-Man for a moment. Yeah, but a big play here from Dashi on rotation. You had two players, now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Sim spawns up, trying to hunt him down quickly. Optic gonna be spawning out here for P5. So you get back into the game if you're Optic here at the P4. You find the rest of the time. You don't allow Sim to break on through, but now it comes down to a, a heavy rotation here for FaZe. Yeah, they were holding, trying not to get caught, and now you start to reposition, get in your spots for this next hard point. Tucked away will be Selium to get the time. What's your best way to try and attack this if you're Optic Texas? I, I mean, find an opener here on the draw uh, from draws, but FaZe right now up to one in the series, in the lead in this game number four. Let's go to a listen in with Atlanta FaZe. Play. The P2 time. 
Inside so far is going to be a easy. Pred, though, lining him up, trying to disrupt this. The stun will keep Simp at bay for now. A lot to deal with if you're a BZ. You hold a Simtex, the break is through. And Joe, you got your hands in the air. I mean, this reminds me of the Ultra series, right? This was the chance where, for Ultra to close the game out. And the same thing here for FaZe. They have the rotation over to P2. It's not a Shotzi play. It's a team play here for Optic. There's a chance, though, for FaZe to get right back into. And I think they may have recovered. Great job by FaZe. Great job breaking back, but great job, yeah, breaking up some of that time if you were Optic Texas. With the rest of this, it'll be just about a 40-point game. We continue to go blow for blow every map. The team just struggling to find separation. Shotzi will get in with five left. Now we look to the other side of the map, a chance to collapse on this. As you have three players here if you're Atlanta Fades, but all around you is White Arrows. Not gonna be ready for this though. Dashi on a wide flank, but only put some shots in, hits the trophy. Nice time. Now waiting for his teammate. Great teamwork on the rotation from Dashi and Shotzi. I love that. Just take out the trophy, stun in, hits everybody now. Here we go if you're Optic. The chance starting in the building. 40 seconds left to go on the point. And you're soaking this up, looking for a lead change. Shotzi waiting around the corner, Stun will hit him. He's going to drop, you're in for now. The pinch is perfect, it's a tiny tears once again. We we're able to collapse onto a hard point and maybe get in. I know there's a team kill, but nobody's getting easy time right now. No, nobody is such a back in for battle. And I think for phase off, they just will not go away. Great movement out of Shotzi, hits the slide. Sim gets caught. But yeah, you had that pinch there from FaZe, and look at this! Wall bags all over the place on the main stage. We got another one added to the notebook. Oh uh, yeah, the tickler there. <laughs> the, the damage coming in, Kenny with a snap and slide. Breaking this up, Shotzi now through into the point. Lead changes there. Optic go out in front here at the P4. How long will it last? Just up a point before phase battle right back in. A flurry of changes inside the point now. It's Kenny trying to work this two-man game, but dropping in front of him, shooting off ankles. And Kenny now, is shooting, bro. Yeah, now it just comes down to how much do you want to invest if you are phased? Because this P5 rotation so important, but 30 seconds still here. As ah. you said, Kenny doing it all. That is like the second time I think Brad has teammated him in the same spot. But they're going <laughs> to find the final 16 phase, opting to rotate. He's like, hey, Kenny, great work in there, but uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> now the rotation. Sim might spawn out here. Let's see where I he think spawns he should. up. Yeah, yeah, he will. Can he get there fast enough that he's able to help on this? Depending on if they pick it up, he might be able to fight the players there and ticket. The longer Draza can hold, the better. Screw it, Draza will kill everybody. Then Simp gets involved. Another huge moment there for Draz. Negative five right now, but making the play. Simp a flurry for him as he spawns out as well. Looking to get back in front now with your Atlanta face. 23 needed for the victory here for Optic Texas. Lead chains around the corner here, P5. You can win it though. You can win it if you are phased right now. The time is available. The beamers are in. The two man game is through as the shots are connecting. There's no open ticket. They can't find a crack in the defense. It is a lock down from Atlanta phase. So far, perfect in the hard points this matchup. Looking for another. They shall not pass. Five in a row for Cell. They lock him up. They shut him down. They win another hard. Point. And now phase one map away from lifting that trophy, but it has been through these respawns. Last time through, over towards this P5, I mean, Opti do a good job getting them off the hill, keeping the hill white this time. Trophies are down. They're able to stabilize. Even after Simp gets picked, it was Draza's big two that allows them to get into that clean setup. And it's just, what, what did I say after the third hard point is a 50 point separating? When out there's four, it's like 70, like 70 points in separation across four hard points. But you know, when you think to that stretch where Optic kind of dominated this matchup, you know, the hard points is where it was. That's where the struggles were for FaZe. It's gonna be tough for them to beat this team, but they can't win a hard point. I... Oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are not wrong. As we look at the uh, scoreboard right there. You had somebody with 5,500 damage on the face side for Optic. Well, you almost hit two minutes on the hill at Dashi, but only 13. 28 out of Kenny, 28 out of Simp. 
and they're the maps and modes. So we're headed back to an SD. The good thing, they have won them all versus FaZe. They were, what, I mean, 0-4 coming into this, well, into the winner's final versus FaZe. They flipped that script, but we're going to a Rio search and destroy. Yeah, listen, you know, it changes year in and year out, but you just think about this historic matchup, and it's just typically like, you know, the respawns are a little ahead of your optic. Phase a little bit of search. Yeah. Just I'm talking like over the past several years. Sure, yeah, why not? Phase winning respawns, optic winning search. Of course, that's how it'll play out, but it's the grand final. All these maps have been so, so close. It has been one of the most electric weekends in the history of Call of Duty Esports, and we're not done yet. It's a best of seven. It's a 3-1 lead for Atlanta. Atlanta phase the chance to rally to rock to rumble is still there for optic can they bring it back map by map get the crowd roaring we'll see after this quick break Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty Store in-game now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in action here in Miami. Grand final time, the final series of one of the more amazing weekends we have ever had. And this final, listen, we aren't done yet because you think about this optic team and what comes to mind over these past couple qualifiers, just in a hole, bring it back. In a hole, bring it back. The ability to reverse sweep, the ability to swing things in their favor. 
One more time, baby. Yeah, down 3-1, but still alive. Now you, you, you get to a Rio S&D, which, I mean, neither team's really played a ton of. Right, I think you're like 2-0 if you're Optic, 1-0 if you're FaZe. It was in the first best of five, we just didn't get there. Well, I think this is the one where we're just sort of like, huh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, when we looked at it, even the winner's bracket, we saw that was map five. We were like, well, if you get there, I don't know. I mean, I, I think overall, FaZe usually the better search team, but Optic been winning the searches. I know they're both terminal, but this should be a fight. And this is one where maybe you can find openings if you're Shotzi. It's a little tougher to do on terminal. You know, not a lot of options for like playmaking here. A chance. Oh, yeah, you hit whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. It's just like you get to mid, there's cuts everywhere. Stun over me. I'm going. Yeah, you can go from here to Mercado, Joe. Get some tacos. Yeah. I'm so pissed Catering never had tacos this weekend, by the way, but... <laughs> but it has been 413 days since the last phase win. The Silver Surfers look to get the W here a map away. Is it a victory? Is it a choke? It is in their hands now to close it out. They can all stop here on Rio. Or to Optic Texas. Rally and make one of the better comebacks we have ever seen. Bomb planted. Phase look to hold. Retake now for Texas. Yeah, just opting to play for that four versus four. And look at this. Look at this from Phase. They have completely give up top middle. You're just going all the way through oh. boxes oh. on a two-man pinch. Good luck. Good luck. This is Shotzi though's on it. Shotzi is on it. But Sip on the flank, able to find the first. Shotzi tries to hold it. The smoke is down. Cell's able to find a double now. A one versus three for Pred. Yeah. And you're just buying time if you are the ARs of FaZe. No hesitation. Allow that flank. No hesitation. They hit it. They know the timing. And I'm just there at the minimap. As soon as you don't see any white arrow, maybe picking that up, obviously it's done. <laughs> like it, unless something insane happened, that was toast. A good plant and rewrap there on the flank from FaZe. You, you wait a second and do that? Who knows how, actually, bomb gets diffused probably is what happens there. No, no doubt about it. Yeah, Shotzi was about halfway. He got closer than that, didn't he? Maybe. I thought it was pretty close, but I, I could be faded. We've been doing a lot of casting. <laughs> Round two now. Offense to Optic. Is so they're starting to work up A? Two through mid, fast on rotation. They want to get aggressive here if you are phased. They have numbers. Yeah, it's a good stun, though, from Ken. Slows that down. Shotzi's here to help. That's the bomb as well. So they were trying to get aggressive. That is going to slow down big time from the reposition here. But sell on such a strong position, trying to finesse. Here comes the teamwork. Here comes Optic. They're able to find two. Almost a third. Smoke down. We keep fighting. Oh, BZ just able to get out with his life and now reposition and try to fight. A BZ gets another this time. Can't get out. And it's like a stalemate there for a moment, right? This, like you said, I think I look like these were looking to hit it. Try to try maybe isolate one or two players, but uh, you caught it perfectly. Yeah, yeah the, the stun, stun hits. hits. Yeah, Shotzi's in that spot, and then you get more help. That uh, comes on in, and then FaZe recommit to it. Try to help sell him in that position, but doesn't matter. And this is where you're going to get on Rio. A lot of retakes, a lot of four-on-four four hits. Who could just finesse and play their life, buy more time for their teammates' help? But it's looking like on either side, just through these two rounds, like FaZe are chomping at the bit to get very, very aggressive, whether on offense or defense. We'll see how Optic opt to deal with it this time. They don't want any type of quick B action, so the bodies are there. The stun and utility are in. They try to go over the peak, and it's a BZ. The first blood, Lord. It gives them the four versus three. Shotzi ripped out of this, and a win three start for him. And now they slow the pace down for a moment. Maybe thinking Optic could try to get aggressive to find a pick. Reposition from Dashy. Kenny now working the flank. Bomb starting to work up towards B. Here we go. Information on the cross is Dashy. It's able to get a bit of a spot. Pred playing here on the Esky as well. Heady there from Simp. Cell lines one up as well. And uh, it's Kenny kind of by himself. He's on two in a row. In a one versus four now. And they're thinking kill before they think plan. They don't want anything goofy going on, so they're going to wrap this out. All the way through. Yeah, they're playing this yeah. very patiently. Cell going to find them. And yeah, that is phase. Cut on this time, allow Opti to get aggressive. They find the first blood, slow it down, reposition the bomb, and then top middle, just sort of wait. Hold all the angles, the peaks come in. 
opt to get cut down. Yeah, maybe just thinking like all the entries and lines of sight mid, like don't let him get a pick for free and make this run disruptive. Just make the safe play. Doesn't end up mattering as they get the kill, but the discipline there, four phase. Hoping this is a, a lot like the terminal where we just continue these swings back and forth. This time, it's a B look. It's building up slowly here for Optic Texas and just this waiting game behind the utility once again. Nades now just checking the corners up top mid. Gonna know there's not a lot of presence. This man gonna be the point man a lot of the times through. 0-3 start here for Shotzi. Can he get on the board? Maybe work the objective. Sim, uh, he's gonna get some help from Abizi. They both just fly on through. We're back. Hey, we're still here. Someone hit a controller or smashed their keyboard. <laughs> the first blood bomb down B. Okay. Just gonna go for it. So a retake chance here for FaZe. Get it planted. Back it up. Very winnable still for Optic Texas, but so many things to worry about. Going deep is Dashy. Can he win a fight? Oh, the timing there. I don't think he saw him get across, or did he? Dashy brings it to a three versus three. Still another player for him to deal with. Kenny's climbing trees, and now he's Tanson bringing it back or trying to. Simp is there for the trade. Pred and Dashy now, 20 seconds to go. It's a game of seconds. Do you get lucky with the timing? Checking it for now. Nobody is home. Time still dwindling. Big gunfight upcoming. Dashy takes out another one. He's been massive in this round, and just no time to work with a huge 3v4 there for Optic. Yeah, they just say, you know what? The best chance for us is to get this bomb down. I don't disagree. Oh, you love when people play bomb shots. Yeah, I was a little bit odd, though. I mean, on the retake, the BC, I don't know if they don't see Dashy ever, never spot him back, back Jeeps, but it's just a free first pick because he just climbs up and Dashy's like, well, thank you. Well, yeah, no, at first I thought it was like an awkward timing for Dashy because I didn't think he saw him jump behind the vehicle. Jump across, yeah. But yeah, they, I guess he's never got eyes. Otherwise, yeah, I don't think he's trying to climb up there to bridge. Three in a row for Dashy, and yeah, big part of bringing them back. Well, everything and bringing them back there. In the three versus four. Still one map away from victory in the grand final is phase. A mountain to climb if you're Optic Texas, but it's one moment after another, and it's been a long day for them that just keeps on getting longer, right? The longer this series goes on, you've been playing a lot of COD. Cell, a laser's out of him for a first blood, and another one for phase. Yeah, again, another slow around for our attacking team, just kind of spreading the map, but able to spot the timing on it. Kenny hits the shots as well. Shots, he's still there in that area. Maybe just trying to find an opening, maybe get the comms for his teammates so he can work the flank. And there it is. What does he opt to do? I'm saying he's just going to back up with them. Bomb going down now. Smoke out, trying to make some madness happen. Pred able to get a pick there as well. The three versus three up the bomb planter, and then Shotzi through the smoke over the top. Gets a kill, maybe another 3v4 opportunity. Now for Optic Texas, as things unravel, Abizi brings it back. 25 seconds to go, he picks the corner. The read from Draws, maybe two of one versus one. Pred, the Predator on the hunt and lurking the trigger discipline. Oh, it's beautiful. No, it's not so beautiful, but then it gets the kill and he gets out. 10 seconds to go. Yeah, Draza, what does he have to do here? He's chasing, Whoa! and he finds him as well. What is that round? Optic bring it back after losing first blood, and Pred hoping to find a freebie. Instead, it gets a little messy into the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, one more bullet there, and this play's not even possible. Not even possible, but it is. It's such, it's like, you know, the longer the trigger discipline is there, the longer the hunt is on, the longer the patience, like, not nerves exactly, but a little bit, yeah. Like, you know, you know like, you're chasing your prey. Yeah, and he's hoping oh. to find the first, and the other one's on the bomb, and the round's done. Yeah, you're also, it's one of those situations you always highlight, like you're thinking about the next gunfight, the next chow. Oh. Especially in this oh. moment, in the final. Almost back-to-back -back 3v4s, almost a spectacular moment from Pred, but even though you've been clutching up in moments, if you're Optic, you would love to maybe get the 4v3 advantage here once, as mostly that has gone to Atlanta phase. And it continues that way. Celium Beamers, back-to-back -back first bloods for him. But well, it's a fast bomb plant. Yeah, bomb down again. This time, though, you're working that pinch. So Dashy not going to be in that area. 
Instead, he's going to be up top vending. And now, what do they want to do here, Optic? Because you're just top middle. They're going to try to commit to a side, and that's the right call. They're going to find Draza and now split the map into a three-on-three. Three. Here comes the retake for pace. Running out of time, though. Shotzi's going huge. Two versus two. 15 to go. Cell, the first one. Looking to make the play. Can't quite finish it, though. Is a beats. He gets him so weak. Cell hops on it. And again, it's a 3v4 post plant. Is you can't find the openings if you're phase, and you love the choices there from Optic to push out a side. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a 50-50 call, but uh, screw it. Let's do something together. They know that there's a flight coming on through from the death from Ken. Now, I mean, obviously, FaZe can wrap on back to their base, but they're able to catch draws. If you're draws there, you just got to play a little bit safer. Instead, he gets caught. Shotzi on four in a row. Well, you, you love to see that as they're all tied up at three. Unbelievable stuff from Shotzi. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean, I, mean I, I keep talking about them needing some first bloods. Maybe they don't. They don't need it. What do I know? Yeah, doing the three versus four. Optics nasty. Sure. Damage in. Everybody tagged up, but they pounce. Tiny tears up through mid. 14 HP and just sticking the bomb. Now fights to the other side. Cell picks wow. it up. There is a trade, though, but it's going to be tough for Ken. It's going to be so difficult. Bomb planted a one versus three. You're just hoping Shotzi wins that first gunfight. Instead, it's Selium. Great snaps out of Kenny. Unreal shots. But this time, the first blood works out for FaZe. Yeah, maybe it's just who's going to be able to get a retake here. <laughs> Through mid-map. But first blood after first blood continuing for FaZe. You got to think they're going to capitalize on some of them. In offense so far, really, really being favored here. Yeah, two rounds to go here for FaZe. Two rounds away from lifting that trophy. And will Optic get us to a map number six? Yeah, they need it. They need the energy. It's been a long day of games for Optic here to battle through losers. They need the fans behind them. I mean, energy, not everything, sir, certainly may not matter. It's just the gunfights. It's just the decisions. But you got to get three more. Can you get an opener here? They saw a BZ cross bridge side. That's why they're all kind of looking this way, waiting for this. Not going to plant the bomb quite yet. Still just trying to find that one player. But Cell, he's going to win the one-on-one -on, -one on the A side. I think he's gotten three first bloods, two or three on Kenny. He is finding those openers. But, you know, if you're optic, plant it on B and win the 3v4. That's what you do best. Three players from FaZe now. Leaving a BZ over towards boxes. They're going to work this flank on the other side of the door is Pred awaiting patiently, but he's going to get caught. Abizi on the other side of the map, trying to put them at five. Unfortunately for Pred, there's two. Baited by one, dropped by another phase. One round away from their first championship in 413 days. They have lived on Sunday. They have made every run just time and time again, coming up a little bit short, but now it is match point, a time to push the dagger home. And this has been a grand final for the ages from Simp. The guy's been unbelievable. Add another to his resume. Yeah, him and Beezy really leading the way. Here we go, into the top middle, and it's just all out fight. Another first blood, but it's a teammate from Cell. Back to do a three on three. Ooh. Kenny, though, take it down by his old duo. Shotzi on the pin, so two versus two. Slows down for a moment. Well, Shotzi never slows down. Until the smoke hits, it'll tuck away in a corner. Bomb needs to get recouped. Shotzi dashy up against Cell and Draws. 60 to go. A standstill for now. Dashy gets eyes. Call off to Shotzi. They'll try to take a two on one here, and they do that beautifully. Now everything down to sell. He's been so good in the early parts of the round with all these first blood picks. Can he clutch up in the one versus two? As one's a kangaroo and one's got massive shoulders, they're both just toying with sell. So yeah, just kind of playing around. He doesn't have the bomb either, so he's got to collect that. Shotzi, gonna spot him again. Just sliding around his optic. Shotzi gonna spot him, he's able to find one, Ooh. but a quick trade from Dashy. A little scary. Yeah, I mean, he just kept trying to re-peek and give himself a one-on-one. -on -one. It was just a really good job 
from Optic, one, getting the information, two, just making sure the trade opportunity was always there, because sell one of the best in those nerdy moments to just kind of turn that into two one-on-ones? No doubt about it. And here's that team, Nate. Yeah, talked about how good he's been with first bloods. Well, he brings it back, just sort of the ricochet off the e screen. Hello, Abizi. Oh, uh, it's tough. It's another first blood for FaZe, but they even it out. We've gone to round 11 over and over again in these search and destroys. Are we going there again? Optic trying to push it to match point. Abizi looking to get another first blood, potentially spotting for info. Shots and spots given. They fly at him. They're sending it to him. He repositions. The movement's on point. And Pred put to sleep. Abizi 10 and 5. Now to sell. In the stun. The stun catches Kenny again. Shots he trying to find the trade, not gonna happen. MC backs away. I think it's cell aim locking onto Kenny's forehead because I think he just headshot him four or five times in this map. The problem here too for Shots, there's nice so win. many players around him. Look at the mini map. He's gonna try to find the second. Now bomb is down, all down to Dashy. Big Bruce for the one v three. Can he tear him apart? He got eyes right on bomb. He's gonna check the corner. Oh, he didn't check it. Does it clear the corner? And Atlanta phase take it. The first championship in 413 days. The boys celebrate on the main stage. Of all the close and wild series that we have had, yeah, maybe this one on paper, it's a 4-1. You know, it looks like FaZe kind of handled it, and they did, but every map, Jesus, it was stressful. I don't care what side you were rooting for. Yeah, every map, every respawn search comes down to the wire between our top four all weekend long. But this group put it all together when it mattered most. Able to win 4-1. They get together. They lift the trophy. Your major two champions for the 2024 Cod League season, Atlanta Phase. And this guy, Sim, one step, one step close to the Call of Duty Mount Rushmore. He is moving his way up the ranks. You have firepower all over, but wow, what an event. And once again, before we get to the main stage, congratulations, it's Atlanta Phase. Let him hear it, your major two champs. this dub how does this feel oh it feels amazing i mean we were just firing on all cylinders this weekend i mean no one can stop us i don't think anyone can stop y'all the way that you guys were playing right there now Celium, you were playing amazing throughout this whole weekend i forgot the body count tally on everyone you were shooting but you were confident from day number one what does it feel like to win after so long I mean, bro, I was just having fun on stage this whole week, and, you know, it was, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we won, you know, like, our whole team deserves it. Like, the amount of, like, patches we've been putting in the past, like, month has been insane, so, I mean, I'm glad we won, man. It's, 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 it's well-deserved. It is well-deserved indeed, okay? Now, let me step over here towards the back. You know, we got Simp with the trophy here in the middle. I want to talk to him. Simp, how does this win feel for you? Uh, it feels amazing. I mean, I feel like the work we put into this event, I mean, the last month, like MC said, I feel like has been 
unmatched, and I feel like it really showed this event. I think it definitely did show. And you know what? We've had a smart crowd all weekend long, and I just want you to know you are the MVP for this event. Draza, how does that feel, being able to win with this squad and get them back on top after over 400 days? I mean, yeah, it feels great. I mean, like I said before, too, I run that org. Uh, they haven't beat me in forever. And I, where's that Dick Rider scrap yet? Is he already going home? Like, I don't know what's going on here, but I love my fucking teammates. These guys are insane, and I cannot wait until Major 3. All right. Now, pass the mic on over to Coach. Crowder, you've been helping these guys get prepared. You've seen them through everything. Talk to me about the hard work that they've put in and what this win means for FaZe. Uh, I mean, man, this this win means everything to the org and to the players and stuff, dude. I mean, these guys work so hard, harder than people even think probably. And honestly, just the work that these guys put in individually as a team and just even more about our team culture and everything and trusting ourselves, man, it's been an incredible team to coach. Zach's been an amazing addition to FaZe, and honestly, I'm just so proud of the boys, dude. All right. Well said, coach. Well said. Miami and Call of Duty fans all around the world. One more time show some love to the champions Atlanta Face Congratulations Atlanta Face and a big thank you to everyone who made it out to Major 2 live in Miami Florida what a blast this tournament was and what a deserving win for our red squad as Atlanta retakes their throne and are crowned our champions of major two once again Ali cat nameless let's break down that amazing final and Ali I want to start with you what was the most impressive takeaway from this phase team during that final what do you mean most impressive Civ opens with a 13 spree to break the record in map number one of this series to start our grand finals off and it's not only that it is him in a BZ that makes that final break to solidify the 1-0 lead. I mean, it was just incredible across the board. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Optic, who's been the clutches throughout the stage, winning impossible maps. Well, it was FaZe who did it in both their series up against Optic. The hard points were down to the wire, but their ability to prioritize the hard point, get the crosses, Selium hitting some crazy shots, and the tiny terrors reminding us while they're one of the greatest duos of all time in God history. This team is entertaining. Love them or hate them, they are going to keep you entertain and they are going to give you great games and I absolutely love what we saw out of all the individuals everyone took turns throughout this series to shut down optic and if you look at the record against optic Texas they're a flawless 4-0 now they are 5-0 against optic Texas in this game specifically so I would not be shocked if we continue to see this matchup throughout all the majors we have left rest for this year. And it's a lot different than last year. They had phases number yeah. totally different phase. They make a roster change. They bring in Draza, which is the energy they needed. Obviously, in the grand finals, they've had a lot of second places. You heard John Clint touching on it. It's been a long time since they hoisted that trophy. They bring in Draza. They get it out the mud, and they find their way through a bracket where they went unscathed. I love Atlanta phase. They took us to a game five. Round 11 against LA Thieves. It was a heart breaking run for the Thieves, but FaZe taking that momentum, another game five in round two. Then they started to clean up their game against Optic. They're able to do it again here in the grand finals, and Nameless. Are they officially the best team in MW3 right now? 100%. You can't even argue it. They had to beat some Titans to get this championship. And also, Simp is unbelievable, guys. We're talking about a guy who, in this series, 21,000, almost 22,000 damage, the most on his team by a margin of over 2,000. Simp is him. Yes. And it's not only in this grand final, in this series, this guy spawned into a respawn and was guaranteed a 30 bomb almost every single series that they played simp had 30 whether it was control whether it was hard point him and abe were putting up 30 plus excuse me 60 plus kills combined chris Blair, aka simp aka the current goat the greatest player of his time at least nameless we were talking about it he didn't have as many tournaments to win as people like crim six did back in the early days of call of duty his resume is one of the best if not the best currently in the sport yeah i mean i think when it's all said and done simp is going to be the goat i mean the trajectory he's on the amount of years that he's been doing this how many championships he already has world championships at that and he's still in the prime of his career he's frying mvp the kid is unbelievable definitely 
team making a case to be on the Mount Rushmore. Congratulations, Atlanta Faze. They take home our scuff play of the game as well. And Alley Cat, why don't you take the honors for this one? Highlight score out of Atlanta. Highlight score out of Atlanta. I think you set it up perfectly, but it had to be the final round of control where Optic Texas was expecting to take it in this series. You can see it. They're about to take this offense. There's three people on this point. And what does Atlanta Faze do what they do best? Bait and trade out the site. Shotzi accidentally gets a team kill, but it's Selium that cleans up the rest of Optic Texas to shut down what could have been a 2-1 lead. Yeah, not only does Selium get that final kill, he contests for a little bit, takes his time, stays alive. Back point, Abizi wins a massive one-on-one, -on -one, and the last line of defense every single time is going to be MC on his iron. He's winning his ones. He's securing you to dub. Atlanta had ice. They lock it in and will walk away as our major two champions for back-to-back -back years. Last year, though, they couldn't keep it up with this current lineup. Do you think you have another win in the future before Champs 2024? I mean, if they stay on this trajectory, absolutely. I think the fact that they were able to break that curse and even win this event will do a lot for Atlanta Faces' confidence moving forward. Because you saw that graphic earlier. Second, second, third, second. They always hit that top four, but they very rarely are able to close it out. So to do it this early in the season is very scary for the opposition. Faces had optics number. They knocked out subliners as well, getting revenge in that winner's bracket. And now Atlanta Faze are officially taking home the $150,000, the title of Major 2 champions, and the 100 points, which will officially, I assume, take the lead over Toronto Ultra for the number one seed on the season. Yeah, I'm thinking it will. Atlanta Faze, absolutely incredible stage on line two, testing some things. I mean, this is a team that fell to LAG before they came over here to win this whole thing. But our top four teams, man, they really showed out this tournament. Every single match was electrifying, coming down to the wire. I'm expecting New York to continuously improve, Optic to build upon this performance, and obviously Toronto after getting called out by Draza. Scrap go come back with a vengeance. He was dropping some bombs when his teammates show up with him. Look for Toronto to potentially be in another grand final, and it could be as soon as May. We are headed to Toronto for Major 3 as the Ultra look to put on in front of their home crown. Can Envoy lead this team to a championship? We'll have to find out in person, Allie. Yep, absolutely. Again, remember, make sure you get your passports updated if you're traveling from outside of Canada. But also, I believe this will be the third time Toronto Ultra is hosting a major. Could be more than that. It's one of the best that we have during the season. Make sure you show up and show up and maybe get your tickets early. Make sure you don't get sold out. As we say goodnight to everyone at home from around the world who tuned in to watch the greatest players on earth playing Call of Duty. Nameless, what's your takeaway from the weekend? What are you going to remember from Miami? I'm going to remember this championship match. Absolutely incredible. Sunday, today, every single match was a banger. And I just hope these teams keep the competitive spirit and keep shooting bodies in Major 3. Allie, final thoughts? I can't believe it's already over. I say this every major. I feel like I blinked and it's over. Big shout out to everyone here in Miami. You people were great. We'll be signing autographs out front. Allie will be taking pictures with everybody and we will be partying with you in person. Come Toronto, get your tickets. We'll see you there.
club. Up a big up, everybody show me love. Shawty, I am me, so I'm like, what's up? On a dance floor, mommy, can you keep up? Uh, say, mommy, can you keep up? Like I need a baker, I'll give you sweet up. Sipping on his bubble, you feel the sweet up. So the way you move a body, I'm wanting a piece of. Uh, built like a masterpiece. Got ready to get time when he crafted me. That's some real divine work in your anatomy. Girl, let me show you the view from a balcony. It's like, damn, I get the galaxy. Stay running through my mind like an athlete. I want to be the one to fulfill all your fantasies. That's why I wrote you this here little rhapsody. It's like, Mami, tú eres mi sol y yo quiero darte todo mi amor. Quiero curar tu dolor porque reconozco todo tu valor. Tell me who got it like that. Can you even name one that's got it like that? Bet you ain't nobody and nobody got it like that. But I give it to you because I know you like it like that. Sensei. 